Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the start of a new stream. It is 3.14 Pacific Time. Monday, September 14th. The year 2020. Hi, everybody. We're going to be playing some Crusader Kings 3 today. Jumping back in because I'm addicted and also I'm having fun. Day, is today day six in a row? It's better not to think about it. <laughs> this, is my, this is probably the first time we've done a day six in a little while. And it, it's been a minute. So hopefully we have enough energy. I got some good sleep. Got to fly some planes yesterday. Had a lot of fun doing that. Traveling around the world has been going excellently. And even more new fun plans to come. Though I did make one <laughs> error. <laughs> Not the plane related kind, but the cool stream idea kind. I may have ordered something that I didn't really notice uh, isn't even going to be shipped until next month. So, it's uh, going to be really delayed by the time it gets there, but it'll get there eventually. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Stupid alien yo. Where are we? Hello. We're drinking some Cairo beans today. With the Death Stranding mug. Which I have learned is actually a collector's item now, I think. I don't think they make these anymore. Or if they do, they're just out of production. These are Cairo beans. And they're actually about two times better than usual. I'll tell you why. Cairo, since you're here. Hello, Cairo Toby. And all the other aliens out there. Uh, number one, I gave it an extra, like, 25 to 50% more um, coffee grounds. And also, I selected the rich setting on the coffee maker. So, it like, I guess it steeps it longer and gets a little bit more flavor. And now it's actually really good. It, w it went from, like... Folgers tier coffee to like I would buy this again now Completely changed it There's actually flavor Decipherable before it kind of tasted like Watery coffee it tasted like an iced coffee That you let sit out for too long So I did some experimentations and it's really good now I don't think it's as good as the She's the Worst uh, Big Boss coffee. But it's still, like, way better. <laughs> Howdy, guys. Miss Lissa Day, Ace Tech is here. Pure Speedwagon, what up? Hey, Kyoko. Fusilad, welcome back. Hi, everybody. Just in time for some Crusader Kings 3 paperwork. Not second to last. <laughs> still, there's only three to rank, so you're still second to last. But you're also second to first. But you're closer to first than last now. What kind of coffee maker do you have? I could see Ita getting one of those semi-expensive ones. Yeah, we talked about it at length already. I did get an expensive coffee maker. Because, um... Long story short, the last coffee maker I had was like a normal coffee maker, quote unquote, and I didn't clean it a single time in a year and a half, and it was gross. And I know it was gross, so I had no choice but to throw it away because it was crusted. And I was like, I don't want that to happen again. I want to actually have something that I, I care about and that I will maintain. So I bought uh, a Ninja. Really, really nice coffee maker because I'm not going to let something that's nice and good fall into disrepair again. 
Plus, I get the added benefit of just extra convenience. Hi, she's the worst. Just in time for bean chat. You are just in time for bean chat. Ninja the streamer has their own coffee line. You guys didn't know that? I've never had coffee once in my life. Modified, you probably wouldn't like it. It took a long time to even get adjusted to it. You have to go to the point of milkshake and work backwards in my case. Like, I would never have drank this probably five to 10 years ago. I would just drink like milkshakes from Starbucks and then slowly over years dial back um, the, the items that go into a Frappuccino and just like, okay, now um, we're not gonna do like crazy whipped cream on top. Now I'm not gonna do sugar. Now I'm gonna cut uh, the creamer in half of what I used to do. Like it, it really is work backwards. Now I still I still use just a little drop of creamer, and that's it. No sugar. I like every single coffee I ever drink to have some kind of tinge of mocha. I just like chocolate, so I always get like a little mocha creamer. I still don't like straight coffee. That's how I did it. Matt found that's how it works. I got addicted to coffee when I had to babysit my cousins one summer. <laughs> hey, nice shirt. I think it's a relevant shirt. Mountain Blade Bandalord has a lot of maps as well. So, we're gonna be jumping into the map game right now. Tinge of Mocha sounds like a, a good name for a creamer. I need cream in my coffee, otherwise it's too acidic for my stomach. I have never had a problem with that, but I will say coffee is a really good, like, for me at least, I've noticed that if I go off of coffee for too long, I start getting headaches. I guess that's just the caffeine. But still, it's, even though, like, Coke has caffeine, I don't get, like, Coke headaches. But I do if I stop drinking coffee. I guess because of this, the density of caffeine. <laughs> Addicted streamer. I'm really not. Um, I went weeks without coffee when I moved here. I didn't have a. I didn't even have a way to make it. But like, chat, coffee's good for you, dude. In moderation, coffee seems to be good for most people. That's three to five cups daily. And by cups, they don't mean, like, they mean measuring cups, not, uh, full cups. Some coffee is good for you. See, Blanket, I don't like when people have to, you don't have to specify that. That's like if I said, uh, like, literally anything. Obviously, moderation is the key to literally 100% of every facet in life. There was not a single example where too much of one thing can't hurt you. So, um... <laughs> For years, coffee was believed to be a possible carcinogen. But the 2015 dietary guidelines helped to change perception. Really? They used to think coffee was a carcinogen? This is from the New York Times. What's up with that? Um, a large 2017 review on coffee consumption and human health in the British Medical Journal found most of the time coffee was associated with a benefit rather than harm. In examining more than 200 reviews of previous studies, authors observed that moderate coffee drinkers had less cardiovascular disease and premature death from all causes, including heart attacks and stroke, than those who skipped the beverage. In addition, experts say some of the strongest protective effects may be with type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and liver conditions such as cirrhosis, liver cancer, and chronic liver disease. For example, having about five cups of coffee a day instead of none 
is correlated with a 30% decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, according to meta-analysis of 30 studies. So there you go. However, coffee isn't for everyone. There are concerns about overconsumption. This is especially true for expecting mothers because the safety of caffeine during pregnancy is unclear. There you go. Okay, I'm buying 500 coffee right now. <laughs> If you're drinking five cups of coffee a day, you're probably drinking less soda. Wow. That's actually a really good point, but it's too hard for me to make another cup of coffee in the middle of the stream, and I do like soda. Hmm. That intro song. Good stuff. Welcome back, everybody. I know you've already been looking at them, but uh, this is our good king and future emperor, we got a lot to do at the beginning of this stream, so just buckle up, okay? We got a lot of paperwork to do. It, it's no exaggeration. Brozor. Chat, where's my- uh oh. Whoo! That scared me. Why did they do that? <laughs> why did the, why does show invalid save games be checked and then my <laughs> save was gone temporarily? <laughs> I was about to have a a little heart to heart with you guys about why the stream wasn't going to be happening. Here, you dropped this king. everyone. Ooh. I just saw my life flash before my eyes. I saw my entire save, uh, threaten to just vanish and never come back. Welcome back to Suckberia, everybody. Uh, Suckberia looking a little more juicy than the last time. If you weren't here for the last couple hours of the previous stream a couple days ago, because we just finished a full-scale invasion of what is now known as Inese Kyrgyz which was formerly Kyrgyz Khanate. These are the guys that have been neighboring us the entire game. And as part of that full-scale invasion, uh, we did a once-in-a-lifetime invasion of a single full kingdom in its entirety. In this case, it was Ob. Dijur Ob. So, not only did we get literally every single bit of ob that Kyrgyz Khan had had, which was all of it, from what I can tell, uh, but we got any additional counties that uh, we took from them. So, there was some debate, some argument in chat about whether or not that was true, and we had some defenders of the realm say that it was, and I believed them, not by much, but I believed them. So, uh, because if I didn't believe you, I wouldn't have gone and done what we did. So what we ended up doing, guess who turned out right? <laughs> Flexing in chat. I didn't doubt, I didn't say no, did I? There was other people in chat. I was like, okay, I'll go capture some other counties then. And we did. So even though this is not part of Ob over here, and was not therefore part of our war objective, we still took basically this entire area. So that's awesome. Everything on this side of the river, which is a really nice kind of separating point. I don't know what river this is. I'm sorry. I'd love to educate myself and you. Actually, Here. you dropped this king. I suppose it's not a river. Is it a river? Because this is a river. This is the river Kama. A major river. Are all blue lines rivers or no? Obviously, blue is my outline color for my, my realm, but, uh, it has to be, because this is a body of water. Lake, lake, I don't know, dude. I feel like this is a giant river that goes all the way up to down. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's just a coincidence. How do I tell? Because I can do terrain. Terrain. 
See, because this is a river that goes through here. Now that, I think, is just trees. I don't know. Because look, the river goes here and down, and then follows... And this is, this is a ridge where the trees are split. It goes all the way down, the river splits off there, river keeps going, all the way down and around, I think. Could be wrong. Anyways, my point is uh, that we got extra terrain outside the kingdom, okay? So even though this was not our war objective, because we took it as part of a kingdom invasion, it has to be an invasion. Otherwise, that that's why people were getting confused. Because typically, I'll show you. Let's say we were just going to go to war with these guys. Um, actually, never mind. They removed the kingdom invasion from the list after you've done it. So I can't show you specifically what it says. But it, it says that you get to conquer your war target and any other counties that you are occupying when the war is over. So it is a, a huge blob enabler. Um, it costs 2,000 prestige up front. And we actually got over 2,000 prestige back. So, really excited about that. We, it paid for itself effectively, and now Suckberia has what it needs to form the Empire of Siberia. So that is really why we went to war. We, we wanted to take um, the land that we were missing so that an Empire title uh, was on the table. And now if we look, we have the 45 of 55 that we need. I actually have exactly 45 counties of the 45 counties that I need. So there are 55 total, so we do not have 10. We are 0% margin for error here. <laughs> so really cool there. Happy about that. I'm curious where the spots are that also... Hold on, chat. Run one second. I still have, uh, I still have f foot pedals down here that I need to move over. Okay. Oh yeah, it's, it's Yugra. Don't worry, don't worry. Yugra will be part of it soon enough. Uh, Brooklyn, the flight stream was yesterday. You might be able to see the VOD if you didn't get to check it out yesterday. But it'll be, if you click on my avatar under the stream, it'll take you to the videos page if you want to check that out. You're more than welcome to. We've got a good, like, nine plus hours. Talix, did you know you can set your ninja to make you a cup of coffee automatically in the middle of your stream? I know that you can program them, but this is too much work to make. <laughs> because I literally make the coffee a minute before the stream so that it's hot. Then, I would have to, like, pause the hot coffee in order to reconfigure another cup of coffee and program it for later. So, not worth it. To be honest, I really dislike that update about Twitch. I spent, like, ten minutes trying to find the videos tab. Yeah, it's pretty well hidden now. I don't know why. Okay. Um, let's just go ahead and cleanse our palette of the easy stuff, because I just want you all to know, and as more people come in here, I'm going to reiterate this. This part of the stream is going to take, I would guess, at least two hours. We may be paused for two hours. Okay? I'm just going to let you know now. Normally, we're paused for like an hour. Now, we're, it's going to be at least double. Reason being... Because, since we just took Ob, if you subjugate um, another kingdom, or any other realm, what happens is all the people of that realm become your vassal. Which normally is a very easy thing to kind of transition over to continue playing. Where you just need to appease them, maybe send them some money, maybe um, sway them, and try to make them more friendly to you. However, in a full-scale invasion, as we did the day before yesterday, we have conquered and inherited all of the titles for all of the land. 
So I now have 31 holdings when I'm only supposed to have five. Roughly. Therefore, I need to pass off of my um, domain 26 or so holdings, maybe 25. So I'm going to have to divide up each of these titles very painstakingly, which is going to have good and bad associated with it. The good is that I'm going to be able to create a lot more vassals. I have room for 23 more vassals. And we're probably going to use quite a bit of that here. Now, this is going to start to get a little bit messier and a little bit messier eventually as we sprawl out from an empire. Because once I get to that vassal limit, things are going to get a little hairier. But we have ways around that. Once we start getting close to our vassal limit, that's when we're going to be more interested in duchy titles and consolidating uh, county vassals under dukes and the dukes answer to us, like a pyramid scheme. So to that end, I can look in here, and the Issues tab is super useful for this. I can uh, usually see when I can create titles. So I've got... Titles can be created nine. Nine separate titles. Empire of Siberia is one of them. Kingdom of Bashkira, so there's two kingdom titles and six duchy titles. So there you go. Nine rings were gifted to the race of men who above all else desired power. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. So I'm just going to begin with our little victory screens. Sorry, I was making sure I didn't have to ban new viewer Timicore for making a joke link that I can't tell whether it is a joke link or not. But thank you, Nipont, for uh, taking no prisoners here. All right. Victory Slaughter at Harhira. We had 89 deaths. They had 443. It's pretty good. You know, it's pretty solid. Did we get any wounds? Okay, no wounds. Looks good. Another easy vic- Two losses. Was this when they were suiciding all of their champions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't wound a single champion. How do they get defeated and all five of them get away? Like, just surround them and don't let them get away. It's easy. Especially when I have 15 champions. You couldn't take five people prisoners? They only got two kills. You guys barely even met on the battlefield and they were slowed down by onagers. They swung once and ran off. I guess that's the only explanation. And then another one, same song, all my champions let them get away twice, I think. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at the world first. I kind of just want to chill, go slow. I'm not in a rush, chat. We're not going to pause for a couple hours. All right, let, let's make some good decisions. Let's um, evaluate our options because we've never been in this situation as of yet in Crusader Kings 3 where I have a full kingdom that I need to decide what to do with. Not least of which, I have to decide if I want to keep a full duchy over there. Maybe that's a valuable thing for me, because here's the here's the other issue. King Brozor, our bountiful and glorious leader, is going to obviously not live forever. He's 55 years old, and if we unpause too soon, then we have a succession crisis. Okay, first of all, did not expect this. It appears... <laughs> okay, I, I think I understand how this works, actually. Because I can create the Empire of Siberia, the game acknowledges that the existence of that possibility is therefore my heirs. So everything that falls under that banner automatically, I think, goes to my firstborn heir, even though I'm still in a confederate partition. So, even though none of these new counties and chiefdoms are accounted for by duchies or the empire itself, I think the game acknowledges that um, even though a title doesn't exist, it's still... 
like hypothetically the firstborn heir's inheritance. Does that make sense? So, cause like my other three sons are getting like this dude's just getting a kingdom with no county. <laughs> Jasup. Uh, same thing for Brozor. He's getting kingdom of Permia with no counties or duchies. Just a title. I feel like that's not going to go very well for them, but we'll see. King Bro, my fave. He's going to be even more of a King Brozor because... Hey, get out of there. You've got to go all the way from top to bottom. So he's going to be creating counts out of his warriors. He's going to be... Um, Obviously, benefiting all of his children with the new Empire titles. <laughs> Hold on. It's like under the map. Hey, get out. What are you doing under there? You're gonna... You're gonna knock something over. You can't do that. Unbiased parenting, he gave kingdoms to all his sons. Exactly. Just so happens the firstborn got an empire title. Nothing personal. What are you doing? You're looking for a place to sleep or something? You look tired. Why don't you just lay down in your bed? He is okay, I don't I don't really know how I'm trying to interpret his behavior. Because I know him inside and out, and this is one thing I do not know about him. Uh when I'm streaming, he does not like to sleep in his bed. Cough it out. Cough it out. He likes to go under the plane game map and sleep while I'm talking. And then when the stream is off and I'm not talking to the microphone, he goes and gets in his bed and cuddles up under his blanket like normal. So I don't know what in his mind is happening that he doesn't like his bed while I'm streaming. Thank you. You just licked my nose. Change of plans. No Crusader Kings 3. All night. Papa Cuddle. What are you doing? You look very tired. Why don't you go to bed? Yes, you're very sleepy. I can tell. Alright, I'm going to put him to bed. He's going to get right back up, but I got to try. He's probably just going to move immediately. But that's fine. You'll probably see him walk away momentarily. <laughs> now, let's take a look at King Brozor. I want to look at his stats, kind of remind myself and you guys uh, who we're playing with here. Because he's improved in some interesting ways. Obviously, he's still patient, forgiving, and gregarious. King Brozor. He's got many friends and few enemies. I, I want to take a, a, a deeper look into these because I feel like I've been glossing over um, the actual benefits from a statistical standpoint, like the learning plus two. The liege opinion, or in this case, vassal opinion plus five is nice. So your vassals just appreciate you a little bit more because they know that you're patient. Hostile scheme resistance is really good as well, and I don't think I've really thought too much about that. Um... Here. It, you drop this king. It helps when your vassals already get a bonus to your to opinion. Like patient just seems like a generally good stat and trait to have. Because not only does it make people less likely to scheme against you because of the vassal opinion, but also if they do, you're better against it. Forgiving is a diplomatic buff and a learning buff, but we lose the intrigue. Prisoners like me. I'm not sure what the benefit of prisoners liking you is. I assume that when you release them and, like, let's say you recruit them, they'll come out of the gate with a better opinion of you, which is pretty useful. And then Gregarious is just, generally speaking, really good for a king who is trying to make friends and using the befriend abilities because your personal scheme power just gets that big boost. 
And it seems like Gregarious comes into contact with a fair few other people, especially with feasts. We've made friends with a number of other Gregarious folk who are, you know, turning out to be eager revelers, like us. The Bro King build, it's, it's really good. I've enjoyed this diplomatic build a lot. We got over 23 diplomacy skill right now. So I'm super happy about that. All right, he's only an adequate bargainer, so he didn't even get like a perfect education as a child. <laughs> Things often work out in favor of Brozor, but whether this is due to his skill in diplomacy or luck <laughs> is up for debate. <laughs> Probably a little of both. 50-50. Child of Concubine is kind of a natural diplomacy debuff. Murderery. Oh, yeah. He had to overcome that from a very young age. Everyone still knows he killed that peasant in the woods, but we've probably all but forgotten about it by now. That was a long time ago. He was like 17. Okay, he didn't know what he's doing. He just had a bow and arrow. Eager Reveler, I think, is extremely strong. You get this just by throwing a lot of feasts, I think. Sampled the intoxicating life of carousing and debauchery and hungers for more. The diplomacy and intrigue is really good, and you'll find that other revelers are out there pretty frequently. Improvident is one thing that we picked as a stress overload, but you do get a diplomacy bonus from this. You just lose the monthly income, which can be big. But it's not all bad. The pilgrim is just a little piety bonus, which we're getting a, an adequate amount of piety now for once. Same faith opinion up as well, which is good because everybody in our kingdom is going to be the same faith. So that's just a plus, plus five uh, for everyone. And then uh, my lifestyle traits, we got August all the way down at the bottom of the diplomacy tree. And that itself is a big diplomacy, martial, and prestige bonus. Very much worth getting. And last but not least, uh, we learned how to be athletic and exercise with one of our bros. Uh, it was the author, right? Arnaz. Arnaz is the one who pinned the epic of our family. Uh, famous author. Whatever, I guess that's what they were called. I don't know, what was an author called? Scribe? I'm not sure. Either way, he wrote an awesome book about our family. Arnaz is such a good influence on you. He is, yeah. We kept him around, Here, we asked him to stay. This king. And after he stayed, we made him the, um, the, not physicist, I was going to say physicist. We made him a physician. Close, but not quite. And as our physician, he has been, of course, healing, uh, tending to wounds, and also, I switched my lifestyle to medicine focus, and as we've been going whole of body, um, he kind of has been working with us to teach us some different health-related knowledges. Including, of course, the ability <laughs> to know when death is one year away. I will receive a warning when my character is about to die. You can, And we can also apparently embrace celibacy, which I guess I could just look and see what it is. I, I know what it is, but like what it affects in the game in terms of stats. Court physicians cost less to hire as well, and treatments are better. So, we've been working a lot. With our bro Arnaz. And then, of course, I uh, wanted to check out Queen Kanshi. My wife of some 30 years, I think. Yeah, 30 years. So, happy 30-year anniversary, honey. Wow, imagine your, your 30th anniversary being in 1000 AD. What a great alignment of the stars, you know? Arnaz writes epics and also studies splitting atoms on the side. So it would seem. <laughs> also, one sec. Uh, she is... Oh, dude, it says wife and soulmate. Oh, I just looked at this. A soulmate is a special relation indicating a deep, profound, romantic love. It is a stronger special relation than a lover. A character may only have one soulmate. And I they did that naturally. I didn't even have to do the personal plot to romance. 
they just naturally complete each other. So it's interesting because she's brave, wrathful, and sadistic. Brave, of course, is valued by the Sue Minuscos, and we get a virtuous bonus. That martial and prowess bonus is awesome. Attraction is up. Vassals love you. Likelihood of dying in battle, plus a hundred percent. Hey, okay, come on. Brave doesn't necessarily mean stupid. You can be brave. And, l listen, any main character of a young adult novel would tell you that likelihood of dying doesn't necessarily go up just because you're brave. Sakberi has been ruled by a strong line of sadists, more or less, yeah. One after the other. What have I walked into, Chad? Nothing. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Want me. Hi, Hippo. I'm Laser Wifel. Everybody else popping in. Uh, she is also wrathful, which is mostly just there for martial and dread. Quick to anger and fury. And then sadistic, of course, is the big prowess bonus. The plus four prowess is huge. Natural dread plus 35. Can use hostile schemes against their own children. People don't like you, though. People don't like you. She is robust, which has a medium health boost and more prowess. She is a 19. Wowie. I wish that she could fight in our armed forces. She would actually be the, the commanding general right now. And is a charismatic negotiator helping me with diplomacy from behind the scenes. Interestingly, I think that this... The reason they became soulmates, in my mind, is because the only person that could... I guess, handle a brave, wrathful, and sadistic warrior goddess has to be a patient, forgiving, and gregarious individual. Like, to, come on, tell me that those are not the two puzzle pieces that fit each other perfectly. She seems like she probably wouldn't get along with a bunch of people, but probably uses... Brozor's gregarious aspects to kind of, like, play off of each other. They, they, they temper each other. He calms her down, and she riles him up when sometimes he needs to not be patient, you know? Sometimes you need to take matters seriously. Give people the their just desserts. Plus, they both love to party. I guess they do both love to party. She doesn't have the same party trait, but she has been to every feast. But that is a power couple, for sure. And then our son. I really haven't looked much at him, so I'm doing this as much for me as for you. Mergrin Avrin. My son, heir, and champion. He's got a 12 prowess. He came out just stewardship up. Okay. Intrigue down. And then the learning goes up to kind of balance that, so it's a total plus three, minus three. Vassals like you, because you're just. And also, this is valued by Sue Minusco. So that's pious and virtuous. And likes other just characters, dislikes arbitrary characters. That makes sense. Came out as a gray eminence. Uh, literally his... It, it seems like a um, not his passion though, right? Like very book smart, very able to kind of um, apply knowledge when he wants to. But only seven diplomacy says to me that all of his stats are coming from gray eminence in his education alone. So, very adept in terms of being able to take in knowledge and apply it, but only when he wants to. Because cynical and vengeful, vengeful in particular, is holding him back from that. Yeah, his diplomacy would be zero without his gray eminence learning. Uh, cynical, though, is intrigue and learning. Piety down, which is going to be kind of countered by the virtuous trait of being just. So, he's... He's willing to, to do what's right. He just doesn't believe you immediately. You're guilty until proven innocent, effectively. And likes other cynical characters. And also cynical, of course, is religious-related. He is a vindictive atheist. So in this game, cynical isn't so much that he doesn't trust you as much as he doesn't trust the greater um, aspects of life. He, he's a little bit more cynical on, on a grand scale and uh, is not really a follower of the Sue Minusco religion as such. 
which is going to be difficult to roleplay this because the decisions I wanted to do include religious um, big decisions, which we might just hold off for a generation. We'll see. But being vengeful does make for some fun RP potential. Even though it lowers his diplomacy, he gets some intrigue and prowess, some dread. So yeah, cynical, vengeful, but just is going to be kind of like that Judge Dread. Oh, first Dian already said that, but yeah, I had the same thought. Big education. Honestly, really well-balanced stats overall for a 19-year-old. Almost, I, I think we could easily get double digits, jack-of-all-trades style ruler here. So that's what we're going to go for, probably. Okay. I just wanted to kind of refresh my memory and also see, like, who we're going to be playing as later today. And kind of get, get some updates on my heirs. Who's my next son? Not Pyotr. <laughs> A gluttonous, humble craven. Ah. Who is an intricate web weaver. Wowie. So, intrigue. Master. This is a very cool brother to have. It's going to make for some potential drama later on down the road. Maybe a future spy master in our court. Here's uh, Brozor, nine years old, who also inherited our robust trait from mom. And is a charming nine-year-old boy. Oh, who probably doesn't have any education. We're going to have to... Ooh, we need to marry not Piotr. Dude, we got so much to do. <laughs> we got so much to do. Chad, I can't answer your questions right now, all right? I'm going to get off on tangents. No questions for two and a half hours. This is the anti-chat interactivity stream. I'm, I'm already overwhelmed, and I'm just looking at the things I have to do in the video game. I mean, you can ask questions. Just don't be mad if I don't read them or ignore them, because I'm going to end up getting... Like, it's already going to take two hours. It might take three or four just to unpause if I have to um, interject. Emote only for two hours. No. <laughs> Thank you, though, for the beginning of stream subs. Falkris, whose people arrive in Novo Sibirsk, who's back for a year and a half. Hi, Novo. Phonetic Cloud says, please don't tell anyone I sub to you. It's really embarrassing. Yeah, imagine spending um, two years worth of five dollars once a month on some stranger on the internet and acknowledging that to your real life friends captain squirrel says now i got money enough to give to a random stranger on the internet again well it's like you read my mind thanks for the random stranger money captain squirrel what'd you do to grab the many tiles at once uh and once in a lifetime invasion that's our current goal and that's why we're going to be paused just take a deep breath. We got the backstory in. We got the character overview in. We're good to go, dude. All right, just tackle it one at a time. This is like a chore list, man. One at a time. Why are you telling me to search for a physician when I already have one? Okay, you go away. Call a hunt. No, let's hold a feast instead. Yeah, let's hold a feast instead. Invite champions. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Let's get the easy stuff out first. Is the king of Siberia. Actually, kind of want to wait on that and see if making an empire changes this in any way. Probably won't. But we'll see. I'll do it, though. Not Pyotr Avrin can marry. Okay. So we just took a look at our craven, uh, gluttonous, and humble web weaver who is 16, just came of age, and uh, let's find a match. Do age difference five, religion same, and then sort by prestige power. It's probably gonna come up with Avrin, 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 mm -hmm. as expected. <laughs> VOD friends email me, let's talk. Don't email them. Hey, Talon Chad, I slipped and almost broke three toes today. Wild Omelette, how do you almost break three toes? Did you actually break two, but you almost broke a third?
All right, not Piotr. I probably don't want to marry you to nieces. Especially ones from half-brother Klop Todd. Um, you need somebody who can put up with a craven, gluttonous, and humble individual who's also a schemer. Maybe if we do some of all skills, we can find somebody. We have a calm, temperate, and gregarious Valdava. Actually, just not a bad match in general. 15 learning, extremely smart. Has a teeny bit of intrigue capability. Because he is going to be a ruler, don't forget. He's going to inherit a king. He's going to be a king. So we need to... Wow, are you guys not... You're not related, and she's actually from a noble... Oh, from Ishimir! Of course! An ancient and venerable house in... Well, okay, technically it's only been 150 years. 130 years. But <laughs> for us, that's ancient and venerable! <sighs> Did life even exist before, like, two generations ago? We don't know, dude! Calm, temperate, gregarious, and an astute intellectual. Okay. Absolutely. That's a good match. Prisoners can be ransomed. Oh, dear. It just occurred to me. We just had a full kingdom... Okay. So... We've got 28 prisoners. <laughs> no broken toes, says Wild Omelette, but three all bent pretty far in a direction they're not supposed to bend, but they're just really sore now. Well, I hope you feel better. That sounds awful. So, here's what we're going to do. Even though it's going to be painstaking, I think it's worth it. You guys are betrothed. Beautiful. What if you got betrothed to my child instead? What if young Brozor, Avrin? Then I have a claim to Yalpo of Angara. I don't think this will work, but it might. They're so lucky it's not Dondi in charge of this. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, we invaded them, so it was an offensive war, but they did try to attack us for Narim first. I don't even know if you can do this. I don't think recruiting her to court breaks the betrothal. Um. Also, I can't recruit her to court because she's not 16. Okay, I got it. So I think she just leaves the prison no matter what. <laughs> Make the princess renounce her claims. Oh, that's mean. It's basically like abandoning her family. I think nice guy is... Brozor is not atheist. So I think nice guy Brozor is just going to... Uh, let them go with a conversion. Because Brozor is patient, forgiving, and gregarious. Okay, however... Some of these people... Actually, for once in my entire life, have all family slots filled. Okay. In that case, I'm just going to go and look around 21 Intrigue. Deceitful, wow. Calm and gluttonous. What a combo. I just want to scroll over each one of these people. And just get an idea of who's in our uh, prison right now. That is a zero-year-old infant in a cage. Don't worry, that's just, listen, they made cribs out of metal back then. It's really not as serious as it looks. Okay? He's just really small, because he's zero, and the camera's just really zoomed in.
it's a playpen, yeah. Thank you. Um, I can't really do anything except get a weak hook. How can you demand the conversion of a zero-year-old baby? <laughs> hey, uh, Kozol Inese Kyrgyz. Um, son of Prince Gyeltsin. And grandson of the Gyalpo Kozel. Would you just change religion? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely you would. Well, you can't afford to pay anything. There's no- there's no ransom here. For a favor? Okay, I'll- I'll- I'll let you go for a favor. You're just a baby. <laughs> Three years old? You look like seven. Oh, you're a giant. You're a comely giant. Wow. What a combo. Uh, do you have any family? There's really nothing I can do about it. Alright, 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 alright. Hold on. Listen, I'll show you what we're actually... Whole of body. No. Here's what we're actually doing. What's up with all these, like, super kids? This one's a twin. I'm scrolling down, looking to see if there's anybody that's worth recruiting. <laughs> Lustful, arrogant, a fornicator, homely. Not a good combo. Out of these 28 people, we didn't get a single warrior. And or... Worthy individual. Lots of children. Lots of kids taken captive. A godless empath. What is that? Baron. Forever sworn to emptiness. How do you know that? Confider. In sharing his problems with a close confidant, Ilgazi has become able to manage life far better than he could alone. Three. You're really smart, but you don't have anything else. Okay, well, I just looked at all 28, and there are some people who are smart, but there's nothing I can do with that right now. So we're just gonna mass ransom. These are some important buttons down here. I'm just gonna mass ransom 24 characters from the dungeon. Okay. They can all go. The invasion's over. They're gone. There we go. Another, another uh, task dealt with. I almost unpaused out of habit. Two children lack guardians. Your son, Brozor, and your daughter, Plazalon. Well, Brozor. I will teach... Wow. You're nine years old. You've already almost got double-digit diplomacy. Hey, what's up? Not so smoky. I have no idea about this game. That's okay, neither do I. Some people watch me anyways. Value shashed. What's up? Hello, little bee. Everybody else just people arriving. <laughs> you know what? I will tutor you myself. I have two open spots. You're going to be a king someday, Brosor. I need to teach you to rule wisely and well. Uh, who else? Plazalon. Plazalon, I, I could also teach you. Paranoid and charming. Ten to intrigue. Hmm. Yeah. Why not? Why not spend some time with my children in my old age now that I'm 55 and we just conquered an entire kingdom of Ob and I'm about to be an emperor? Need some family time while we consolidate. 
Okay, titles can be usurped. Gyalpo of Ob. So I think that's just the kingdom of Ob, for all intents and purposes. Still held by the guy that we invaded. But he doesn't own any of the land anymore. We own all of it. So here's the thing. I can't just go about... Like a psycho usurping these titles. Because this is like 500 gold just to take this. I only have 600 gold. So we have to be really cautious with what we decide to usurp. So we need to do this strategically. This is probably going to be a thing that takes generations to do. I'm charming, but everyone is out to get me. Does anybody who's actually charming say I'm charming, though? Okay. I think part of their charm is that they leave certain things unsaid. Mike. Me. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. I didn't account for you. The rest of you. You can declare eight wars. Why? <laughs> I know. I can declare war on anyone that I want. You're right. Right-click to dismiss all. Oh, that's so useful. Why didn't I read that sooner? Um, powerful vassals. Yes, also, similarly, I know there's low control in 29 counties, so just get rid of that. Now, the most important title that we can create is the actual Empire of Siberia. Shockingly cheap, 500 gold, and gives 500 prestige. Now, here's the thing. Do I really need to do this? I ask you. The reason I ask is because I already have 2200 prestige and nothing to spend it on yet. What I really need is to, sp to potentially pay, instead of 500 gold, of out of my 613, I need to maybe build some buildings because... I might want to move the capital of the Kingdom of Sukberia to a new duchy. Let's go ahead and control left click That way we can kind of see how uh, the, the full realm is broken up. So we can see all the different individual realms here. Talks, you see Twitch testing automated mid-roll ads? I, I have not seen that or heard anything about that. So, no comment. But anyways, I, I actually might need money in Prestige. In order to move the capital and bulk that up. So, if I'm just looking at duchy titles alone, we basically own everything up to Shoria and Kakas Hollow, which I don't own all of Kakas Hollow, so it doesn't make any sense to go over there. But, like... If I wanted to claim the Slayer duchy title for myself and just hold like five or six of these chiefdoms, I could do that. And there might be a benefit in that, in that the duchy of Slayer's home field advantage is in fact also the kingdom of Obs. Here's another question. Are there differing amounts of holdings? And I just don't... Maybe? Let, let's go to um, County View. Check that out. Because, like, this is the county of Ob, in the kingdom of Ob. Alright, can we zoom in a little bit? Do they all have four, like, three open spots? Or do sometimes... Oh, they don't. Interesting. So, it, are there ones that have more than three empty spots? Because now we see that there are some that have two. So that's interesting. Uh, once again, for the people that got in late, I'll just point out that uh, you do not have to form a title in order for succession to work. If you are capable of forming a title, then your hypothetical succession works the same. Ex I guess the, the, the reason I might... The only thing I need to do it for is to keep them from exiting, quote-unquote, the realm, but I can vassalize them afterwards and get the benefit of 500 prestige, because they'll be kings and I'll be an emperor. Uh, which is pretty much the plan to Yugra, which is just befriend them, be an empire, and then ask them to join us peacefully. So there are some gambles you can make there and some strategies because your wealth will pass from uh, one person to the next. 
so I can, you know, I don't need to spend the money right now, is what I mean. I don't know if that's too greedy. The reason why I don't want to do it is because I want to spend my income and prestige to try and get a duchy that is uh, well-developed in order to move my capital so that I don't have what I currently have, which is just a scattering of individual counties across the entire realm. I don't know what's preferable here. So let's look at maybe some of the other things that we can do. Like, uh, go ahead and give some titles away in some areas that we definitely don't want. And then just hang on to titles that we might. Okay? So we need to start somewhere. If we go to the county view. I wish there was a way to overlay county view with like a, a light border that showed you it, where your counties are. That would be super nice. Maybe you can, like, keep control clicking? No. Well, sort of, but also no. You can control click, but it just shows you more realms. Well, some of... Why, okay, hang on, why? Oh, it does, it does. So this is all me, but it still doesn't show the counties. You know what I mean? I still have to zoom in. That's the issue. I'm trying to get something where I can see county view. Well, that doesn't help me either. I still have to zoom in. All right, it's fine. Just forget about it. Go to... Suckberia. And I'm just going to look inside of Suckberia. And I need to give away... Everything that is on the eastern side of this impassable terrain. What is the name of this mountain range in real life? I mean, I know where I am. I could just look at a map. Let me just look at the map. Okay, let's look at the map. Normally reserved for uh, flight sim streams. Not today. Check this out. Welcome to the Google Earth. So how tall um, do we currently go? Could it, I think we are here. The Altay Mountains and the Western Cyan Mountains. I think this is literally the pass, the choke point right there, going through the other side. So, um, there's just like four lakes to the east, and then impassable terrain to the north, and then more mountain ranges that kind of just sweep underneath. So, uh, there's actually so many lakes. Maybe it's these? Ah. Maybe we're, like, closer to this? It's really hard to tell with this angle. Google map stream! Like, I think these are the lakes, right? Kakasia, that must be from Kakas Hollow. Where is that? Repo oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's just a lot of the Cyan Mountains. This is crazy. So this is what, like, our oh, there's Omsk? Yeah, we I know where Omsk is in the game. North Kazakhstan. So the, the in-game map cuts off... Like, northern Russia, right? Like, up in here. This is, like, the the top where the impassable terrain is. Cool. Just curious about that. 
Because there's, uh, isn't, didn't we read Cyan something here? I swear there is, like, a title or... Maybe not. There's definitely an identifying characteristic of Cyan here. But I don't remember where it is. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Getting distracted easily is uh, my forte. Now, I do want to give away these for sure, because we don't even have the entire county. I mean, the duchy. So, everything east of what I think are the Cyan Mountains. I don't know which Cyan Mountains these are. It's hard because I don't know which way the map is rotated, but it's cool to just see it in Google Earth. Everything east of this, let's start with that. Okay, who are we going to give it to? We got 17 champions, and basically all of them fought for us. Um, and many of them are already vassals. So I have to kind of make a decision on when to, like, put it like this. I only have room for 20, 23 vassals, and yet I need to give away 26 holdings, roughly. 25 holdings. Therefore, I physically can't do the, like, ultimate power game structure. Oh, each of you gets one single county. No, I have, like, some of them are going to have to get two. And a duchy. Geogesser Crusader Kings Edition. Can you find a modern day location of where your empire fell? Look, there's a McDonald's there now. <laughs> Hi, Cecilia. How's it going? But good job, Mr. McDerp, if you were right. What's the penalty for being over on holdings? Basically, you can't function. We do get a grace period, so I could technically unpause until Feb 1001. Um, but you lose your taxes and your levies. So let's start with Julem. Go from the top. And I'm going to pick... I think champions are a natural place to start for some of these. Now, I don't know how to value these lands. I would think that the weaker champions should probably get these lands because we don't even have complete duchies yet. Therefore, oh god, we're going to have another problem. <laughs> oh, my vassal list. Right, yes, I do have 17 vassals, certainly, and we've got some new ones in here. Who are you? Duchess... Sisek Silbu Kizi. I don't know how to say that. What do you own, Obel? Oh, fantastic. And you hate me because you're a title claimant. You desire four chiefdoms I have the rights to, which that's going to be fixed soon. I am unreformed. They don't like my government and faith type. I'm tribal. Are you guys feudal already? Uh, they don't. She's impatient. I haven't been her king for very long. I was in an offensive war. Okay, that's kind of tricksy because offensive war is just a debuff you get for your vassals. So if you stay in war long enough, your vassals all dislike having their soldiers be used by you. You didn't even fight for me. So how do you have a negative 30? Um, I, I conquered you and now you're my vassal. I shouldn't get a 30 debuff after that. That has to work its way down. High tribal authority, minus 10. Yep, that's normal. Not rightful liege. Just wait until I'm your emperor. Foreign culture, that's understandable. My religion is hostile, and you're zealous. So literally, there's nothing that I can do to make you like me. And also, I don't think I can legally strip any titles. Because this is an act of tyranny. Okay, so I can't give your land over to someone else. I just have to deal with you. Until we can either convert your culture over to mine and religion. And or you die. Because your child really thinks I'm okay. To be honest. I don't think that's even your heir. Who's your heir? No, it is your heir. Yeah, I just need to wait until the next generation. Ooh, that's going to be tough. Because you're not the only one. Uh, High Chieftain Islevon is just some Suomonusko guy that I don't... He's my nephew? 
My vassal and champion. We should have some more people that loathe me. Chieftain Togley. Same deal. Duke Lineg. Minus 100. Fantastic. I don't know who this is, but Sick Mask, Chieftain Nalka. Here's the Hercules, who married my daughter. I also... I don't think I can show you guys this. <laughs> I want to I want to show you what my son did. But I don't think I don't think you can physically see. Hold on. That's not your bed. That's just the floor. I like the floor better than the bed, Dad. Apparently. <laughs> Dude, I want to hook up Hercules with more land if I can. Because this dude's sick. Not only is he only 23 and married to my daughter. Uh, we up-jumped him. To a vassal by giving him a duchy and a chieftain. He is ambitious, to be sure, but he's Herculean, literally. Prowess plus eight with a huge health boost. Military engineer, an unyielding defender, and a skilled tactician with 24 prowess and 16 martial skill. So I feel like he's going to end up being a very staunch ally. And uh, I don't know if there's any land up here I can actually give him, though, and that's the downside, because I don't think... I don't think I own any of this. So, is it a, is it actually a problem if I give him land that's not connected? And it's in a different duchy? Is that okay? Because I don't own- I don't own any of these, I don't think. He's really far away over here. What about any of my- do I have any more territory on the western side instead of this uh, eastern side that I was looking at? It's really hard to tell. Chat, is there an easy way to just overlay? This is what I'm talking about. Because I got th I got 35 titles. It's getting bad. I have to kind of remember where they are. Like, where's pa- Where's- I don't know where Pavlodar is. Not- not here. And when you hit back, it doesn't even take you back to the right screen. Um. um oh, I can just highlight them. Hang on. This is probably the easiest way. Wait, it doesn't highlight them from this far out? How close do I have to be? No, it still does. It's just like... It's just like very, very lightly colored. Okay, I see. I feel like I'm playing, um, like Simon. Trying to find the right... matching color. In the right place. Would it be easier on county view? I guess so, yeah. But there's still like 35 of them. <laughs> this is very painstaking. I can still only barely see. It's just a tiny overlay. Most of them are gonna... I think I just need to try to remember what they're called. Most of them are new. I think we just only had like three spots. I think we just had Tartus, Atbasar, and something else. I just don't think we had much. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give him some land. No one said leading a kingdom is easy, my lord. This is very overwhelming. This is why past Etal left it to future Etal, okay? <laughs> this is exactly why. Because he, he didn't want to deal with it. And there's good reason. See, this is a possible five-spot holding. With a duchy building. So I'm interested in that one. And that's part of Obel. Tomsk. 
Tomsk looks like a better Tartus to me. Except, um, I guess it does have Kia, which just only has two holding spots. We got a Narim, of course, which I already gave away. Four and two. Never mind. All right, skip. We're, we're going to say skip this one. All right, in that case, I'm going to give the nice Tomsk County. <laughs> Finally giving one away. Where's Hercules? All right, Hercules, you can have Tomsk. There you go. Uh, High Chieftain Heinz gains 40 opinion of you for 50 years. And um, Tomsk is buried in the list of just random spots that we have. There you go. King Brozor has gifted you a space. I know it's very far away from where you actually live. And it's going to be difficult to manage as a result. But you don't... Whatever. You, you deal with it. Not my problem anymore. All right, Kia. This is a... Where, where's the really tiny one? Kia's got four and two. Okay, let's pick a... Let's pick a champion who's way down the list who definitely fought for us. High Chieftain Zarni. High Chieftain Zarni, we did take your land, and you didn't really deserve to have that land taken away from you. You were a fine leader, and you're also, um... You were my friend. I know you want a seat on the council. And I think you fought for me in the war, so... What do I have on you? What's the secret? Wait. What's... Hang on, what secret? Did you murder somebody? <laughs> Oh, you did! You murdered somebody! You murdered somebody's mom! You murdered my cousin's wife's... Yeah, you murdered my cousin's wife. Never mind. Uh, Zarni, I'm just gonna expose you. <laughs> I ex exposed that High Chieftain Zarni murdered Yassar! I don't know why I did that. I just decided to do it. They- people should know, chat. They should know. Okay? Zarni, I thought you were a good guy. I almost gave you more land. You almost tricked me. Now, back to where I was. That was uncalled for. Well, I called for it. High Chieftain Dondi of Sabir. Dude, there's gonna be such border gore. Where do you live? You have two duchy titles and four... Okay, we need to find people in my court. No, no, no. We just need to find unlanded champions. That's all we need to find. All right. No one that's called Vassal. All right? If they have the title Vassal, then it's too much. Borbak Girin. Your champion, resentful gentleman. Holy warrior, stubborn, honest, and paranoid. You deserve some land. Okay, you were a, f a good, decent enough warrior and you didn't die. You know what? That's got to count for something. So I choose you to grant some titles to. Let's go ahead and just zoom in here. You can have Kia. Okay. I'm really, really glad that you can click on the one that you want to give. That's way easier than finding it in the list. This is why I'm called King Brozor, chat. Okay. Because I'm hooking everybody up with, with land right now. If you fought for me, you're going to get a piece. I wish it would... T like, Arnaz is my courtier friend and court physician. He's going to get his own duchy. If he hasn't got one already. Viryas is my Noidi. I don't even think he can get titles. Okay. Sorry, buddy. Um, High Chieftain Kildyson of Volga, Bulgaria is... Already a double duke. High Chieftain Kloptod is my brother. I could give my brother some more land. But Kloptod is in like a... A conspiracy to do something to me, I remember. I learned. So, I'm not sure. 
got seven children, though. It wouldn't be that bad to give him a d another title. He's family, dude. All right, Arvo, your champion. I think Arvo got wounded. He is ambitious, compassionate, and brave. A fine warrior. And we are going to hook him up now. Hopefully before he dies. Okay, there you go. Taskil. Count Arvo of Taskil became your vassal. Fantastic. All right, the land is thinning. Let's go ahead and go to the outside edge now. We're running out of room. Nye Dog deserves two spots. 22 prowess. Oof. Content, cynical, and gluttonous, but he is robust, melancholic. Let's brighten your spirits, Nye Dog! I will grant you both Julem and Jujul. That's a plus 80 opinion. I think those are part of the same area, right? I don't know. I can't tell because I'm not allowed to change... my view here. Yeah, those are both part of Kakass Hollow, okay? Then, we're going to go to champion list. So he got two, and it's pretty much everybody on this list that I care about, except for, of course, my friends. So what's the best way to find my friends? Probably, um... You can't... Weirdly, you cannot expand... Wait. Chat, did they patch this? <laughs> did this get patched? Do you guys remember, like, the day before yesterday? I couldn't click. There was no plus one. I was like, wow, I have way too many friends. I can't even see them all. Look, you can't click on this. I, I I could literally find the clip because King Brozor was befriending everybody. Well, it, now I can click it. Oh. Um, weird. Cool, I guess. But yeah, don't believe anything anyone in chat says, because they don't know shit. Okay? I was here, they weren't. They weren't even at the stream when I did it. Chat is a habitual maker-up of information. But you can click it now. Icarus says I just downloaded an update a few minutes ago. I don't know if I trust you. See, I don't know who to believe. I mean, you all saw when I tried to load the game in, I had to click a uncheck a compatibility thing to, to even see my saves. Dude, I just downloaded an update right now. All right. Anyway, here are my friends: King, High Chieftain, Odeg, Arnaz. There's my boy. All right, Arnaz. I'm gonna hook you up with all of Shoria. It's just gonna go to you alone. Okay. So let me get this correct. Shoria should be one, two, three, three counties. Yes. Chor, Yolchors, and Kuzbaz. This is my boy. He's gonna get the full. Duchy, all to himself. Except we haven't you make the duchy. <laughs> I don't want to pay for it. He gets 120 opinion of you for 50 years. He's gonna die in like two days. He doesn't have any children, so I don't know who's gonna inherit this. But there you go. Count Arnaz of Kuzbas became your vassal. All that means is I comes right back to me, dude. Hello, chat. What's up? Marin. Name I don't know how to say.
Count Arnas is no longer your court physician. Well, he's better off here, okay? He knows what he's doing. He's still my friend. So now I actually will search for a court physician. He wasn't like a top tier physician anyways. He was just like a tier one. Now, let's take a look at the map. Because we still got 23 holdings. And uh, we're going to have to make some hard decisions here in a sec. Okay. Look at the duchy. Like, for example, do I want... Okay, this is not even mine. This is mine. Slayer has, like, way too many, though. Slayer, as a total duchy, is this many individual counties. So there's no way we can control the whole thing anyways. What about the Kulindi Step? Okay, I actually don't own the bottom piece. I could if I wanted to. Only four slots. Nothing special. Okay, what about up here? In, what is that? Lonikaz. Five. Ooh, fancy. Here's what I don't like. I don't like moving my capital to the border. <laughs> that just seems really dangerous. Um... However, this is a decent little duchy. I think it's only three counties. Yeah, it's only it's a little small. Only three counties. What else we got? Uh, something up here, maybe. Okay, I'm looking for a five. Ob's got five. Ob, uh, maybe it is best to just take Ob and part of like a big chunk of Solaire. That might, that might actually be the best, because it's either that or Barbara Step, which has five as well. Barbara Step's pretty nice. Only downside is it has multiple, only two bonus holding spots. Wow. All right, change. Wow. It's even worse than I thought. What's the max number of holdings you can get? You can get four, dude. Barbara's a little too tight there two spots and then this one's only got one where's the one that's only got one no this one's only got two 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 three two see it's not it's not good enough i've seen six in ireland hold on we're going to ireland six of these or six of these There's, wow, five and then four open spots in Dublin. Yeah, Ireland's pretty pretty stout in terms of just space. Press W, start in Ireland. So, Chef, if you're wondering why we're being so painstaking about this, I'm basically looking for a new duchy that I can move my capital to. So it's kind of a big long-term decision and it's not something that I can do lightly or easily. So apologies um, if you're just annoyed, but I gotta do it, dude, because I gotta, I gotta examine all my new holdings. Because like Kalindi Step and Lanikaz are each, I think, three county duchies. No, there's a four-county duchy. But what if... Let's, let's, let's check this one out a little bit more in detail again. So we got uh, three opening and then four buildings. Three opening and five buildings. Three opening and four buildings. Two opening and four buildings. So this is really the only weak spot. But Kalindi is pretty decent. You can't win them all. Let's, let's look again at Ob. Because Ob's got five and three. See, this is where it sucks. Down to two. Down to two. Down to two. Down to two. So we don't want any of those. But we could do Ob. 
then come around this side and we still have... Oh, God. Ob sucks. I really think that the Kalindi step might be our most consistent bet, but I do like having the duchy building slot here. But that's the only thing I like about Solaire. In terms of just actual holding openings, it's really limited. Not a lot of space to stretch out. So I don't know, dude. These are really my only choices. I guess you can't, uh, you can't win them all. Barbara Step has this one that's really good, and then also the rest of it sucks, as we pointed out. What do you do for a man who has the world, and it's still not enough? It's possible that we could just take the rest of Kha'Zix, so why don't we just look at that real quick. Only two. Only two. Four! Out of nowhere. Ah! Okay, maybe we're moving to Kha'Zix. Um, I just don't own it yet. Maybe just, like, give everything in Sakberia away. And then just back-to-back -back war for Teak, Kipchak, and Zungaria. And then just become... Kazakhstan! Because that's pretty good, dude! Ah! All right, well, what I've decided is, for sure, for sure, for sure, I'm going to give it, give away everything except for, I'm going to hold on to Kalindi Step and maybe just Ob itself, because it's just decent, you know? Keep Ob. The, just the county. Keep one, two, three, and give this one away. So one, two, three, four... And then the current capital of, um, Tartus, okay? And then I'll probably keep six total, because I just have bad stewardship right now. My next in line should be able to get a sixth. So we'll just keep one too many. So let's just decide which ones we're going to keep right now. Okay, Tartus, number one. Ob, number two. Galindi step, three, four, five, six. That's pretty much it. Just give everything else away. So, where are my other, uh, I only have one or two other actual holdings, and I still don't know where those are, because I'm not very good at this game. I think it's, uh, Atbasar. Atbasar's pretty sick. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, it's part of Kazakh. Okay, we have to keep that then, because that's literally part of it. So keep Atbasar. Sure. Perfect. Uh, Pavlodar. So, yeah, get rid of that. Alright, let's get rid of all the stuff in Lanakaz. Let's give Lanakaz away. Who lives here? Just me right now. Okay, I'm the only guy. Um, who... Let's just look at our friends list again. Do we have any non-vassals on our friends list? Plorgod is a king. Chieftain Jebeg of Pelham is my best friend and also a high chief with only one title, though. That's not a lot. Where do you live right now, sir? Like, just... Just Pelham. Okay. Well, uh, Jebeg, I think we have had... A lot of good times together. Like, he's my best friend. Alright, my best friend... You can have Lanakaz. I bestow it to you. You gotta hook up the best friend, dude. Especially if your name's Brozor. Wait. Can I not? Because he's already...
Wait, yeah, why can't I give any more titles? Can you not give titles to a high chief? He's in another kingdom, probably. Who's your liege? <laughs> oh, you're plor gods. Okay, gotcha. Well, that sucks. I can't even hook up my best friend, dude. I could just give plor... Plor god's been pretty chill. We could just give him some land. He's my brother. We've liked our brothers. I have to integrate him into the kingdom first, though. Like, I'd have to take Yugra, then give him land. Oh my god, this is so complex. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, didn't I? I told you right from the beginning. What's the de jure empire capital of the Empire of Siberia? That might be a good spot. It's way over here. Implore God's land. In Yugra. I do get one year of grace period. I guess I will probably form the Empire, try and vassalize Yugra while I'm still best friends, and then and then unpause. So I think I do need to form the Empire. It's greedy to wait until after I die. It's only 500 gold. Okay, and so we shall. Ugh, I'm stuck in a rut. I keep messing up and picking leaders with partition succession and losing all my land when my first leader dies. See, Splash, almost everybody has partition succession. You just have to get good. But it's not a mess up to pick a leader with partition succession. I have partition succession. Okay? And I've got this. You can too. With some practice. And, uh, take some time, you know? Take it easy. Take it slow. Don't rush. This is my first campaign of CK3. You know why? Because I've been paused for an hour and a half. And because of that, I'm going to make some good decisions, hopefully. It's time to make the Empire chat. So Plorgod does have a uh, kingdom of Yugra inside his realm, but I have the 45 counties necessary within my purview and the 500 gold required. For tribals, it's 50% cheaper than the Empire, which is super nice. Let it be done. You are now a mighty high king. Wow, I gave my crown away? I didn't expect that. A little bit of humble um, showing through from King Quirtle. Welcome to Siberia. Actual Siberia. Looking, uh, looking pretty solid here, huh? We have a new primary title. Why is it? Okay, it's just called High Kingdom. I gotcha. Add laws? What is this page? Add a title-specific succession law to High Kingdom of Siberia. This law will only apply to this specific title and not affect any other titles in your realm. Rulers of at least King Tier may take the Adopt Special Succession decision instead if they have access to a cultural elective succession possible laws. Um, male only, male preference, Saxon elective. Scandinavian elective or Tanistry elective. So you can make like it um, the ruler and vassals of one and of one and two ranks below this title can nominate an heir from among the members of the ruler's dynasty. Vassals will tend to favor older distant relatives over close family. The ruler and all de jure vassals except barons can nominate an heir amongst the ruler's extended family and any claimants. Voting power in the succession laws influenced by the elector's total domain development and capital popular opinion. Wow, that sounds hard. Uh, ruler and all direct adult de jure vassals 
One or two ranks below this title can nominate an heir from the most powerful vassal among them, the ruler's legitimate children, and any other claimant. Whew. Tough. Don't think we want to change that. <laughs> That's what I've been playing with. Do you take uh, control of them afterwards? Like, even if they're not your family? Like, how does how does the gameplay work? Because that sounds like a really interesting hot potato game that I would be down for trying at a later date. Go for popularity. Scandinavian popularity um, elective. And then just play as whoever's the most popular king every single time. Well, I think I know what chat wants. The High Kingdom of Sakberia, right? Here. You drop this king. Sakberia 2. You can influence another's vote? I see. It's great when all your children suck, but you have a genius strong uncle or something. Huh, that's pretty cool. What's my title? I'm High King now. High King Brozor of Sakberia. The High Kingdom of Sakberia. I guess you could name it, but it'd be like... Like, High... If you named this, like, Empire of Sakberia, it'd be something weird, like High Kingdom of Empire of Sakberia. <laughs> So this is probably fine. Dude, welcome to Broberia, everybody! Okay, now that we've done that, we have 2700 prestige, no money, but we're getting 13 gold. And also, welcome to a new era of succession. So, uh, interestingly, making a... Empire actually created more of a succession crisis than we had before. This is what I was afraid of. Because previously, Murgrin was going to inherit all of our counties. Now, Jacep, since we have an empire, isn't going to... Um, he's going to take the, <laughs> the rest. <laughs> Including Ob. So, I knew this was going to create more trouble. Somehow. <sighs> How can I do this? I think I have to move the capital sooner rather than later. Not Piotr's gonna... Uh, dude, you can't give the youngest son three, six, nine, ten, eleven counties. And the eldest... only gets nine. But he does get the Empire, I guess. Yeah, I'm giving away a bunch more titles, so I have no idea how this is going to sway everything. Can we see your culture outline? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Alright, we're not- no, no we're not going to get distracted. Alright, no distractions. I have to focus on giving away the title so I can unpause the game. We're not going to look at religious maps. We're not going to look at culture maps. We're not going to look at the rest of the world. I gotta- I gotta get this game going. Somehow. And succession is going to be very difficult. Now, we have to continue to give away stuff. Let's do it. Now that I have an empire... Oh, there's another thing we have to do. Yugra. Mmm! King Plorgod. Plus 16. Now that I am one tier above him, and we're not both kings, only one of us is a king. Deadbeat artist. Thank you who says I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. Here's my sub. Are you saying you're only subbing because I don't want your... I don't know what... Thank you for subscribing. Here you drop this emperor, is what you should be saying once we become feudal. 
See, this is a much better story. We're bringing in our brother Plorgod peacefully because even though he has a base reluctance of negative 45, I am the true ruler. Where is that? I don't even know. King Plorgod is a king minus 50, but he is de jure your vassal plus 15 because technically the empire of Sucberia encompasses his kingdom, so that's a plus 15 there. I'm stronger than him. He is your friend is a plus 10, which I think is awesome. Uh, mechanic in the game. He's your, your dynasty. He's intimidated. I don't know why he's intimidated. And he generally just likes me. He thinks I'm pretty cool. So we're going to offer vassalage. And uh, I am going to go ahead and unpause because we have a grace period. So let's get a couple of these things going. High chieftain. Ooh, we got a lot going on, chat. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I accept the ransom offer. Zero gold. Thank you. We're going to get a lot of that. Ten gold. A hundred gold? You're royalty. You're the, are you the princess? Why are you worth one hundred gold? That's a small fortune. Greetings. Hi, King Brozor. I accept your ransom and hope to see uh, Kitsi Inise... Kyrgyz, returned in good health. No gold, though. Thank you. Thank you for your, your absolute nothing. Ten gold for Aiton. Ten gold for Goulet. Who is that random barren five-year-old? Greetings, High King Brozor. Says Siren. Ten gold. Ten gold. But wait, there's more chat. You're the only one I made convert. <laughs> I only made like a couple of people convert to my liege. I accept your ransom offer and hope to see Ipek return in good health. Well, even though you hate me, here you go. Ten gold for you. Ten gold for you. These are all the prisoners from the invasion. We cook on you. There's 28 of these, by the way. A hundred gold for Apek? You don't even- you're not even a leader. You're in that same family, though. It must just be this dynasty. I don't know, you only got- you're insignificant. I don't know why you're worth a hundred gold, but I'll take it. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I was like, I didn't imprison Plorgod, right? King Plorgod of Ugra, uh, says... I accept your gracious offer of vassalization. My liege! Woo! <laughs> Grandson of Mahila Asli. Wow, that zero year old wrote you a letter of thanks for releasing him. Put that on the fridge. <laughs> They're very eloquent. And good handwriting, too. Why are children always gamblers in this game? Roof? That is a great question. I think Suckberia just has too many slot machines. We probably should pass some laws. 20,000 troops up to 27,000. Okay, so... Welcome back into the fold, Yugra! First of all, peacefully reintegrated into the greater empire of Sukberia, which is looking mighty menacing on the map, zoomed out. Um, I think that's way better than what Chat was telling me to do, which was as soon as we got confederate partition split, you were all demanding I go to war with my own brother, who likes me, and thinks I'm pretty cool. Now I have a negative 20 for short reign, because I'm his liege again, and he wants a seat on the council, which is understandable. Could I put him as a book boy? Because 27 learning. I wish I could assign my own Noidi, dude, because uh, my brother is a force to be reckoned with, but I can't. That would be so sick. 27, what a super genius. Scholar, he's a reveler. He's smoking up, flagellant, just like Dad. 
Astute intellectual, but humble, shy, and deceitful. And, on top of that, of course, he has almost 5,000 troops, which makes him probably the most powerful vassal uh, that we have, if I had to guess. In fact, if I sorted by the realm and sorted by military strength, um, King Plorgod is indeed the most powerful vassal that we have now. So that's, that's pretty huge, okay? Not only did we not have to go to war for it, but think about it like this. Brothers from the same dynasty, he's looking over at me, dad's firstborn and heir, and is like, you were my bro, Rosor, but now I'm happy to call you my liege. Like, think about it. Watching your brother become an emperor and invade the full kingdom of Ob, which has just been sitting on our border as part of the Kyrgyz Khanate for a hundred plus years, and we finally take the offensive into them and, like, take a huge swath of land. That would be impressive enough to bend the knee anyways. You know what I mean? Because it's like, wow, I just saw how powerful you were, especially as a Sue Manusko. You, you show bravery, justice, and you're stubborn as ever. The justice wasn't not attacking me to take my title back as soon as you lost it. And you can now give your best friend land? Oh yeah, can I? That's a nice... I, I forgot about that, yeah. I can. Modify feudal contract. Renegotiate his... What is this? Oh. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this screen in... 70 plus hours. Okay. Okay, I think I recognize from CK2. Why is he- why does he have a feudal contract? This is basically just like taxes, levies, which used to be governed by, um... Legal decisions that you'd make. I know this is the guy I gave land. I'm- look, I just wanted to see if I could give- make a duchy and give it to him, but... I'm all- I'm interested in this right now. Okay, so shh. Succession rights, force partition, war declaration sanctioned, council rights guaranteed, title revocation protected. The liege high king Brozor of House Avrin. Well, I guess I inherited this. I can use hooks. Extort, exempt. So depending, oh, act of tyranny. But this is fine. How come lowering taxes is not an act of tyranny? Yeah, the tax levy focused obligations in CK2. Yeah. Oh, it even gives you a preview. That's really cool. So right now his contribution is just 119. Could be up to 167. Or as low as 47. And you can increase the their opinion by lowering your demands of them. Hmm. So it's a way to kind of uh, manipulate the opinion of your vassals. But through a feudal system that we shouldn't have access to, but apparently do. Opinion with the Vassal, minus five, for changing his um, succession rights. Oh, I have to sanction his war? Is that what this means? The va Wait, sanctioned war declaration is a feudal contract that gives the following Vassal privileges. The Vassal can declare a war, regardless of Liege's crown authority. The Vassal pays 50% less for Cassus bellies within the realm. So, okay, I'm telling- I'm giving him a blank check, basically, to go to war inside the kingdom. Interesting. Council rights guaranteed. Powerful vassals minus two. The demand council position interaction can be used at will. Vassal is granted special privileges and will expect a permanent seat on the council. Granting this to too many vassals will eventually upset <laughs> the powerful ones. Huh, this is really neat. And then I can protect them from title revocation. Which is a guarantee that their titles will never be revoked by the Liege, basically. Regardless of the Liege having a, a reason or not. Um, I feel like for that you should get more than a plus five. These all seem like plus tens to me, because I don't know, maybe they're not. I'm sure it's balanced. But like, a, I will never do anything bad against you! 
ever. You actually have my full unrestricted support. Uh, okay, I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, I like you this much more than I did a second ago. <laughs> I can't, I can't, they don't want to be my friends. I don't understand how to make them like me. All right, where's my bestie? Hello, Ajax. All right, you had a duchy in Pelham. Now I can grant you titles. Don't give him Atbasar. All right, if I'm not mistaken, we need to double check this though. This screen is actually the easiest screen to see where your specific lands are. Because it's nice and high. Like, I can only give away titles that I have. So this screen actually shows them better. The problem is I can't see the details on the bottom left. But oh well. Um, yeah, like, I need to go back to Duchy View. I think I was going to give him Lanakaz, right? Like, the whole thing. The issue with that is, he's not my vassal, so it's really a bad idea. It's I think for RP purposes, we just give him, like, one place in Barbara's Step for no reason, because he's not gonna, we're not going to get anything out of it. Um, so you can have the Chiefdom of Kanda, because I really don't benefit directly at all. And I'm not humble like my father was, so... Oops. God. Wrong button. Here we go. Okay, you can have... Kanda. For just because you're my friend. Now, um, out of my brothers in my family, what am I, do my sister's husbands have any land? That's a good idea. Because she is compassionate, shy, and just. Which one got cheated on? <laughs> I think Itlar is the guy, right? Didn't Itlar cheat? On Mazava? Are you sure it's balanced? I'm just giving benefit of the doubt. That's all. So I can't give land just to her. I'm pretty sure it is him, because he's lustful. Like, I can grant him titles, but it just seems bad. But I am giving it to my... I'm effectively saying, forget about you, it goes to my grandson. You know what I mean? So, who cares if you did a little adultery? I'm hooking up my grandson with my my firstborn grandson, I think. He's four years old. All right. That, that seems reasonable to me. So, we were going to hook him up with... Omsk? How about we do two? Nah, I have I have so much room for vassals. Let's not let's not make too many powerful ones. All right, you get a you get a county. Okay. Then uh my second born daughter, oh, is Hercules friend. I already gave you Tomsk. Okay. Then my son and heir not Piotr, Natalia. Not Piotr, you've already got an inheritance. You're going to be a king. It's fine. Natalia is 12. And we could, we could do a betrothal. So what we'd probably want is to pick somebody who's going to be, like, a really good warrior. Dude is compassionate, brave, but lustful. Has an 18 martial skill and 15 prowess as a 17-year-old. A forest fighter. Brilliant strategist. Okay. Um, well, you um, make a good case. She loses 400 and also... Hang on, is she... Any kind of wound might prove fatal to Natalia since her sanguine, sanguine humors are in a hurry to escape her body. Curious, trusting, and gluttonous. Well, um, please... 
protector rip the 400 prestige. <laughs> Sorry, honey. You've got 600. That's plenty. And then he says... Oh, there's still prisoners being released. Hi, it's me, Koja. I accept your ransom offer and hope to someday show you the same hospitality. <laughs> um, okay. That sounds like a good deal. Hi, it's me, one-year-old baby, Bonyak. <laughs> I also accept your ransom offer and hope to someday offer you the same hospitality. And here's Tin Gold. And here's Tin Gold. And here's Tin Gold. And... Here's the marriage proposal acceptance for not Pyotr. Oh my god. And here's Tin Gold. Now you, on the other hand... Uh, do we... I have a three-year-old daughter. This seems like a pretty good idea, right? So let's do it. I mean, Comely and Giant is an interesting combination. Sorry for putting you in my three-year-old prison, but um, come on over and maybe one day you'll get some land. Literally better prowess than Brozor. This is... <laughs> Dude, this three-year-old could beat me up. <laughs> um, He's stronger than me. <laughs> I'm 55. I'm like a war veteran. Actually, I don't know if Brozo's ever fought in a war. Honestly, I don't even know if I released that three-year-old from prison. He may have just bent the bars and snuck between them. I just pretended like, ah, oh, yeah, I let him go. Just to save face. Okay, well, there you go. Um, anywho, prisoner's gone. A faction targeting you has disbanded. Your son, not Pyotr, has gotten married, or at least there's a betrothal, and we formed an alliance with Itlar, because he is now a ruler. I'll pause again. Okay, I didn't... Oh, I invited court physicians. The world is full of dangers even to a high king in his court. As per my request, my servants have inquired after recommendations. Now, they have assembled a few options to choose from. Didn't we just find somebody who's a super renowned physician that I could ask to be a, f a physician? Oh, what is all this? Fornicator. Adulterer. Child of concubine and possessed. Arrogant, trusting, and patient with a 15 learning. Gun Gunduz's healing skills are well known in scholarly circles. Possessed. Famous reveler, adulterer, fornicator, possessed doctor. Versus somebody who's good with money. <laughs> well, definitely not you. And you're 67. So I'm going to say... Uh, wait, did Count Arnaz come back into the fold somehow? No. I wish I could still make him my court physician. You just can't land your court physician, apparently, because I guess they have their own matters to attend. Um, he became avaricious recently. Gold, gold, gold. Can there be any higher calling? He must have hit it big with book sales. Selling the uh, epic he wrote about my family, and now he's just rolling in the dough after capitalizing on his best friend. Maybe he used me to get famous and wealthy. possible uh who's this is there a third person journaler a wise woman mastermind philosopher with a learning of 16 in alternative medicines Hmm. 
What do you guys think? He leveraged the books into a miniseries. They're building the theme park now. You got suckered into selling your life rights. So it would seem. Um, I'm looking for anybody here that's got some traits. I say... Let's go with... Let's go with the alternative medicine wise woman journaler. Alternative medicine. Let's just give it a try and see what happens. Okay, courtier and court physician. Let's see. I'm curious. Benevolent High King Brozor of Sukberia, I accept your betrothal proposition. Your daughter, Natalia, will be betrothed to Chipaz. Okay, excellent. You know what that means? I assume that this three-year-old speaks like this. Greetings, High King Brozor of Sukberia. I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. I will graciously take the hand of your daughter, Norfengale, when the time comes and I am of age. Do anything out of line and I'll beat you up. Bullied by a three-year-old. Bullied by a three-year-old. All right, so I can't give him any land until he comes over. We still got uh, 15 holdings to get rid of. It uh, life comes at you fast here. All right, I, if I if I unpause, it's gonna get too crazy. I mean, I've I've already been unpaused a little bit, and that helped, but. Just remember what our, goal, our goals are. Our goals are to keep anything that's in Kazakh, okay? Kazakh itself has... Four counties. So that's hopefully going to end up being our new capital one day. So it might make sense to try and keep... What was that noise? Did you guys hear that? Like a whoosh noise, but it was only like one millisecond. Chiefdom of Kangsk is already built up. All right, we got to get rid of some of the stuff down here, dude. Let's start over here, because we know we don't want any of this. We just know. Uh, I wanted to keep Ob, so just get rid of everything in Solaire except Ob. How many vassals do we have now? 20, 22 out of 60! Because I'm an emperor. Oh, well then let's just create a bunch of less powerful people then. Let's go to the um, best friends list one more time. King. High Chieftain. Regular Chieftain. Your spy master, vassal, friend, who is also content. Alright, where's your current title? Way over there in Vagulia. All right, you're gonna get one, cause you've done a good job as spy master. This is a this is a pretty nice. Uh, that guy's already got that. Okay, I got this one though. I'll hook you up. That's for you, spy master. Remember this for as long as we both live. No, I can't land my female heirs, but I can marry them and give their husbands stuff. Kind of works out that way. All right, Corgon. Do I have anybody else on the count? Here's kind of a thing you can do. Uh, you'll probably notice that there are indeed powerful vassals that are angry about not being on the council. Okay, so we go to top realm. We sort by probably military strength would show me and then all the red fists indicate rulers who are angry at not being on the council so kings and stuff like that are definitely going to be up there like poor god who we just brought in from yugra but one thing you can do that is helpful is if you if you imagine that the the power scale exists like this and you keep giving land to the weaker people then you're actually also bringing the power levels down on average of the the stronger people so, you can actually remove powerful vassal from some of your weaker ones by making other vassals 
more powerful. Does that make sense? So that's one thing you can do to go around it. So, like, if I looked at, um... If High Chieftain Zarni is a thorn in my side, I can try and buff the people that are closest to him to upset the balance of power slightly. And maybe remove him. Or maybe I don't remove him because maybe he's just that powerful and I accidentally create another powerful vassal. But sometimes it works. Adding and subtracting people G in mass. But yeah, I like to look on the council. It's also cool because, like, since... Powerful vassals are angry at not being on the council. You can just make, like, let's say, let's just sort. High Chieftain Erder 2 is just the best chancellor, yeah? But he's not considered a powerful vassal because he only has 608 military strength. So what I can do is like, well, what if I just made you powerful? You could do that. It's not necessarily a great idea. Um, but sometimes you need desperate. Maybe, maybe there was like, the next best person is only 10. It might be worth it just to try to bring some balance. It's probably not good advice, but sometimes I do it anyway. Like here, 21, High Chieftain Kloptod, my half-brother, who has four counties and one chiefdom. All right, Kloptod, you deserve at least one piece of land. I think Corgon is fine to give away, right? Because it should be part of Solaire. So there you go. Enjoy. It's also a good way to... Um, after when you have this many domains... To give out. It's not a terrible idea to go and sort by... Um, go to Character Finder. Then sort by just Vassals. And then sort by Opinion. And then sort by the Reverse Order. So obviously these are the people we just conquered. So I'm going to skip them. But for some of our vassals that existed before, like... Count Arvo is a known criminal. Did I just give him a title seconds ago? What did you do? How do you see what their crime was again? I don't remember. I think I just landed him <laughs> moments ago. Uh, let's see, did I? Yeah, <laughs> I gave a criminal a county. Oh, he revolted. Is this the peasant leader? Oh, dude, the peasant leader. 39-year-old peasant leader. But you forgive him. Yeah, let's, let's uh, give him more land. You know what? He had the balls to try and rebel. He had... He tried to... Get something... That he didn't deserve. And I respect that about him. His bravery, his compassion. I can't arrange a marriage, though, I don't think. Actually, I can. Long Con Peasant Revolt. Peasant leader you really liked. <laughs> Is this some kind of reverse psychology? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Alright, what land did I just give him? Oh, it's in a oh, it's an oval. Oh man, I should have given him this and Kia. And I already gave Kia to this dude. I don't like giving well if I give him two different spots, one in each duchy, then he's just gonna cause problem for two different dukes. I do have a spot here in Abakan. All right, you can have the Abakan spot. Man, I hate how I did this. I, I like to keep them together instead of splitting them up. Too bad. Here you go. You can have Abakan as well, just because I, I think you're cool. <laughs> what a troublemaker. Peasant leader. Popular opinion, plus 10. Unyielding defender, tough soldier. He's like, man! I rebelled against this guy? He's pretty cool. King Brozor, sorry, Emperor Brozor. I'm so sorry that I tried to rebel against you. If only I knew that you were such a bro, that you were going to invade the Kyrgyz Khanate and then disperse your lands and holdings out amongst all of your faithful champions and warriors. It's 
If only I knew. Can you not choose recipient first? It's very confusing. Sort by... I just want to see family members. Whatever. Okay, your niece, your son, your son, your daughter, your daughter, your nephew. You know what? You can marry my niece. Because I just think that's funny. She's going to lose 100 prestige, but guess what? Both of you are very intense warriors. Trusting, content, and arrogant. Brave, compassionate, and ambitious. Seems like a good match. I should have married him matrilineally before I gave him the land, and then he wouldn't be so... I did it back. Chad, I just did everything wrong, dude. You can find... Okay, you can find your own spouse. <laughs> Ugh! This too much for my brain. 30 plus holdings, man. If I could go back and do it again, I would have given him both Kia and Pascal, and then matrilineally marriage. I can't save scum because I have to do everything we just did over again. So, it's too late. We gotta live with the consequences now. I'm still going to arrange the marriage. But I... <sighs> Because I don't... God. I That could have been a really good matrilineal match. Because we have pretty and giant kids that could grow up to be like awesome rulers and stuff. Use a hook on him? How do I get a hook on him? I don't even think that would help. It's negative 800 by default. A hook's not going to matter, right? Find another peasant leader there a dime a dozen? Not in my kingdom. I don't know how you run yours. Barely any peasant revolts here. I, finding secrets is too much work because I need to be disrupting schemes, especially when I just took over a whole new area. So that's just, a, that, that, that's just asking to be assassinated once you just got four new unhappy vassals that are powerful. So, don't read. Listen, no more read chat. Only go. I only play game now. I, uh, reading chat makes me explain why I can't do the thing that I'm being backseated to do. And it takes way more time. Okay. Sugberia. Lanikaz, Kulindi Step, and Barbara Step. Let's focus on Barbara Step in this little area right here. Is this my best friend, High Chieftain Jebeg? And now it's part of Yugra? Uh, I'm actually tempted to save scum because this is... <laughs> Alright, RP, whatever. You guys can just fight amongst yourselves. I don't care if I create border gore inside my own kingdom. It doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see it because this is all you're going to see. <laughs> don't save scum. Just go, dude. It's fine. It's fine. Okay? I promise. Hiding the evidence. It's historical. They kind of did do that though, right? Like, how many times did a king gift a distant county on the other side of the world to somebody and you were like a count in name, but you only visited your land like a handful of times in your entire life? That's real. Look at maps of the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, it happened all the time. They've just given land as favors, which is what I'm doing. It's like, you guys helped me get here, I'm giving back. All right, so we just gifted our spy master. High Chief just Vergava was our really good friend. She's the one that, that saved us from the wolf a long time ago, right? We hooked, she's already got two duchies though. So I think she's good. 
What about... Okay, Count Arnaz, we already hooked up. And he decided to abandon me and go live in Yugra. No, he's... No, he's not. He's here. He just can't be my doctor anymore. Okay. Then we got King Avte, your brother-in-law and friend. Who is part of Mordvinia. And he will not accept your vassal offer. Because you are of a different culture group, minus 30. Um, he is not your de jure vassal. So if we could, if we could make him a de jure vassal, all I would have to do is form Volga Ural, right? Which is probably doable. Neighboring ruler, treacherous villain. Negative 11. I could overcome this. We don't even need to befriend. I just need to sway. And we could just integrate this peacefully. King Vladimir, your brother-in-law. Your half-sister. Queen Denoptalon. Hey, good for you, Denoptalon. I know you're just queen over this place, Vladimir. But it's got 3,400 troops and looks pretty good. Negative 590. His realm is remote. Not for long. I'm coming for you. Okay. Focus. That was still a good thing to do and a general good strat. Now. Suck Beria, dude. I only gotta get rid of, like, nine more titles. It's really not that much. Let's do the other ones under Ob. Let's look in the court. Torturer. Shrewd. As a useful claim. I don't think this is useful. Mandakai. Suffers from a guilty conscience. Eager, reveler, comely, diligent, callous, and patient. Kanyuva. Frog. Fickle. Callous. Deceitful. Wowee. All right, what about my... When is it, when is it, who, who do I pick, dude? What about kids? No, we already did that. I can't give one heir any title he wouldn't automatically already inherit, right? Or can I? If I do this, he's going to go get himself killed. But he's going to do that anyways because he's not even my heir. Won't he be- won't he cease to be my ward after this? Uh-oh. Chat. Optical. We got a red alert. I repeat, optical. Frame drops imminent. Yeah, I think he gets his own court and decides his own guardian once he's king. I think he will, but you can put in a request to educate him again. Well, here's what I'm thinking, right? If we look at succession... Jacep is gonna get, like... Nine counties based on this. And Brozor... Is getting the kingdom of Permia with no actual land. Which is odd. Not Pyotr is getting Kangsk. And uh, Pavlodar with the kingdom of Sibir. So I need to give these Jacep lands to somebody. And then try and create a duchy title. But I think if I make a dut any if I make any duchy, it automatically goes to Jacep. So like if I create a duchy that I don't want, bro, I don't know, dude. This is a ma this is like a, <laughs> a math problem. Ah, yeah, uh, my brain. This king. Oh, hey, oh, my 
finished too, everyone. My brain hurts, dude. Peepo G. All I need to do is find some people in court to give titles to. That's it. That's all you gotta do. How about, uh, Virier, your champion? I don't even know how he got passed over. Athletic, hunter, diligent, greedy, honest. What a good guy. Okay, here's some titles for you. Bam. Igaron. For you. Um, next. In the Barbara Step, okay? Continue giving out the rest of the Barbara Step. There should only be one, two, three of those. Okay, go back to court. He might leave your court. He will stay if given a reason. He is compassionate, temperate, arrogant, and pensive. He's my nephew by Merzillo, my half-sister, who is an honorable quarreler and really likes me. All right, nephew, I'm gonna hook you up. You can have Ubens, okay? You're only 15, so enjoy your new lands. Who's next? What about my other sister's kids? I have 12 siblings left, chat. What about Anava? Visiting King Plorgod's court in Tumen. Can I give any of your- I don't think I can give any of your children titles. I arranged this marriage, though, so I technically did give Kirdyava land. Okay, done. Courtier of High Chieftain Jebeg and a Fool. Fornicator, Reveler... Alright, not you. But you are my niece's husband. Alright, let's let's just make sure we spread it around to at least everybody in the family. Tatka. Tatka and... Your brother-in-law and champion, Ojeg. Did I not give you anything? Okay, you can have Kalavon. Seems reasonable. And there's one more Barbara Step land that we had. Uh, we just looked at Merzillo and made her son account. Okay, we're hooking up the family right now. Then we got Plorgod, who's already a king and has only three counties, but he is king of Yugra and is our most powerful vassal, so it's generally a bad idea to give him any more. He's, he's got our protection. Queen Denoptalon, we already just looked at and is in Vladimir, so we can't do anything with her. Then we've got High Chieftain Kloptod, Who's got one, two, three, four, five counties and a duchy? He's doing just fine. <laughs> You're doing fine. Plus, you were involved in a plot to Here. like you drop this king, kill me, oh, or something. everyone. Also, um, gross. The great pox not looking so good. Zazzy, rational atheist, didn't, um, well, grow up so well, apparently. All right, I went through my whole list of family members, at least direct siblings, chat, that are still alive. Of my children, I have given land to each of my daughters... My family has been hooked up. Now we kind of just go at random. I only have to get rid of eight. Eight more. God. Okay. Um. I have a 25 prowess champion who is trusting, stubborn, temperate, and a legendary blade master. And I haven't given you any land? So here's the, here's the thing, chat. You got to be careful of. Okay. And it's going to come back to bite us later. If you're giving your champion's land... It's pretty cool for RP purposes. However, 
if you end up, let's, okay, let's just say Barbara Step, for example. I just gave two counties to champions, right? So there's going to be a conflict here eventually because if I end up creating the duchy title and giving one of them the duke title, I don't think that his new vassal... Okay, let's say I give the duke title to Juneg, who's my champion. 36 prowess. What a god. Okay. If I give him the duke title then this guy becomes his vassal and will become his champion, not mine, right? So you have to be cautious about that. In this case, it's not that big of a deal because my champion is 14 prowess. So I would just probably give it to the strongest guy if I cared, but he's also 55 and he's not going to be around forever. So, maybe you shouldn't make champion decisions because that's just a short-term decision. Make long-term decisions. Just pick cool people who aren't going to rise up against you and uh, worry about, you know, champions later, right? Okay, who else? Your son and ward, your courtier, your son. No one else is physically at my court that I can give anything to, I think. Vassal, 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 vassal. <laughs> vassal. Son, heir, and champion. Half-brother, steward, and vassal. You're a vassal. You're no ID, so you can't get anything. You're a vassal. You're vassal, you're vassal, you're vassal, you're vassal. Your vassal, your vassal, your half brother and vassal, your son, your vassal, your vassal, your vassal, and your vassal. I uh, I believe we've given a a title to literally every single person in our entire realm that can receive one. <laughs> Grab some court guests. There's really only two. And I don't know if I want to hire a ambitious, torturer, rapacious planner and give him land. This is exhausting. Yes, Cinnamon Toast. When you invade an entire kingdom in one go, it is exhausting. But if you think about it like this, normally when you go to war, you're probably going to war for a county a majority of the times, a duchy the second most amount of times, and subjugation the third most amount of times. In the event of the county war, you're going to a war, and then you only have to deal with one piece of land. I literally got over 30 pieces of land in one go. So I did basically 30 wars in one, if you think about it like that. And if you only want to think about it in terms of duchies, I at least did 10 wars in one. So, while it is exhausting, it's because we are taking a not insubstantial amount of land all simultaneously, and then going to have to govern that. So, you know... We'll make do. I'm not going to complain about it. I think it's really fun, even if it is overwhelming. All right, this dude is an arbitrary sadistic craven, so I don't really want to hire any of these guys. I think what we'll end up doing is inviting champions and then getting maybe three new people that way. If you click on the holding that you want to give away, you can click the giant, the grant button, and that has more options, including some unlanded people that are basically spawned to get land. Really? That could be cool. Let's check that out. So let's go Sakberia, pick on Kamsk, or Kainsk, excuse me. Pretty good holding, actually. It's already, like, fully loaded. Oh, grant two. This is neat. And then you can sort by... What, what would you sort by to see unlanded people? Maybe sort by military strength and then in reverse. <laughs> okay, let's exclude children. Adult, yes. Okay, that's going to thin it down to 300 characters. Claims, hooks, culture. Let's say Ergo Permian is fine. Religion, probably want Sua Minusco. Oh, here you go. Unlanded. Oh. Well, turns out literally nobody. 
uh, that follows this criteria exists in my entire empire. But I appreciate knowing that this page exists, so thank you for that, that tip. Go for not ruler? What, why? So what's, what's the difference in unlanded and not ruler? Let's see. Oh, unlanded characters have no holdings in the domain, but can theoretically still be rulers. For example, this can be the case for heads of faith and grand masters of the holy orders. Okay. Whereas not a ruler is like actually no titles. Gotcha. Cool. See, this is why I really like Crusader Kings 3, even though sometimes finding these menus is obtuse. I feel like there's always another hidden helping uh, sub-menu somewhere that's like going to answer the question that I just had. So we found potentially 106 characters who we could choose from to gift land to. That's pretty cool. So it might be a good idea to go sum of all skills and or sort by particular things. So like what you could do is generate a vassal for your court here. So example, or rather for my council. For example, I'm sorry, Hi Chiefess Vogulia, I know you're my friend, but your martial skill is terrible. So if we just take a look, my best option is Count Arvo, the peasant leader. Are we going to make the peasant leader my marshal? <laughs> because that's kind of funny. Uh, however, if I didn't want to do that, I could find um, Ashmar, Nidog, Rateg, and they have good skills as well. Like, this person is content, vengeful, greedy, brilliant, and a cautious leader. And uh, I like giving content people land, so why don't we just pick Ashmar? Hold on. Kainsk, grant, sort by here, click, grant, boom. Chieftain Ashmar of Kainsk became your vassal. There you go. So whenever someone becomes a, a, a leader, like a title, they can get, basically find their own spouse and get married and take care of that. And content is good, too. What's my renown at? Um... 1,394. You mean my splendor? I am reputable. We have room for another 32 vassals. So I, th I, I really like that this menu exists. So that's good to know. Because we're about to use it the rest of the way. All I need to keep is Ob. Okay? Keep Ob. Let's ditch you next. So the Grant, grant 2 menu. Very cool. So, like, remember how I told you it's really good to give to younger generations because you get benefits out of that 50 years? You can actually sort their max age for that. And if you really wanted people with claims, that's not a terrible idea because then you can try and press their claims, but we don't need to do that because of our culture and religion. Um, but, yeah, I could go, like, like this guy. 16 Diplomacy. Compassionate but ambitious. Inhale. Shypecha is comely, generous, brave, gregarious. Good opinion of me already. Shypecha, I think, has been around for a while. Son of a chieftain. So what happens if you give the son of a chieftain land? I guess he'll just inherit more land when his dad dies. Who only has a single title. So you may as well... Give it to uh, the dad in this case. Because it'd be... It, wouldn't it be, like, weird to go around the parents? And, like... Skip the inheritance aspect? Or no? I guess you do get the direct benefit of the... The, the bonus for... Relationship. But wouldn't that be, like, a slight... I do wish it would remember this. Okay, um, how about sort by prowess? I also wish it would keep that menu open when you open a character page. Fickle, sadistic, but patient. 
because then it resets the... So it's not perfect, but it's helpful still. Be sure to assign your marshal. Well, we haven't gotten to the council yet. Well, we just found we just found Chieftain Oshmar, who um, I guess as soon as he got land, got some bonus points. So forget about um, forget about Count Arvo, dude. I'm all about Chieftain Oshmar right now. He's not very strong, but he is very smart in terms of military matters. All right, sorry, High Chief. Just I know you're gonna lose some opinion of me, and that you want a seat on the council, but. This is the guy. Not only is this the guy, I'm gonna give him a little bit more land. Because he can have another spot in Lanakaz. Now that you're my new marshal, I think that deserves two titles. <laughs> I love that he was unlanded before. Not anymore. Okay, there you go. Dude is huge. Dude is huge. Cousin just killed in siege. When did that even happen? We're almost done, chat. I'm only gonna get rid of five more. By the way, how did my domain go up to six holdings? Did my stewardship just go up? It must have just gone up to plus ten. So yeah, we're gonna hold on to seven. So yeah, I need to get rid of five. We're so close. All I gotta do is get rid of five more titles in Suckberia. It just can't be ob, so it needs to be... One, two, three, four, five. I feel like, wait, do, I feel like we have way more than 12. Do we not? I love how famous people names spread through your culture. I named a giant king Thick Boy, and now like 10% of people in my court are named Thick Boy. <laughs> uh, hello, HB Hero. Thank you for 43 months. And Kivo Wallo, thank you for the six months as well. I appreciate the sub from both of you. Much appreciated. <laughs> thank you for uh, rejoining the new empire of Suckberia. We're almost done giving out all this land. I've technically unpaused already today. All right, let's um do the thing. The grant two thing seems like a good call. I'm just gonna have to pick somebody without really looking up that much about them. Maybe just go sum of all skills and then pick somebody who is... Right, how, how can you ignore the generous, brave, gregarious tactician? I know that he's the son of somebody else, but he's only got one county to his name. So I'm gonna say, go for it. That's yours. Sorok. We can go. We don't have to do all of them. Some of all skills. We could do some prowess based. I don't like fickle sadistic though. Here. You drop this king. Rotag Avrin. Courtier of Kloptod. Brave, zealous, sadistic, and astute intellectual. Married to the daughter of Chieftain Odeg, no claims, and is unlanded. Okay. I grant you Sorok. Then we've got... Kien. Who I will grant. We're down to 10, dude, from like 33. Let's pick someone who's really diplomatically talented. All right, this dude is ambitious, but it doesn't matter. You're giving him one piece of land. Compassionate, cynical, ambitious, charismatic, and hail. But I think that's a second Jebeg. We don't want to get all of them in the same line. What about my nephew, a content villain? <laughs> Generous, callous, gregarious. Eh, he's fine. Are you going to inherit anything? I don't think so. That That's for you, nephew. Okay, how about, uh, Kondoma? 
I grant this to a good steward. Pokshaka, your nephew, a content thinker. Disputed heritage. Oh, are you the... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hmm. Interesting. Do we have uh, any more family members here? We have Ajeg, Analytic Lackey, 13 Learning. This is a pretty good dude. Calm, generous, chaste, insightful, and good statted. All right, I'm down to eight. I feel like I, yeah. I guess I could get down to six because I really just want um, Kazakhstan down here, wherever it is. Kazakh. Yeah, this is what we want to take. I don't own it yet. So I actually can get rid of some of the rest of these and it's fine. Dude, we're so close. All right, Ali. Grant. Two. Let's pick somebody. Let's try and mix it up. Let's pick somebody who's really strong. I don't think we picked any marshals. Brave, cynical, compassionate. Son of Chieftess Vidyava. I think she's only got one county. So you look good. I think you're also... Nah, you're not really a champion, but you're just a good dude. Okay. I heard that noise again. Bila! And then we'll have six out of six. How do you have 20k soldiers? Magic. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, content, patient, gregarious. Only one claim, no other land. Good stats, high intrigue. Elusive shadow, could be a good spy master in the future. Just keep Ob. All I gotta do is keep Ob. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have done it! Oh, 25 counties have been given away to various people throughout the realm. We are now at a total of 34 out of 60 vassals, and we can shrink that by creating duchies in the future. Oh, two and a half hours of prisoners and, um... Paperworks, but it was worth it because this is going to basically the goal is to divide power We could have given a whole bunch of land to single individuals, but that ends up creating Vacuums of power where certain single individuals can influence way too much of the goings-on of the land such as factions and rivalries Housekeeping complete yes, we already Realm will lose land when the vassal dies. Your vassal, Chieftain Gajek, holds titles that will be inherited by rulers who are not your vassals. <laughs> Whoops. Um, did I do that? Actually, don't think I did, no. We just, in we just integrated Yugra, so I don't think that's a problem. This guy's gonna inherit. But we can just literally go to war and take it back for a single county. This is a mercenary company guy. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I invited more champions. You can modify contracts. You have hooks on feudal vassals. Why? I'm not even feudal. <laughs> so I don't really understand. I kind of just don't want to mess with this until I understand. Uh, do we still have a prisoner here that we can ransom? I don't even know why you're still here. I thought this was my new... Um... Court physician? No, it's just another wise woman. Okay, speaking of, let's pin you. There we go. Whoo! All right. Let it 
go. Suck, Miria. Now rain. Oh, you know what we need to do? That's a good idea. Screenshot time. Tours time, chat. Because we got Yugra back into the fold. We have to zoom further and further out to see our land proper. This is what it looked like before, if you're curious. So, see how Yugra... It's kind of hard to see, but it's a pretty big patch with 5,000 troops. We vassalized them, and of course, uh, changed color scheme after we became an empire, yeah? And then before that... Hold on, I think those are the same screenshot. Before that... That's the world view. This is Sukberia before we invaded the kingdom of Kyrgyz Khanate. And then this is the screenshot we just took afterward. You can just kind of see... Look at... If you look at... Um... Kipchok and Agus below. See how much wider we are left to right? After we got all of Permia. <laughs> uh, we went east to west really far. Okay. Rosor needs a crown. He gave his crown up. I didn't make him do it. He chose to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go. They didn't want crowns, dude. High kings. Everybody knows this dude's a king. However, I will go to high queen. I don't know why I pinned her, but there you go. Barber shop. Uh, she deserves some nobility clothing, in my opinion. Like uh, like Brozor has. He's got step nobility. Now we're talking. Which one matches him more? I think this one does because the red. What kind of hairstyles do you have? Her hairstyle is pretty unique though. Because I think um, she herself just came from a different area entirely. Usually we were kind of marrying into the kingdom, sort of. They have some really cool hair. I think we had rolled up braids. Awesome. The twist. The bun. The bald. The wave. I think her default is pretty unique. Step clothing's amazing. I like it too. Hello, Azagal. What's up? Shukbiria forever. Foxable Box! Thanks for 26 months. Good evening. Hope you guys are having a good Monday. Uh, Sukbiria will, I guess. I don't even know what our next. I think our next goal is to try to integrate uh, further west. Try and. I guess our goal is to bring uh, Sumanusko under one banner. That way we can kind of stand united, right? Oh, let's do, um... Well, let's do this first. <laughs> we gotta change some council jobs, for sure. Probably do domestic affairs. In instead of foreign affairs. So let's focus on domestic for direct vassal opinion buffs. Even if it's small, it's gonna help right now. Uh, likewise, we probably want to promote culture. We'll do that in a sec. I was watching Plazalon play with other children when Gundis tried to push her over. The moment did not last long, as Plazalon soon had made an entirely new game out of it, and forgotten the previous game entirely. Moving on is often the best approach, my daughters. Keep the trait fickle. She must never let others walk over her. Oh, we are going to have some critical stress here in a sec. Plazalon must be taught to turn the other cheek. I am forgiving. And the Sumanuskos do not like fickle. I think you must be taught to turn the other cheek, my dear. Who is currently a dishonorable quarreler. Fickle, paranoid, and charming. You've been overwhelmed by stress. You say that, but... Why shall we not feast, my brothers? Not only have we won the longest war in the history of our lands... Over five years it took to invade Kyrgyz Khanet, and they didn't even put up a resistance. They marched their soldiers from across the world. And by the time they got here, they were a ragged mess. We quickly stomped them out, 
like a small fire that needed tending and took their land for ourselves. If they weren't here to govern it, then we shall. And not only that, but we welcome the kingdom of Yugra, our brothers and sisters back into the fold peacefully. King Plorgard has rejoined Shakbiria, as our father would have liked and intended. So we shall feast. 125 gold, that is nothing, my friends. It's on me. 56 stress down because I'm gregarious and an eager reveler. You are no longer as overwhelmed by stress. Let us toast to the future of not just the Sua Manusco's nay, but all Ostiok peoples. What are we even researching right now? In time, we will know how to, I guess, govern more land. Ledgers, which we desperately need and is very RP fitting considering all the paperwork we just had to do to pass out all that candy. <laughs> um, basically without much thought, but with some RP thought at least. I really didn't do a good job of strategically divvying that land up, but we didn't have a ton of options anyway. And on top of that, um, we gotta, we gotta somehow welcome in the new vassals who currently hate us. So this is gonna try and extend the olive branch a little bit. The guests are gathered in the great hall, lords and ladies near and far from the reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. One of my favorite things about Crusader Kings is just the little touches like the sound. The feast music and like the people in the background and the ambiance is so good. Welcome, my friends. Let's try and put aside our differences. King Brozor now is your ruler. And he is just, generous, forgiving, and patient. He's not really just, but I'm just. Family members have been forgiven. We, uh, the only person we didn't forget is that one guy um, who we exposed as a criminal who murdered <laughs> somebody. I don't know why I did <laughs> I just seem like the right thing to do. It's such a joy to see my friend Chieftain Odeg again, as we eat and drink and sing together, as if no time had passed since we last parted. We could have been dining in a barn, and this would still have been one of the greatest feasts I've ever been to. What would life be like without Odeg, who we just gave, I think, the chiefdom of Terekti, correct? Yep, he just got a brand new chiefdom, so he's probably feeling pretty good about that. You gain reinvigorating friendship for five years. Huge health boost. Mm, spending time with those who care for us is one of the things that makes life worth living. And Chieftain Odeg likes me even more, and I lose another 56 stress. I have 50 right now. Whew. Wow, what a good feast, dude. And yes, we are in year 1000. All right. Let's take a look at a couple things. Sorry, cousin, Yugorka. I didn't, I didn't really know you, but you died in a siege. A champion has arrived. Gregarious, brave, and impatient. Bring him on in to our feast. Let's recruit you to court and get you over to Sumanusko. That'll cause less friction. And then also we need to change our council. We're currently got three years left to convert Perm, which is pretty strategically important for Sumanusko's because it's a holy site. Uh, so we may as well let that finish. We're doing domestic affairs, which I think is good. Try to get all vassals back on the same page, especially when we got all these new vassals. We need everyone to like us. So when you have 30 vassals instead of like eight, domestic affairs in, in exponentially increases in value. Collecting taxes, development, or promote culture. Probably want to promote culture because this is going to be a checkerboard right now. I think we've already got Atbasar, which is really nice. I think we should go for Ob, the actual kingdom itself. Completes in three years. This is the county, but it's the seat of the kingdom of Ob. And I think that makes the most RP and strategic sense. My marshal is organizing the levies. We are getting 484 per month, so I think this is... Well done. We have a max cap of 26,000. Total soldiers are 22. And we have a new men-at-arms regiment because we are an 
emperor now, or rather a high king, technically. So we get that plus one for being a high king, which is super nice. Um, there is room for a group of pikemen. However, I am going to say... For, I might just lean all the way into Metzenvartia and just do three full-stack, doom-stack regiments of our best archers. Possibly. I think it's either that or a second group of basic light footmen. Just because these guys do fight really well in Taiga. So we get the damage toughness bonus there. And we have a lot of Taiga. And these are nice just to have as a backbone to kind of augment your default levies. They do counter um, heavy infantry. Which I'm not expecting to fight that many of. But maybe as we go further west... We will, so that might be nice to have. I don't know, I think we definitely don't need another stack of onagers. Horsemen are very expensive, and I haven't noticed them being super effective. Because we haven't been fighting too many archers. I think it's either Metz and Vartia or Light Footmen. The Light Footmen are cheaper on Prestige, which is nice. For m not necessary now, but my next in line might not be getting 20 Prestige a month. Hello, face. What's up? How you doing? I'm just thinking. I guess we could just go with third Mets and Bartia. Extra, extra, extra archers. They are good in Taiga as well. So that's another plus 10 damage for them in Forest. I don't know. Why does it spread them out like this? <laughs> I don't know. And we're just going to go straight up boost to, to stack five. Okay, because I have 2,000 prestige and I need to use it. May as well use it. Metz and Vartia Doomstack now exists. They've got um, some big advantages over regular bowmen. This is a cultural research that we did. They have the ability to add to our pursuit and screen, which is chasing enemies after they've routed and protecting our troops as we route for fewer casualties. So that's really nice. Uh, and, of course, they're going to get the five damage buff over bowmen. And then they also have a, I think, 13 toughness versus 17. So they get a 4 toughness bonus. And then on top of that, we get plus 4, plus 4 toughness screen for Bowman. But you get a plus 10 damage buff in Taiga. So really, these guys are a plus 15 damage buff over Bowman for us. Tundra Wood Elves. Yes. <laughs> More or less. That's, uh, that's a lot of damage, chat. Okay. Did we finish the council? I think Chieftain Odeg is still a good spy master. He's also my friend, and, uh, we just gave him a, a county, so he should be good to go. The drunk. Breakup schemes, just because we just took over a lot of new vassals, we don't know what kind of plots are afoot right now, so just better safe than sorry, and organized levies, we just identified as being good. I think we're all very, very well and good here. Now, if I had one more stewardship, I could tell my spouse to help me with politics, and that would give me even more good opinion from people as well. Do we have anybody else in the, in the prison? We got two people left. For whatever reason, I don't know why. Will not accept. Well, then, uh, just convert, I guess. Twenty one intrigue. Yeah, I'm not going to recruit you. That's okay. <laughs> Alex, people mentioned earlier there's a feast menu you can see if you look at your capital county during a feast. Okay, I'll check that out. I did everything I could ensuring Count Rotteg and Chieftain Togli would be as far from each other as possible. It was not enough, and now they have come to blows in the middle of my feast. One of my guards is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. In my house? 
there's a brawl. That's just a good feast, dude. Brave, zealous, sadistic, married to the daughter of Chieftain Odeg. That's my friend. And then my new vassal. Who really doesn't like me. Halt, we'll talk about this later. Gain 150 prestige. Restrain Rotteg until things calm down. You grow closer to forming a friendship with Chieftain Togli. There are some 200 IQ plays here where my new vassal, I can make him like me by helping him... <laughs> by betraying my friend's um, son-in-law and another one of my vassals. So I could bring his opinion down and try to equalize these. Or I can go with my friends. I am Brozor. Brozor has to walk a fine line between making new friends and keeping old friends. So let's uh, throw Togli out to cool off. All right, where's this menu? I have no choice but to accept. Click on capital and then what? Where's, Chad, are you guys just making this up? Where's the feast menu? Hmm? It's right there on the map. Oh, sweet. Dude, this is pretty sick. Apparently there's a menu for hunts and pilgrimage as well. Awesome. So these are everybody who's attending and also people who declined. Ah, so you can try and make some enemies. Just let me know if anyone needs a Sucberium Anthem. What's that, Tyrannus? Hey, Cryarcy, who says your forehead is like the Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going. Now, I might have some edge on my forehead, but I think you've got enough edge for the both of us. Welcome to the stream. Personal welcome. What's up, Despoyito, Kyoko? Alright. Let's, um... Duke Lineg. I don't even know who this is. He must be one of the ones that we inherited. Because I don't think we gifted him anything here. He's got the duchy and just a single county. Yeah, Kachu. Chad, I think some of you guys are lagging, by the way, based on your responses. You might actually optical refresh from when we had the, uh, the frame drop earlier. Because you guys lulled like 45 seconds late. Whew. So, this guy sucks. Uh, would I try to, uh, murder somebody who refused to come to my feast? I don't know. I'm forgiving, so no. Probably not. <laughs> I might alter the deal, though. Give me everything. <laughs> I could play like as that if I ended up getting, like, a super reveler who didn't have, um, the forgiving trait. Bye. Thank you for converting. That's my secret streamer. I'm always lulling. Yeah, maybe now you guys are just gonna do it when it's not even relevant. Just to debate me into thinking that you're lagging. I don't know who to believe now. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I'm proud to say the feast was a success. I have my wife, Kanchi, to thank for much of its success, and I feel nothing but gratitude as she sees the last few gifts off. Love these background noises. So, um, can it, oh, there's a, there's an, oh, the, oh, there's a scroll wheel! 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. I thought, I was like, wow, I got five people to come to my feast? That's so cool. Yeah, about that. Um, High Chieftain Zarni came. The peasant leader came. Aw, only two people said no. And one of them was Etrek. Who I think I literally just gave land to. So that just seems like kind of a dick move. We have to have a large feast hall now. I'm glad you can mouse wheel too. So Queen Denoptalon came all the way from Vladimir. Aw. My cousin came. High Chieftain Urter. My other cousin came. The Queen, of course. Klopton's there. Wouldn't miss it. My children are there. Nidog is back. My best, one of my best friends, Arnaz, is here. My sons. Where's my best friend? Dude, so many people. There's my best friend. I'm, wait. No, it's not Odek. Who's my best friend? <laughs> Who's my best friend? Your brother-in-law, Vassal, and Champion, Ojeg. They all have similar names. So many people love Brozor. I know, I got like positive relations, and guess what? I got even more! 20 opinion for 10 years for hosting the feast. And also, we got stressed down to zero. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, let's look at the succession page again. This is what I'm afraid of. This is what I fear. The good news is that we really cut down. Jacep was gonna get like 15 counties for no reason. We've cut that down to four, but he's getting the ones I want for my heir. Like I want Atbasar to go to my heir. Hey, yeah there. Stop going behind the map, please. Get out of there. Don't look at me like that. He knows what time it is. I think he knows. Hey, what's up, T. Jansen? I really am starting to suspect that whoever lived here previously, like, spilled something in that corner. Because he goes to investigate it fairly often. Here, you drop this, King. Minus two, everyone. Is that true? Would you just could you just speak English and tell me what you smell over there? Huh? Why can't you just talk? That would be easier. Epi says people come be while I work. What's up, Epi? Good to see you again. Thank you for sharing the sub, and I hope you're having a good Monday. Ethel Ailey. Yo. Alright, Suckberia will be right back, and uh, I don't know how to handle this succession. Because I... Here's the thing. I want Atbasar to go to my firstborn, and I really just don't care about this chiefdom at all. Tartus is the capital, of course. But I don't think I can swap these around. You can only grant them the titles they would already be in line to inherit. So I can only give them this one chiefdom. I wonder if I give this one away. If that would move one of these back up? I don't know. What are you doing? Where are you going? You're going to fall off. You're going to roll off. Okay. Okay, we'll take him out. Chat, we'll be back in just a minute. Suckberia the Empire will return. It's looking mighty thick up there, dude. Gonna grab a beverage and a snack. And we'll be right back. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. And also for helping with the paperwork early. And now, we get to see the end of, um, High King Brozor's life. And the beginning 
of a new chapter. Baby.
Hey. Thanks for waiting. Ooh. Time for game strategy. Got some pets. Whew. Where were we? What's up, nerds? Oh, yeah. That's the spot. Cookie break time. Condescended, Cal, you've been here for like two years. Did you call me this dude? You followed since June 24, last year. That's a year and a half. I feel like we should know each other better by now. Listen to this dude get sassy about being called this dude. Lamest attempt at organized trolling I have ever seen. Let me just deal with the uh, sleeper cell in my chat. This dude is also lame. That's true. I am pretty lame. What's up, Mostly Lost? How's it going, man? Welcome back to Suckberia. I'm not your dude guy. I don't have a trash can anymore because I threw it away. I, I took my trash can out because of the gnats. <laughs> so now I can't throw anything away. We're just going to attract more gnats. It's basically already a gnat trap, Winterin. Okay. Forget about the lose land. Doesn't matter. Call a hunt. Can do that. But I'm not. Titles can be usurped. Also too expensive. Powerful vassals expect council positions. Meh. They're probably fine. Yep. I wish there was a way to cue this so it only told you when powerful vassals were actually like negative or low opinion of you. Because, like, if they already have a good opinion, then I kind of just don't care if they want a council position. But it keeps coming up. 
I just have a bunch of powerful vassals. Because we're an empire now. One sec. I need to get like a baby gate. <laughs> and put the baby gate around the map. Okay. Um, I don't know why I have the queen pinned. Not necessary. And I think we're good to go. Now, thus begins a little bit more relaxing section of the stream, now that we've handled all the paperwork. So the questions you guys were asking about either the state of the world right now, in the game, um, <laughs> if you wanted to see Alba balling out, or Italia taking over East France, or Aquitaine fighting to redeem some of its West France glory, or the fact that the Umayyads formerly owned more of Hispania and are now losing ground, and have lost ground in Northern Africa, Northwest Africa, or the Mali Empire that is still 23,000 strong. Now's a good time because we can kind of slow things down and actually look at some of the details and also I can answer uh, mechanics or other questions from chat because the first few hours were just overwhelming in terms of the number of things that I needed to do after. I'm glad that it's once in a lifetime to invade that kingdom because I don't want to have to balance the books like that more than once in a lifetime. Brozor seems to have been having a difficult time in our latest feast. He sneaked out early and was not seen for the entire rest of the evening. If you have better things to do, do those instead. <laughs> it's a duty to be seen whether you want to or not, or focus on the food. I am patient and my son is impatient. He's literally the opposite of me. Learning down your vassals don't like you as much. I don't know if that shy is better, though. The diplomacy hit. And your personal scheme power is down. Impatient, I guess, is fine. All right. Just be the opposite of dear old dad. It'll be ironic. Drawn to the flame, there was something peculiar about my friend High Chieftain Vergaba. Is it the way she smiles? The unmistakable peal of her laughter, or perhaps the kind way she treats everyone? Highborn and commoner alike. I can't quite put my finger on it, but at least one thing I know for sure. When I'm in her presence, I find it hard to focus on anything else. <laughs> um, okay, first of all, High Chieftain Svergava, I do have some questions about the fact that you seem to be betrothed to the son of Chieftain Mali, who is 12. And you are 66. So, I am just saying, Vergava, we've been friends for a very long time, but... Um... This... doesn't seem like something that should be happening. I should express my undying love for Vergava. This desire doesn't come from the heart. Start a seduction scheme. I refuse to be distracted. Well, we did just fire Vergava from the council, so I feel like there's something else going on here. Well, we definitely don't have an undying love. This desire doesn't come from the heart. Dude, but my... Wife is literally my soulmate, and all three concubines in the family think I'm pretty awesome. But Vergava did save me from the wolf that one time, and I've always wondered. <laughs> in a moment of weakness, in the garden. Gonna ruin everything at the end of my life, isn't it? The champion has arrived. Actually, he's pretty pretty sick. 
Bleeding out. I'm inspecting the barracks infirmary when a severely injured soldier is brought in. He's losing too much blood. Where's the physician? Golsisek is nowhere to be found. A chill runs down my spine. I may be this man's only hope. Suddenly, as if she stepped out of thin air, my friend, High Chieftain Svergava, is at my side. She rolls up her sleeves and looks at me. Hand me the tourniquet. Gain 50 learning lifestyle experience. Um, Osh joins your court. Step back. This is my patient. She loses 10 opinion of you. 66% chance I save him all by myself and I get a strong hook on him. I don't even know what I would use that for. Let him bleed. He deserves no better. So really, this one's just here for the 300 learning lifestyle, or I accidentally kill him. What's my learning? I'm at 11, average. <laughs> and I gain, um, obviously an opinion penalty with Vergava. I'm not humble. I think my character would just say, hand me the turn again. Our patient screams and thrashes, even though three grown men weigh him down every step of the way is a battle. But High Chieftain Vergava remains calm and eventually a quiet focus settles over us. She's a 28 learning. Why would I be like, no, 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 no. Allow me. Yes, I'm aware that you are considered a wise scholarly pilgrim uh, with almost 30 learning, but I've got this one. I'm not sure how we managed, but in the end, it seems like the soldier will live. That was an impressive feat, Brozor, Vergava says with a tired smile. It was an honor to serve at your side. I could not have done it without you. Gain 50 learning lifestyle experience, Osh. Niartu joins your court and you get a hook over him. And uh, he's still wounded, but I don't think he's dead. I don't know if we'll ever use him for anything, but okay. Bonyak. 22 prowess. Um, brave, gregarious, calm, desert warrior. I don't even know where you got that, but welcome aboard to my court. We'll demand conversion, which is a practice that is going to stop when I take over um, my son after I die. There he goes. Crox58 asks, if you had one hour to pack what you could of your possessions, what would you grab? I would just pack my whole house. Do you think it would take more than an hour to pack up my bed, computer, camera, and uh, wallet? On question, but I ask this as someone who is from Southern Oregon and due to the wildfires had one hour to pack, the house made it. Yeah, I don't really have much stuff. Um, I'm glad your house is okay. I'd probably just pack my computer, monitors, and audio equipment, and that's all I need. I don't have to pack Midas. He's just in the passenger seat. <laughs> There's no packing involved there. But yes, that is a scary position to be in. Hopefully it wasn't too stressful on you. But definitely just electronics. My uh, flight sim stuff. Just because it, it would be hard to tell the, like, insurance company, like, Yeah, no, for sure, I had the really good Thrustmaster uh, combo. I didn't take a photo of it or anything, but it was there. There were rooms in Etal's house that are empty. That's not even true. And have never been entered. Also, do you think I live in a mansion? Where do you think I live? Yes, I live in a street. Everyone knows if you stream on Twitch to more than uh, 50 viewers, you are rich beyond your wildest imagination and live in a mansion as soon as you hit uh, 100 concurrent. My nephew, my nephew 
Pudyaka was captured by High Chieftain Bosek during the Siege of Karachev. Not my problem. All right, what is my problem, though, Chad? I have to deal with my succession potential crisis. It's not really a crisis as such. He's just taking um, the claim to Apisar. Really, Apisar is the... He can have Ob. Ob, as long as it stays in the family, is fine. I just need to find a way to get Apisar. And my actual heir is second in line. My, how Sekbiri has grown. It has indeed arch. I'm not gonna kill my son. You guys, if anybody says kill my son, you guys must be new here. Okay? Because I don't take the easy baby approach that you clearly do. Alright? I'm just kidding. Play however you want. I don't care. A troubadour will soon be performing for the court at Chadrinsk. It would be a simple request to have her change the performance to be a dedication to High Chieftess Vergava, the target of my affection. <laughs> Can't believe it. Why am I seducing High Chieftess Vergava at 67? I should not dabble in things like this. Forsake the opportunity to impress her? We already have a 95% chance. 72% chance she gains a budding interest. Fine. I'll gamble. Did it work? Love is ageless. It's not about age. It's about, um... The fact that I have a soulmate. <laughs> and we love each other very much. And even though it's not against... Uh, adultery is not against the religion of the Suomanusko. Your close family does still not like it. At all. Thank you for the gift of music. The troubadour's performance was greatly appreciated. I always knew you were a man of impeccable taste. Alliance invalidated. Countess Vidyava, mother of Count Saitek, died of cancer in one... Th Welcome to 1001, by the way. Okay, so of the areas around us... I think it would be maybe in our best interest to just What are you at war war for? Defending? Like I could just take Teak. Like right now. And it'd be easy. How far should I mean I feel like I'm just expanding so fast. I guess I'm in paint the map mode, but it is like right there. And we're not doing any decisions that this will interrupt. I just want to raise... How do you only raise... The minute arms? I know you can raise local, but that'll still raise more. Married my second son to the heir of Scotland, and now I need to combine kingdoms. It gets tough. Primo. Welcome to 11. We're, go we're about to be in the, uh. We're, we're about to be in, like, what, what, when is middle medieval age, right? We looked this up last time. Uh, we've been early medieval. Late medieval starts win. Also, I can't believe you're only in 1001. I've been playing much less. I'm already in 1145. It's not a race, Brimo. You just said um, you married your second son to the heir of Scotland. While you're busy dealing with how you're going to handle your second kingdom, I've got an empire with over five crowns in it. Okay, Brimo? So I've accomplished much more in a shorter amount of time, it sounds like to me. Okay, well, you're playing with Scotland over here. 
Now I'm over here in Suckberia, taking over all of Northern Asia. All right, it's not a competition. Mid medieval begins 1066. I see. Alba is OP, yes. It's not a competition, but I win. Exactly. Thank you. You understand. All right. Somebody, somebody wrote it in all caps. Raise, then control plus right click. The men at arms will move on their own. Okay. Hold on. Raise local, then control right click, and the men at arms will move on their own. What does control right click is? What command is that, though? That seems like it worked perfectly. It just stops gathering. Oh, that's cool. Is that um, also a physical button or hotkey only? Hey, learning perk. Becoming wise in my old age. Wash your hands. Stress gain down. Time between mental breaks up. Let's go reduce chance of contracting illnesses and courtiers contracting illnesses. Wash your hands. Did you tell certain 867? I did, yes. That makes much more sense. See? See? You didn't even have all the facts. Where are you guys going? You just abandoned ship? Let me siege the only uh, county you have, and I'm going to win, dude. Washing hands was a thing in 1000 AD. Uh, it was for the historically accurate High King Brozor of Sukberia. Who studied a lifestyle of medicinal focus. But yes, that's true. They did wash feet for a long, long time. And they did bathe, though infrequently, I guess. Faction created against you, the chiefdom of Kuchuk has given rise to peasant rabble, unsurprised. Oh, my uh, children have been groomed to rule. We're getting some big crits on that one. I got another plus three to learning for you. My baby Uzundat. Uzundat. JSOP has also increased learning by two. Incompetent taxes and ob. A new champion has arrived. This is, we, you can tell that we're getting larger now because this is the first champion that hasn't been um, Tingri that we have ever seen. Forgiving, impatient, sadistic. Wow. I feel like that'd be really tough to roleplay. Sadistic and forgiving. That'd be super hard to RP. When do you get to use the sadism? <laughs> it's like... Ugh. Are you sorry? No, not yet! Are you sorry now? Like, you just keep breaking fingers until they finally apologize, and then you let them off the hook? Like, okay, there, see? That wasn't so bad. All you have to do is say sorry, and I'm done. Torture's over. Should've just done that at the beginning. That's the only way I could think of to, like, RP that. <laughs> Psychopath. Speaking of breaking fingers until someone apologizes before you give them VIP status back. Hello, Syntax Squid. How you doing tonight, dude? Welcome to the stream. Uh, we just... Totally unrelated to what we were talking about. We just took over Teak uh, in Suckberia. Well, it's in Suckberia now. Just a little 75 prestige, nothing crazy. Just a single county, which is really good. Just because it pushes the bottleneck a little further because we got this big impassable terrain here, which we couldn't quite get around. Now, instead of going all the way through this, we could just cut across Teak and go wherever we want. Plus, the goal is 
to get Kazakh. So we got one, um, one piece of Kazakh that we just integrated into our title. So that's, that's good. And I need one more and I can create the title itself. And then maybe just move the capital down there early. We're gonna have very low control there. So if I do that too soon, then we're gonna have an issue with uh, losing a bunch of levies out of nowhere. But we have so many vassals and such a strong uh, regiment. We just got our sixth minute arms and they are all basically full that we can probably just hold our own with just them. Just go full two-faced, Famagrad. I'm forgiving and sadistic. Heads and tails. Call it. So it looks like we need this piece from Kipchok and this this piece from Zingaria. They only have 2,300 troops and one ally. Allied to King Plorgod of Yugra through marriage. Will not accept vassalage, obviously, because you're of a different culture. He's a Khan, different faith, a lot of reasons. Brozor turned out to be all right. Glad we didn't retributively murder him. I agree. I agree. So what happens if I was to try... Well, my armies are raised. Put those away. If I was to try to conquer... What am I, what am I even trying to conquer here? Up here. Kazakh. So I, don't, I just need a county. Oh, he has the duchy, though. I think he... Wait, does he have My the... Liege, a new subject has arrived in your court. Throw them to the pit! He doesn't have the duchy, but it must be there. He's got quite a bit of land. Is this an alphabetical order? No. Um, well, here we go. That's the one. Can Plorgod actually fight against me if he's my own vassal? That doesn't make any sense. Matt M. Cody, what's up? Thank you for the Prime sub. How's it going? Thanks for sharing that here, and welcome to the stream. Yeah, he doesn't have any more land inside the duchy, so there's no reason to do a duchy. It's just that one. But, uh, I don't know how the, how the Plur God vassalage thing is gonna work. I say we just do it, and figure it out later. There you go. Okay, objective, county. Back to back, dude. All right, control, right click, they said. Good tip. Slickson, what up? All right, once we get this, we're gonna have to settle for a while, chat. We're not gonna be able to blob anymore. There's too many non-controlled areas. I'm just trying to secure this before my main character dies, and then we have an issue where the wrong sons have the wrong titles. This is gonna be a little sticky just because our capital's gonna be so exposed. It's kind of nice, though. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. So, the downside of having your capital right on your border is it's very easy for others to attack it. And the AI will aggressively go for your capital. So that sucks. But the upside is, if you ever hire mercenaries or holy orders, 
uh, then they will spawn at your capital. So you could have really forward mobile base of operations kind of effect where you're summoning on the front lines and they don't have to walk as far. So that can be really nice. The celebrations had come to an end and the evening's entertainment seemed over when High Chieftain Fergava suggested a reading. The clerk arrives wondering what the guests would like to hear and I see my chance to impress. How about something entertaining? She is brave, but she is very smart. I feel like learning, read the judgment of stars for a chance to learn. Bragava seems completely engrossed. Good choice, Brozor, she says, and rearranges her dress. Smoldering chemistry. Little end of life seduction fun, I guess. I have no idea where the enemy troops are going, but we're just going to head into Kipchak territory, which is it really splintered anyways. I don't even know where Zingaria came from. But uh, we are absolutely just going to take this. And then we have one more to take from them if we want to have the whole uh, duchy. So we're going to suffer some attrition here, but it's a price they're willing to pay. We got 50 onagers. The siege is going to go extremely fast with that. Uh, making 2.5 daily progress out of 300. Breaching the walls right now. There already is a breach in them. You can just disband mercs and re-raise them where you need them. Hmm, interesting. But that does take up time, and you are time limited with the mercenaries. And usually, I don't hire mercenaries unless I'm absolutely certain that I need them. And by the time I'm certain that I need them, I don't have time to re-raise them. Unless it's you say it's instant. Well, that's pretty cool, I guess. But um, I would assume that they either have or will put a similar barrier on that. Like um, levies, for example, if you try to disband them and re-raise them more than a couple times, you actually get like a ten, like a five, ten plus month penalty. So I'm assuming you can't just keep disbanding mercenaries and instantly raising them around. More than a couple times, maybe. But just an assumption on my part. Hi, you talent chat. What's up, Leuda? People arriving on the scene. How's it going? My son Brozor has been impressed with one of the household champions for a very long time. After finally meeting in person, he's been repeating the warrior's words to himself. Work hard and you can master anything. Indeed. Hard work will bring him where he wants. Diligent is very good. Plus one to all stats, though you do get some stress gain. Make him generous instead. Or patient, like dear old dad. So if I make... Okay. What would happen here? He's replacing... Diligent. But I can't replace diligent with patient. It would replace impatient. Does he keep diligent and patient? Or what happens? He can't be patient and impatient at the same time. Nice people are here in chat? No, Kyoko. Not yet. You have to wait until all the mean people go to bed. I mean, you're here. So. Okay, people leave? Never mind. The nice people are here now, chat. Welcome, everyone. Uh, anyways, I don't know how this would work. Would it eliminate both? I'm not sure. I think Diligent is really good, though. So I'm probably just going to keep it. We don't have anyone else Diligent in our, like, entire family line. Let's keep it. I don't want to overcomplicate it. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. Let's save. I'm going to do a th uh, theory. Paperwork done. Kazakh. Um, 
Kazakh land grab. My liege, a new subject has arrived in your court. Throw them to the pit. All right, let's do a test. I gotta do some science, so I'm gonna save scum this in a minute. I'm gonna hire these guys. Okay, apparently they can be disbanded. And then, how do I? Hired by you. How do you raise them in a different area? You have to do raise all? Oh, that's annoying. Okay, watch this. Because I think, um, let's just do it here then. So there's the mercenaries. So you can teleport them. Let's go like all the way west. Is there a waypoint I can just grab that I left from a previous war? There's one. Let's move that like further to the border. Somewhere. A developer is writing down a note. <laughs> I think. Because, yeah, it looks like you can just teleport them wherever you want, as many times as you want, without raising anyone else in your army. And then you could control right-click them. Huh. <laughs> yeah, somewhere a dev just wrote a note. Hopefully. Because that's pretty OP. Yeah, especially when you become rich and uh, you can raise 6,000 troops at a time. Doesn't that mean you can do it with the minute arms? I assume so. It seems like the only penalty in the game right now is uh, levies. Which is weird because they're the weakest troops. So the weakest troops take ages. Um, if you try to raise all... And you let them actually, you let the peasants raise, like the levies, and then disband them. Those actually do have a ceiling. You can only teleport them, like, twice. And then they give you a cooldown timer. So I would be surprised if you're allowed to do this for very long. What does control right click do? It just says stop gathering. So, like, right now, if I, um,. Let's say I just go to a spot like this blue rally point, raise everyone, and then right click. Typically, they don't move because they're gathering for four. Well, you can't see. Hold on. You can't. They can't move because they're gathering for 47 days. But if you control right click, they stop gathering and move immediately. So in this case, the uh, mercenaries, these are the mercs that we just hired for science, uh, can instantly move. So you can teleport them wherever you want by stopping the full gather. By the way, we just lost, uh, we're having some Cox internet issues tonight. Hopefully it's nothing significant. All right, just going to reload real quick. I was just doing that just to see how the Merc system worked. That is some cheese though. <laughs> that I did not know about. But yes, the uh, picture quality will stabilize over time. It kind of just takes a little nosedive. We had some optical earlier where it went full zero for a second. Stuck under the iron fist of Cox Communications. It'd be nice if you had to assign Merc's men at arms to rally points and had to move them on the map to change rally points. Make it like a garrison system. That might be overly complex. I would think that they should just actually... Your, your men at arms and mercenaries should take time to gather like the levies do if they were recently disbanded. I think that should be that simple. You know what I mean? 
if they don't want to overcomplicate, if they want you to be able to teleport them wherever, there should at least be like a little bit of time for them if they recently disbanded. I think that would be easy. Garrison idea is, is interesting though. But I think that might be over overcomplicated. Search for a physician, no. Call hunt, no. Usurp, no. Declare wars, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, low control is a problem and I'm going to start trying to get some control for the areas of Kazakh that we just conquered and also likewise ooh this is nice and upgraded tier 2 market villages good on taxes we got a longhouse already a palisade and a sparring ground so that's already fully built so the control there will go up pretty fast. Apisar is already at one hundo, which is really nice. And is the one that has five slots for holdings. This is why we're trying to move the capital down here if we can. And also, of course, put Suomanusko in here. Which we should only have 13 months left where we're at right now. And then we're going to send them down to Apisar. Okay, so that's only 7% war score. I think we just need to go straight for the capital now. The touch of your hand is the life-giving sun of my world. I really want to hear your voice again, that I may know if your prowess carries off the battlefield. How I long for you. No sooner have I read the letter delivered from High Chieftess Vergava than I am on my way to her chambers. <laughs> Oh, indeed. My actions will answer her words. Our union will be as singular as her poem. End your scheme to seduce. I don't want to become lovers, dude. It's it's gonna be just a... Well, listen. This is a call of passion that has been building up since... We first became friends when you saved me in the forest on the hunt that fateful day and enabled me to get to the high status I am now. I tell scratch on the Empire, long live the Emperor. What's up, Air Ketchup? Chinska Avran! And Mugrin Avran are now married. All right, my son and heir is now married. This is who we're going to be playing as unless something crazy happens. Uh, he is married to someone who is Hale, which is a small health and prowess boost, a good fortune builder, and turned out to be ambitious but patient and greedy, which is an interesting combo. Extremely good stewardship. He has pretty good stewardship, gray eminence, and fortune builder. So pretty uh, big... Wombo there. Oh my. Lots of things going on. King Plorgod left prison. Wait. Plorgod got imprisoned? Were you guys at war? It looks like Klop Todd took him prisoner. He's got a truce with Plorgod. The Permian claim on the kingdom of Ugra was won by King Klop Todd. So hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Did he just take the crown? Klop Todd wasn't a king. I think Kloptod just became the king and went to war with... We just had a brother war. Because Yugra's all the way... Remember? Because Kloptod had Yugra. Because I remember when I got all mad about that? When um I didn't get to keep Perm? After I died? Because it has six building spots. Including a special building. And I was going to make this the capital at one point. It's still a pretty good spot. And then he just took over. And now Yugra spans all the way over here. 
Well, now Plorgod just has a duchy in three <laughs> counties. <laughs> He's been king for like 30 years. He's been dethroned. Klepto God, I guess. He captured the capital, it sounds like, because he had he took him prisoner. Wow. Um uh, my cousin Tayaksha died in this wait, did she die in this siege? Wow, that's harsh. <laughs> anyway, well, that's kind of insane. Keep the ball rolling. So what we're doing right now, um, just a reminder, we're at war with Kipchok. We're just trying to take in the Dejur Duchy of Kazakh. We're trying to take just these pieces of land specifically. In this case, we're trying to take the one that we already sieged. We're just going to siege their capital in order to kind of accelerate... Um, ooh, that was fast. Accelerate our war score. It's not the first time I heard talk of what a great servant Chichaika is. And now King Avte has sent him to my court. He presents himself as a token of the friendship between Avte and me. Welcome to my service, Chichaika. Son of King Avte. Huh, this is like a, a ward, but he's an adult? <laughs> that's what it seems like. He is paranoid, generous, and gregarious. You cannot be that good if King Avte can so easily spare you. <laughs> Send him back. <laughs> uh, from Mordavinia, dude. He's my friend. Alright, uh, yeah, he is my friend. And he sent his son over. Okay, welcome to my service, Chichaika. How are you, dude? I think that uh, the king of Mordvinia heard that I was giving out land to everybody earlier, and it's like, Hey, uh, how do I get a piece of that? If I, I don't know, if I send my son and heir over to be with you and, like, fight for you and stuff, can he have some of that, too? You got any of that left? Actually, I do. <laughs> I just took a little bit more of Kha'Zix. <laughs> can I get a... <laughs> so, are we still swaying you? I don't- th I think we stopped swaying for some reason, because I was trying to offer you vassalage. So let's start the sway progress again. And then Morvinia will not accept because of the culture group differences, and w we are not his de jure vassal, because he is technically in the Empire of Volga Ural. So Volga Ural is tricky because we're actually not that far away from being able to create this title, but if I have two empire titles, don't I just split those on death? So it's kind of like, don't do that, it feels like. Can I get a one large ob, please? Yeah, why don't I just end up splitting two empires if I create another empire? So it's kind of counterintuitive. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, but it's really fun. Is it? I guess just because it's your family taking over the map still? I think if we just don't move, we can just win by holding objectives. However, there's really no reason not to just go and keep sieging. My daughter Plazalon has been impressed with one of the household champions for some time. After finally meeting in person, she's been repeating the warrior's words. Greatness comes in time. Be there to grasp it when it does. Opportunities always come in time. Keep the trait patient, like your dear old dad.
Your rightful claim, King Kloptot of Euchre, occupies a throne that should rightfully be yours. I am willing to support your claim with word and sword, and I am sure others <laughs> in the realm will also champion this rightful cause. All you need to do is accept. Oh, interesting, High Chieftain, former King Plorgod. Um, did you recently get dethroned or something by our mutual brother? And now you're going behind his back to ask Big Brother Emperor to come and press his own claim just to get back because you're spiteful. This is like if I can't have it, then neither can he. You should have it, Brozor. This is your claim. I, I never even wanted you, girl. Okay, that's just the way that our culture is. Dad, you, we all remember King Quirtle, Dad. He was such a good guy. He definitely wanted you to have it, not me, dude. <laughs> when it says all you need to do is accept is there is there like another option here sometimes like if you have different stats also why is he intimidated by my dreadful reputation sorry what I'm King Brozor Zero dread, by the way. As I step over the threshold to my court physician's office, I find her bent deeply over a book. This translation of Galen is atrocious, she says with a sigh. If I were to follow these instructions, I am as likely to cure my patient as I am to kill them outright. Let me have a look. 60% chance I help translate, 40% I make a fool of myself. This choice may lead down a path of cynicism. I will buy you a better translation. 50 learning XP, 45 gold. She gains the trait Novice Physician. You should look to the great epics for guidance. I will buy you a better translation. Just a little bit of gold to get uh, Novice Physician. Your neighboring ruler, King Bosek, has won... He's not... Yeah. Dude, Moyer Confederation got split. I was wondering what happened. This used to all be Moyer Confederation. Because they are they were ruled by my relatives for some time, and I guess they couldn't keep it together. I'm going to leave the game on pause for a second. I just need to be RB for one second. Hang on. Welcome to the kingdom of Suckberia. Did you just laugh? No, I just have some allergies, I swear. I'm back. Oh, they got an army there. We should probably go fight this. I'm one above my domain limit. Um... Hmm. All right, I think it's time to get rid of the last of our Kulindi step lands, which have limited control and no buildings in them anyways. I like this grant to button. Where's that guy that sent his son over? <laughs> What's his name? The Mordvinia son? He's already gonna inherit everything. That'd be stupid. Who owns land over here? This guy sucks. This is me. This is me. We should just create a new vassal. I have room for 29 more. Okay, create a new vassal is fine. Probably no chieftains, though. So you can go here, do dynasty not lowborn. Wait. Lowborn's fine, actually. How about all not a ruler? There you go. 
Stubborn, chaste, ambitious. Oh, this looks like a perfect ruler. Araslan. Brave, compassionate, just. An expert marshal. Twenty prowess, a fine warrior, a blade master, a peasant leader himself, a robust individual with open terrain, reaving, and tactician expertise. You're related to Nyaku. I vaguely remember this. Okay, you, I will grant Barnal. So, how do I make you, um... Now that you are my vassal, how do I make you my champ? Wow, we got some guys here now, dude. 33? He's not gonna live that much longer, but this dude's 46 and he's a 30. What, did he just decide not to? Oh, now he's my champion. Okay. He's in. This dude's got a 16, honest, chaste, greedy, forest fighter, legendary blade master. I love that the recruit to court is in your champion list, too. That's super nice. And we're in. Another siege one. We're at 46%. Where are the bad guys? Let's go kill him. Commander, cautious leader, I think we can do better. I mean, this has got 32 commander advantage. He does have the great pox, but that doesn't mean he's not good at what he does. Did I miss something? Smile for Fun gifted five community subs. Apparently. When did, when did that happen? Um, five minutes ago? I'm sorry? The moment you stepped away, the moment you left. Oh. Like, I was only gone for less than 30 seconds. And then another 10 bits. Yak Herd, Kairu the Squid, Artificial Z, Terminator 4D, and Risper Visper. Uh, all five of you are first time subs. I don't think there's any non first time subs left. Thank you also for the bits who says, kill them all. <laughs> well, we're working on it. Much appreciated, dude. And then Red Totem as well. Thanks for sharing uh, the tier one. Glad to have you. You said that last night. What did I say? Some of my counselors believe the job is theirs by right of blood or influence. How wrong they are, I expect results, yet I'm disappointed often. After a long day, I complain to my wife, Kanshi, when she interrupts me. Let me do something about it, husband. A few lessons may sharpen their wits. Why don't you talk to Klop Todd, who just took the crown? Nah, don't, don't help him. Help, um... Your marshal and vassal. He gained studying marshal for 15 years. Wow. Klop Todd gains... Stewardship bonus and Odag gains spy master bonus. She is probably most equipped to help the marshal. So that makes the most sense to me. He's at 23. He gets to go to 25 right now. What a god. Can I have some land? Sure, jump man. Uh, I just gave it away though. You have to wait till the next war's over. By the way, we got there really fast. Am I the fast boy now? I've always been the slow one who runs away from everyone else. Benevolent Brozor, the people of the Chieftain of Perm have converted to the true faith 
There are practically no more heretics in the whole of Perm, which is a holy land for the Suomanuskos, and it's under our jurisdiction now. So we take a look at the religious map. You can see now the holy site of Perm is controlled by Suomanuskos, and they themselves are Suomanuskos. That's kind of an important thing, in my opinion. Now, uh, I want to go back to the council. And continue to convert our new territories down here, especially uh, here. Because I think Apisar is not fully converted, and he's nine years. May as well start now. I'm tempted to fire him to see if I can get somebody better than 16, but 16 is pretty good. We've only got 59 days left converting culture. King Kloptot on the council, though. I don't know if I can take that away from him. You brothers duke it out. Nobody's fighting Brozor, okay? You guys handle your own business. If you want to take the crown from each other and stuff. That's pretty hilarious, though. I love the drama. I, I live for it. Bit rate on my end? Oh, no, it's me. I've got some internet hiccups tonight, chat. It'll it'll smoothen out. Just gotta be patient. Appreciate it, my liege. A new subject has arrived in your court. Throw them to the pit. Your cousin was slain. I don't even know how I'm related to you. You're the cons. The, uh... It actually will buff out. It just takes, like, uh, less than five minutes and it'll slowly kind of tick back up in kilobits until it looks normal. It happens, but we still enjoy the show. Or at least you're good at pretending, Thunder Guardian. Pig, thank you for your prime sub. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> you just subbed to the lowest bitrate stream on Twitch. We're under 3,000 right now. We're supposed to be at 6,000. I think it's ticking back up as we speak. Can't even afford good internet. I'm proud to see my daughter no longer as a child, but as an adult. With sufficient tutelage, even a child like Nat Talia could it develop some diplomatic influence. With an excellent grasp on all matters of etiquette and understanding of all kinds of entertainment and the eloquence to go with it, she will have little trouble navigating a life at court as a charismatic negotiator. They grow up fast. 13 diplomacy for her. That was a noise. My concubine Pimka is once again absent from our chambers as night falls. She has been distant lately, lost in thought, and rarely seen at court. Am I not to her satisfaction? Is she simply busy, or could she be warming someone else's bed? Well, if I'm not satisfactory, uh, she's doing a good job of hiding it. <laughs> Confront her. Start find secrets. She would never disrespect me thusly. We have no family, though. She would never disrespect me thusly. Chippaws and Natalia are now married. Okay, this is the dude who had like 18 Marshall. I was gonna give him some land as well. Forest fighter, brilliant strategist, lustful, brave, and compassionate. I'm expecting some drama in his future. We don't really have any land to give yet. I'll probably just preemptively give, um, because I'm gonna forget. He's got like... <laughs> Hang on. I don't even know if this is a thing. Well, it is. It's just there's no Photoshop of him being blonde. But does anybody else get like, um... Oh, a Cal Drogo vibe from this guy. Like, 
Khal Drogo hiding amongst us type of situation. He just dyed his hair like Jason Bourne and is trying to like blend in with society and live a normal life. He, he is like compassionate, brave, and lustful. I'm just saying. With a decent martial skill as well. Alright, I was going to give him a um, piece of this, not Ob. Kalunda. I guess Kalunda's fine. It's a pretty good spot. It's got a duchy building. For my daughter, that will be good. My liege, a new sub for your collection. Good while you still can. You know what, guys? Being a sub's not so bad. Get that guy! Do I want to give him Ob or Kalunda? I think they're the same. I'll give him Ob. How many times I gotta go back? Oh, I passed him. What do you do if you pass him? Well, he's right here. Just, just give, just give it to him from here. Okay, he can have Ob, dude. It's all for you. You guys are landed. Who, who are we getting right now? Air Ketchup, I guess. Smile for fun said being a sub's not so bad. With another uh, $10 in bits and also Air Ketchup, welcome aboard. Much love and uh, thank you for your generosity. Enjoy it for the next 30 days on the house. Greetings, my liege. With Ostiak's settlement and the insulation of a new administration, the people of Ob have fully embraced Ostiak traditions. Great work! Now I need you to move on! High Chieftain... What? Wasn't he just a king? No. That's, is that the guy that lost king? Poor God is the king now, right? Wait, no? Hold on. I'm very confused all of a sudden. Um, let's start converting the culture here. Who among my brothers? <laughs> high chieftain, high... None of them are king? Who's the king? High chieftain clopped out of perm finished the culture today. It was him. Alliance form with Chipaz because he's new ruler. Your acquaintance, Chipaz married Natalia. You swayed uh, Chieftess Setyamka, that's important. Cousin slain in battle. Now this is just the High Chieftain of Perm. Okay, first of all, um, time out. Your territory shrunk since the last time we talked. But even so, become my vassal with only a plus two. Having a good opinion and our difference in military strength. Even though she's not de jure your vassal, you will be much safer under my protection. I see that you have a 26 intrigue and are deceitful, sadistic, and temperate. Wow, what a combo. Okay, all for vassalage to you before Vladimir comes in and scoops him up, or Mord Mordvinia does. So they've got uh, another 600 troops, and really it's just one county, I think. Well, what's going on inside Suckberia, then? I got the crown? Installed by faction demand. No way. The AI did a faction in their own kingdom to remove the new king and install me as king again, as empire. I have never seen this before. <laughs> oh. So if you ever have a situation arise like that, this is how you can show the history of a title. You have to click the book, and you can see what happened. Don't click on claimants unless you want to see who's got a claim. 
the two different menus. The, this is a button and this is a button. Two different buttons. Wow. That's not a small thing. Okay, like, it wasn't just like a county. It wasn't like, here's a county. It was a full-on crown for a kingdom. You know what I mean? Like, that's... The, you, they can't do that for an emperor, because I'm the only- there's only one empire. And you're under domain limit too, yeah. They just forfeited the entire kingdom, to me. Which surged my military potential up over to 34,000 by itself. So for, ex for reference, if you're curious how big of an area it was, it's this entire dollop of land, de jure, uh, that goes directly to me. Now, for reference, this actually used to be under the same umbrella of Sukberia when Father Cordell was the ruling leech. But when he died, obviously with partition, we split the kingdoms, and so Yugro went to his second-born son, so Brozor's who we play. The kingship went to Plorgod, and then only recently Kloptod ward Plorgod for his claim to the same crown, won, took the crown, extended the kingdom of Yugra all the way over to Perm. We saw that. And then they rejected their new king, Kloptod, and the factions and the, the vassals there were like, well, if Plorgod can't have it, and we got this dummy Kloptod, third-born son, and steward, we don't want that guy. Just give it back to the Emperor Brozor, dude. He's such a bro. He's definitely going to take care of us. Look at all the good stuff he's done. He's been hooking us all up. He even gave a county to a U... <gasps> Wait a second. Yeah, I gave like one or two counties to a Ugrin vassal. I bet that has something to do with it. Where's my friends? Where's my best friend? High Chief Jebeg, right? Is in Pelham. He's my best bro. I bet he was probably the leader of the faction. And uh, I gave him, he already had High Chief Pelham and the actual chieftain of Pelham, but I gave him Kanda way over here. So I like generously gave Yugra some land from our new takings, even though they didn't really do anything to help take it. Wow, what a story. And that's just one of the ways that um, Crusader Kings encourages you to play outside the typical boundaries. Because I feel like most people who come in here are like, Talix, you're about to lose a realm in succession. Kill them. Kill the babies, okay, until there's only one. Disin I always disinherit them and spend all of my renown. Or I uh, go to war immediately after I die to try and take it back. Like, yeah, you can do that sometimes. But if you do that all the time, you miss situations like that. You know, that just naturally fell right back into my lap because of Crusader Kings 3's, like, AI, King Brozor, bro of all of his people. They just handed him the crown. No strings attached. And there wasn't even a notification about it. I just became King of Yugra. Uh, <laughs> without even... I was just like, wait a second. Uh, where did it go? <laughs> there it is. So who can... who's... who controls Perm? Yeah, Kloptod controls Perm, and now I'm just his liege again. There we go, I guess. Who knew a murderer would turn into the most beloved king? I thought that, um, Cordal was going to be the most beloved king. He was just the most beloved steward. People still liked him a lot. But maybe more as a parental figure. Brozor is just a bro, dude. Greetings, my charming liege. I accept your gracious offer of vassalization. My liege. Okay, so that's uh, this little independent county over there. Where now Sukbiri goes a little further out. Can we see where you're getting plus 7.2 renown per month? Um, basically I have had 80% daughters on each of my characters. We just have lots of charming, awesome, and successful daughters. Some of them have gone on to become queens. 
but I would say out of those, probably two thirds of them I have matrilineally married to lowborn people, usually good warriors. And then what happens is since I matrilineally marry, I've been exponentially increasing my dynastic line. Um, and also basically inviting champions to come in by marrying my daughters to the champions. So I get a bunch of champions and then I land them and make them vassals. And sometimes they split off and go rule other areas. I have 140 living members. One emperor, dat me, three dukes by marriage, and six counts by marriage. But the reason I had to do all the matrilineal marriages is because uh, until we, when we started, right, we were way over here. Because this is Tartus. So only recently have we gone far enough west to actually see the rest of the Suomanuscos. These guys were out of range for two-thirds of our game so far. So there was no one else to marry except unlanded knights, effectively. But it ended up creating a huge dynastic, um, sprawling tree fairly early in the game. And if I just keep scrolling, we can see where everybody ended up becoming. Like, let's just pick a character that we liked before. Um, High Chief Verpon is fairly recent. He has split into his own Dondi, and that's High Chief and Dondi, who currently is my vassal. Cousin Noaidi Turush, so we have someone who became a Noaidi. One of my cousins is dead, and then he ended up having five more children, three of which have died. And I know we have at least one king or queen here as well, but I'm not going to painstakingly find them. But they're getting up there. Speaking of renown, we do have uh, 1600, and I could choose another tier one, or we could just save a little bit more. Reinforce congenital traits up 30%. I really do like control growth at 0.2 a month, especially when we're blobbing out this big. I think I'm just going to save and get faithful magistrates, and if I can do that before I die, this actually is RP, because it's something that the patient forgiving and uh, expansionist king Brozor would do. Now, emperor. High king, if you will. Did the Mongols attack already? No, it's on random. Also, thanks again for the bits and the generosity. Much appreciated, dude. Hey, Grand Ward. Good evening. Welcome back. Sakberia is still going. Vladimir is actually touching our borders now. So it's probably easier to expand. But the different culture group, the fact that he's a king and he's not my de jure vassal make it basically impossible. Best thing I could do is be friends with him as a plus 10 and plus 100 opinion as a 35. So that'd be, yeah, it wouldn't even be half of the negative. Not really doable. Like, Mordvinia will give you a better understanding, and that's someone I am a friend with, and it's still a negative 63. So at this stage, it's kind of tough to peacefully integrate unless they're really small and similar to you. So this is probably the max size we can get without just warring literally everybody. Speaking of war, I don't... Did we even have a battle? I don't think we ever caught those guys, and I don't see them anymore? I don't know. Let's just go down here and do some more sieging if we're just going to be unpaused. Alex, which ruler so far do you think is most representative of Sukberia as a whole? I don't know. I think they've each left their mark and uh, been interesting to play as in completely different ways. I think we've been very successful in each, all three of our play styles. Ruling through fear uniting the people that we ruled through fear with good stewardship and then going from there and uh, befriending many of our vassals and council members. So it's been really fun to just kind of transition between all three of those. My friend High Chief Vergava has proven highly capable, especially in academic matters. There are some projects I would like you to undertake in the chiefdom of Chadrinsk, my liege. With your blessing, of course. Oh, she wants to undertake. 
Take the reins, Vergava. Vassal shouldn't be taking such liberties. <laughs> Spend 75 prestige for encouraged development and 20 opinion. Sure. The chiefdom of Kulanga, Kulanda has given rise to the Kyrgyz Nangcho's populace, populace targeting you. I'm having trouble reading. Um... Bashkir Tengri is on the rise with 20 members. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, for you, I probably just... I don't even think swaying is enough. But I may as well... I am King Brozor, so we may as well start somewhere. Okay, how goes the war? Looking fine. Ten titles. We gotta do something with all this money and income. Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> money and income. Let's get, uh... If we're gonna try and keep this land, then upgrading... The tribal hold is a good idea, because this is going to upgrade the fort level, the levies, the garrison, and the tax. And be a good spender. It's a long upgrade path anyways. I haven't heard that noise in a long time. Um, what are we doing? Pogging out, apparently. I missed that sub song. It's been it's been a while, Trombone. Smile for fun must be really having some good times in Crusader Kings. This is cheaper on the real internet site. Were you getting um price gouged with phones? <laughs> Hold on, I have to assemble the meme. <laughs> oh, thank you, Smile for Fun, for uh, sharing. Seven new first-time sub-members and three returning. $50 in gift subs in total. That's a lot of gift subs. Did they make a new coffin dance? I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Enjoy. Masha's with wolves. That's a good name. Like the Moon Wizards 845 Lux Gaming Pluto Frog. Oni, Crumper, G House, Dwevel, Old Man, Mr. K, Post Apocalypse, and Right on Time. All of you. And thanks for uh, hanging out in some capacity because you had to be here at least once to get a sub. And now, whether you like it or not, you're stuck with us. My lord, it's come to my attention that there is a rare opportunity to invest in the chiefdom of Teak. My wife, Kanchi, draws up the details for the business investment, and it does indeed. Look as if the deal could benefit Teak greatly if successful. Is a risk worth taking? Successful business endeavors for 10 years. So remember, Teak is the one we just took. <laughs> it's weird to say. Uh, leave the opportunity to the people. Control changes by plus 15. Ooh. A control change by plus 15 chat is... 14 months of instant control, which is tempting. Is that better than successful? Yeah, that is. All right, leave the opportunity to the people. Spend 55 gold, get that free control bonus. Capture some chieftain in that siege. And then keep heading on down. Oh, there you guys are. I was wondering where you were. I didn't see you until now. So if we do nothing else, uh, the holding, the objective, which uh, is up here. Which I have no idea how to say.
Chuchinsk. Tried. Shoot. I watched like three streams of this, but still only know that this is too complicated for me. That's because you're too busy buying subscriptions for strangers on the internet instead of uh, buying cool games and then playing them, you know? I believe in you. You could figure it out. Brozor has been asking me for a stick horse for a long time, and I told him I would get one for him in the three months if he displayed more focus in his studies. Chad, if you're good, I'll get you something in three months. Okay, you guys don't have that kind of attention span. He responded that he was fine with his current dedication to his studies. Reward or no? Keep the trait content. Teach him to be more flexible or become trusting. Content is nice, especially for a younger brother. Um, trusting is pretty cool, too. Opinion of liege plus 20, opinion of vassals plus 10. What he already has, be it much or little, is enough for Brozor. All right, yeah, let's just... Don't fix it, you know? <laughs> it's good the way it is. Speaking of. Well, 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 this shifted. So, uh, Jasup is now inheriting Kingdom of Yugra, because that passed back in. Brozor is inheriting Kingdom of Permia. Which I still had from conquering it, okay? And then Not Pyotr is inheriting the Kingdom of Sabir. So, all brothers get at least a kingdom to their name. These guys aren't going to have any land, but that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> Meanwhile... Mergren Avrin, my heir, who is 23 and recently got married, is in line to get everything else. So if I don't change anything, then it's going to go perfect, okay? He's going to get the Kingdom of Sukberia, the High Kingdom of Sukberia, Bas Yugen. Oh, see, I need to change that, though. That's what we're working on changing. I hope I don't screw it up. But I got to do... I gotta do this. We are brave, are we not, men? Probably win. We can do better. I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing in three months. Well, three months from now, we'll be talking about Christmas. And that's kind of weird. You can unlock a new learning perk. Disease resistance 30%, disease resistance massive boost. Illness and disease. I, I haven't really seen any diseases, but... May as well go full healthy right now. How is your health, by the way? If you don't mind me asking, my leash. It is fine. I have a reinvigorating friendship, athleticism, a medicine focus, and an iron constitution which only counters penalties. I like that it actually specifies that. I hope I can get this game for Christmas. We'll just sign up for Game Pass. If you've never even done a trial, it's like a dollar. Tox, there's no commander in your army. Because we're so good, we don't even need one, dude. <laughs> Um, I don't know where he went. We have like 30 potential champions. My leech. A new sub for your collection. Good while you still can. You know what, guys? Being a sub's not so bad. Get that guy! You captured High Chieftain Alpra. Oh, we already finished the siege? Duchess has been swayed, which hasn't made a single dent <laughs> in this negative 100. <laughs> <laughs> and your neighboring Khan. Hello, Khan. 
This con won a war for a duchy, I think. So we're gonna come for you eventually. In time. All right, we're at 96% war score. They've got some backup. So we kind of just need to get out of here. And it should be fine. I think they're trying to group up to attack me. It's hard to tell. Wow, they're going really fast, chat. <sighs> they're going really fast. Well. They always go really fast. The AI is just faster. Doesn't make any sense. If we defend on the hill... That'd be pretty cool. This is step? Oh, well this is hills. That would be more defensively advantageous, but I think they're gonna catch me first. How did they catch me? I was two tiles away from them. Uh, any organizers in the entire... Like, Organizer is one of the hardest to find stats in the whole game. All right, they want to fight, then let's fight. I got 15 champions, dude. Let's slow this down. I got a 34 commander advantage. I got our best Count Arvo. If you recall, Count Arvo is the former peasant leader who uh, uprose against us and we released him from prison and forgave him instead of executing him because I am patient and forgiving. And now he's got a 24 martial skill, <laughs> 24 uh, prowess, and is a tactical genius with a 34 commander advantage. So it just shows you sometimes that forgiveness is the correct way in Crusader Kings. Because we are going to be, <laughs> I guess, fighting about 6,000 people here. We're at about even. Our champion, Count Rateg, wounded Tox. Let's see what we got here. What's going on down here? Two kings. My Metservatia. We have 1,500 of these guys, and we are absolutely destroying their horse archers with them. The light footmen, I think, are countered by them. So horse archers aren't that scary, and then my, their heavy infantry are being countered by our light footmen, so should be easy. Even outnumbered two to one, we have more champions than them. We have a commander who's three times better than them, and we have unyielding defenders, so friendly casualties are down 25%. It looks like we're getting a benefit from never backing down, and the fact that uh, this commander has a chivalry focus as well. We, in we wounded the enemy commander. One of our champions was maimed. They've got a military engineer and a rough terrain expert, so I guess that may be helping them. Oh yeah. We routed almost 4,000 of them versus 1,000 of us. Pretty big battle in enemy territory here. Now we're just finishing them off, trying to chop as many of them up as we can on the way out. And our Mets and Vantia, as well as our cavalry, Excel at chasing those who run. I got 400 fame, 198 uh, piety, devotion, and the war score just went to max. Metz and Vartia killed almost a thousand men. Okay, well, maybe that's exaggerating. Almost 750 men. So they took nearly 30, 40 percent of the total casualty inflictions from the Metz and Vartia doomstack. My champions killed almost 700. <laughs> we wounded their count. He's like one of the leaders. 80 kills for Verrier, who himself is a prowess god. We need to give him some... We already gave him a chiefdom. We need to give him some more, dude. Night Dog's got a couple. Them and their retinues took 80 people. I assume that they have a, a retinue that they travel with. You know, like squires and and uh, people running around to, like, carry their stuff. Especially if they are counts. They gotta have some extra backup. But yeah, 
We got some big kills. One got maimed. I think they cut off part of his face. Bonyak. Gregarious, brave, calm, cool guy. He got he got healed immediately though. Alright, enforce my demands. We only get 75 prestige, but the main thing that we get is this neighbor and connection between Atbasar and Teak. It's not Teak! Yes, it is. Wow, you guys have already got buildings here, too. Oh, fantastic. And the best part about this... Actually, let's go check our succession real quick. I think I can go ahead and create the duchy no problem. And then we can start thinking about moving the capital. We only have one more spot that we need. We should have enough to actually forge the duchy of Kazakh. I can create it. I have three out of four. There's one more that we actually need, though. This one has five spots and four holdings. This one has two spots. This one kind of sucks. But, um... This one's got one, two, three, four, five holdings and four spots. That's really impressive. It should be four total. One, two... Yeah, this one, three. But it's got um, two really nice places that bas that make it like a a neat possible capital. I think better than Vas Yugen Tartus. Tartus sucks. This is terrible capital. Okay. Anywho, uh, we could do one more war. What's a better spot to make the actual capital chat? The one that has the five open holdings, which is insane, or the one that has a duchy building. What is better? I don't know, I never built a duchy building before. Are you giving up your Meyer heritage? Oh yeah. Too close to the border. Come and take it. What are you gonna do, huh? Come get it if you can. What does have more holdings do? So, the way this works is... It's a good question. Like, let's just take Atbasar, okay? Everything that I'm highlighting here is in the same county. A single county. Just this. Atbasar, right? But, look how it's broken up. So, because this is the one that has five empty holdings, each of these holdings corresponds to one extra highlighted area. So, right, we got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Well, okay, that includes the one that's built. So technically, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See how it's broken up? So basically, you can make a building in each one of these blank spots. And they, they're called holdings. So because we just did a cultural research as a tribe, uh, we unlocked city planning, which gave us access to these four different types of buildings. So now that we've researched that, I can go in here and, uh... Chad, I can't construct any holdings. I thought that I could make holdings now. Alright, well, I'm talking out of my ass. I could have sworn that I could make village center shrines, prayer halls, and trading outposts. How do I do that? Anyways, there's supposed to be spots that you make other buildings that will add to your holdings. And it's, it's kind of like, think about it like building tall instead of building wide. Buildings are built in a holding. Oh, well, somebody lied to me like two streams ago. Three streams ago. Okay, because that's why I researched them. <laughs> somebody just made up information when they told me that.
sacks. Um, I just, just I'm just gonna take your word that something that you said sucks because it's a lot of numbers. But you'll figure it out. Don't believe Twitch chat. All right, how do I do this actually? No available holdings to construct. A settlement of a barony or county capital. Yeah, like CK2. How do I make baronies or county capitals? Do I have to be feudal? Are you telling me that tribes didn't know how to settle more land? Ever? They just were like, you know what? Instead of settling like this, 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 or this, let's just go over there. That sucks. Because if that were the case, then we definitely wouldn't be capable... If we were that dispersed, we wouldn't be capable of this kind of massive organization. <laughs> you know? Like, hey guys that are uh, 2,500 miles away, you guys coming to the war tomorrow? Yeah. You guys want to, like, build a building next to me, though? No. Okay. All right. Their horses need a lot of land for grazing. I uh, appreciate the thought, but we only have 500 horses apparently in the entire <laughs> in the entire empire. Okay, listen. Here's the thing though, okay? Those of you who are writing negatively, I'm looking at you, Angelus, who says, "A historical step people took over empires and didn't just decide to not live in cities." Uh, I don't know if you're memeing. Was that a kappa? I can't tell. Anyways, I think my problem arises in the fact that why are these tribal researches then? Why can I research city planning in tribal era, but I can't build them? Doesn't make any sense. Everything that's in tribal research should be for the tribal peoples, yeah? Can we, I think that's something we can all agree on. But yet, many of these do not apply. Yes, I know we build them in a holding. Welcome to 10 minutes ago, Railcrim. I'm glad that your stream finally caught up. It's tribal era. Yeah, but this is early medieval era. So why wouldn't I research them... ...then? Because, like, for example... Um... For example... Yeah, another one's Gavelkind. I already have Confederate Partition Law. Chat argued about that last time, but it's... I can't, for the life of me, figure out why I need to research something I already have. Um... Counties now reach maximum existing development penalty at 20 development. We don't use development as a tribe. And then these ones are blanked out because they're cultural and regional. Also, individual de jure county Cass's belly is not necessary? Until you actually step out of being a tribe that can declare war for a small amount of piety? So there's at least three that I don't even use. I think city planning lets you upgrade your trading outpost level two. Can build trading outposts. You might be right. That might that might actually exist, because I did see a trading outpost here. So okay. That makes maybe okay, that makes more sense. Um, I'm with you on that page. What was the other one? Prayer Hall, Shrine, and Village Center. That's a Warrior Lodge. That's a Wall and Ditch. Okay, alright. So it's, uh, maybe it's just a case of tooltips? need to be slightly updated in turn like if I mouse over what the buildings are maybe the tooltip 
could have like a slightly more specific uh, information blob about it's like where it's actually built. Okay. Because it's a little just unintuitive to expect the player to know, well, you can't use this, this, or this yet, but you can use this one yet, so research it for that reason. But now I get it. You're, you're right about the uh, building unlock. Okay, so then my question is, fortification building, this should be the palisades, right? Then the barracks should be the warrior hall that we just looked at. And then economic building should be what? What does Forest Wardens do? That's what gives us our super archers, our cultural archers. I'm trying to read actual comics. I have to scroll past about a dozen of you. Aren't there feudal guys in that in tribal era? I think I have some feudal vassals because I have um, feudal contracts. But I don't know how to... Let's just see. Yeah, I've got some feudal dudes. <laughs> okay, if these are feudal, which is wrong government type... Well, well, well. What do we have here? So I am allowed... Now it gets even messier. <laughs> because um, the Emperor's coffers and prestige... Well, not prestige, actually. The Emperor's coffers can pay for these buildings. He knows how to make them because he's the Emperor. And he's the one commissioning them. Which is me. But... I can't do them in any county that is considered tribal because they have to be manually upgraded to feudal. So are these currently converting back to tribal? Because the government type is tribal? I have no idea, Chad. I just opened a Pandora's box of I don't knows. I don't think any of you guys are able to answer my question in less than probably a, a few paragraphs. So I am just going to accept... Um that I don't know. What happens if you move your capital to a feudal county? Oh my god. I'm scared to even think about that. <laughs> I don't know, but this is definitely not a feudal county. I don't think you can cheese just converting to feudal, though. Because you have to make a decision to adopt feudal ways, which requires you to reorganize your faith which requires a chunk of piety. As far as I know, you can't go back from feudal clan. Yeah, I think once you choose, it just is. You still stream. Yes, I still stream, Joey. I'm never up this late. Did you try to make an excuse why you haven't been here for the last uh, two months? Because the last two week streams have been starting at uh, 1 p.m. my time. That's about seven hours ago. So the I'm not up this late doesn't really hold water, unfortunately. You're stuck to tribal due to your faith. Uh, that is correct, yeah. All right, well, um, weirdly, I can build any feudal buildings I want in my feudal counties, even though I don't have a feudal government. But I can't build them... Okay. Wouldn't it make more sense to just ban all feudal buildings if the parent government is tribal, or at least only the AI feudal lords can build them because I'm too dumb? I don't know. I'm not really sure what the like R how to RP that. Any mini enemy combatants captured, I need to release them. Let's just get off that tangent because I'm not going to solve anything by just um, lingering on it longer than it needs to be. King Bersi imprisoned.
King Shindye. So Vladimir and Ruthenia just went to war. Norse versus Suomenusko. Suomenusko lost, it looks like. Okay. Moving on. We need one more war with our good friends Zungaria, which we have never even spoken to until now. Let's go ahead and disband. See a lot of neighboring wars. Okay. Um, so I can't subjugate because you already waged a subjugation war. Oh, I didn't realize subjugation wars were once in a lifetime. It's interesting that if that subjugation is once in a lifetime, it still shows up on your menu, but the invade a kingdom is also once in a lifetime, and that ceases to show up on the menu. I believe that is the exact spot that we are looking for. So let's go get it. And that's the last one for Kazakh, and then we get to play with uh, moving our, our capital. Okay, raise local. Use the control right click from previous. Our men at arms regiments are not full strength, but this should be pretty easy. While they're doing that. Oh yeah, I got six prisoners from the last war. Hi guys. Ooh, 23 entry is huge. Dynastic Kinslayer. Ouch. Spineless Villain. Evil Zealot. Content Adventurer. Bunch of babies. Alright, you're all getting, like, mass ransomed. Can't get mass ransomed. 50 gold. Hey, thanks, dude. 50 gold. Hey, thanks, dude. Fif 10 gold. Hey, thanks, dude. 100, 100 gold. Double thanks, dude. Oh, it removes the mass button once they get down here. Enemy ally joins the war. What are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Okay, it didn't ransom those two for some reason. Hey, tin gold? Yo, thanks, dude. Tin gold? Man, really appreciate that. Now, the other two, you guys can just go. After you convert, and I'll see you later. Here, you drop this king. <laughs> oh, oh, my my name. Name. Oh, 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 too, everyone. Who goes there? With her coming of age, my tuition of Plazalon is at an end. For the longest time, I was hoping that a good tutelage would be enough to teach Plazalon the intricacies of diplomacy, but <laughs> all efforts have come to naught. Few at any court would be overly impressed by her etiquette, but at least she does know how to hold her own in polite company. Adequate bargainer. Hmm. Potential alliance with Ruthenia, son of King Beresi. That's pretty good, dude. 
Wait, Ruthenia's is Norse though. <laughs> I can do match for lineal. How many brothers do you have? All right. So what you're saying is make it match for lineal, then assassinate Halfdan and Botolf, and then he inherits, and then it comes into my dynasty. <laughs> is that what you're saying? What do um, Suomenusko pagans think of Norse pagans? You lost stress because your sister died. Wow. How? What? Did I, like, really hate her or something? She married a 20-year-old brother-in-law. And he looks like he got caught stealing a cookie from the cookie jar, dude. Okay, well, I don't know what... How, why did I hate her? I don't even know what happened. From experience, they're hostile fates. They hate them. Oh, yeah, they are hostile fates. Potential alliance with Vladimir. That's good, unless I want to go to war with Vladimir. He's got... Two older siblings as well. And I can do this matrilineally. Okay, well that's fine then. He'll come here. I'd probably rather go to war and like unify the northeast before I go further west. Because the further west I go, it's going to get really messy if we are exposed from all sides. It'd be nice to kind of like fill this in and then like, you know, take all that. Because Kyrgyz is not having a great time right now. After what I did. Meanwhile, Mordvinia and Vladimir, specifically Mordvinia, may eventually join us on their own. So let's do matrilineal. That seems like a good match. He's charming and diligent, has good stats, still a few years to grow. Benevolent High King Brozor Sakbiri, I gladly accept your betrothal. Well, then why don't you gladly get converted to my culture, you gracious maniac? <laughs> well, gracious maniac. <laughs> Rip um, a Nava Avrin, my half sister. How you guys doing down here? Karmalov says half a year of fearing Etal Hiss. Here's to another half of petting Petamidas. Hi, Billy M. What's up? Ganaka Mod Squad is here. A notable guest has arrived. Not very notable. Famous reveler, though. High Chief Dizanava has become your Chancellor. Excuse me? And she cannot be fired for 25 years? Did she have a hook on me? Bro. You just have a high chief. You're not even that good. Arrogant, gluttonous, wounded. Count Chippaz converted to Ostiak. Oh, that's pretty sick. Didn't we just marry one of our daughters with that? You learn Count Virier's lover's secret. All right, well, Virier's pretty awesome, so don't tell anybody, okay? What's his secret? Oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Remember when we suspected that Pimka was maybe not home very much? And I decided the first time in the whole game not to question it? We 
Well, it turns out one of my top generals um, was just discovered. <laughs> I am forgiving and patient, though, chat. It is true. I wish there was like a... Something besides murder. <laughs> is, there, is there an in-between? Alright, I guess I just expose? That's just telling the truth. I have exposed Count Virier's relationship with Pimka. And then... What if I just, like, romanced Pimka and then kicked her out right afterward? Yeah, how does it feel? How does it feel to be cheated on? Okay, to be fair to Pimka chat, think about it like this. I did have a one-night stand with my longtime friend uh, who saved me from the wolf, and she didn't know about it, and I cheated on my whole family. Okay, so listen, sometimes you get what's coming to you, I guess. But not a lover. That's true. They are lovers. I... What I did was just one day. This is, this is like every day. That is true. But I'm not, I'm not going to kill her. I went, <laughs> not bros or anyway. One day we'll play a, like a craven, uh, intrigue psycho. That's like in prison. <laughs> it's not even a crime. Like it's not even a religious crime in this culture. Grant her a title, then revoke it for max pettiness. <laughs> Just make her the court physician and then fire her. <laughs> All right, chat. Look, I've got to win her back. Thirty-five percent seduction chance. That's it? She dislikes Gregarious. Sadistic dislikes forgiving. Send gift and dismiss. Oh, that's RP. That's like, listen, you were part of my family. I forgive you for what you've done. Here, take this and go. That's, pre that's actually pretty solid. All right, I'm down with that. Twelve gold is enough. To get a lot in this particular... Wow, zero people. Okay, well, that's fine. All right, anyway. That was a good... That was a good RP suggestion. I think this is it. This is gonna be like 30, 40 percent, then we just hit the capital and it's over. And then we have Kazik. And then we have to deal with the fallout of moving capitals. Bye, Pimka. I thought we had something good. But no. We'll check on the rest of the world um, after we get that business handled. Because I just want to see how the religion's going. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> after my concubine got revenge on me for cheating. The person that I cheated on, I mean with, just died at age 71. Over oh, Gava, if you were still with me, I know you would tell me to be strong. That things would get better. And you would be right, as you always were. 
But first I must curse and cry. How could I not when you are gone from this world? Only 6%? In a recent communication, my vassal, Duchess Sisek, expressed a want to focus on her ambitions and interests more. I could make sure that our coming letters contain more on a topic close to her heart. What is close to her heart? Zeal? Feats of war. We should got 13 marshal, dude. In her response, she encouraged my slight dip into more personal topics. Now I just have to keep pretending I know anything about warfare. <laughs> Come on, you've been leading so many wars. I know you've been delegating that task to more talented generals, but they have to have told you something. You're the, you're the emperor. Let us speak more. <laughs> you literally conquered Here, the Kyrgyz Khan. Oh, hey, Yay, September. I'm here for six more months prepaid. Chillin' Sicilian, I can't even verify by that one way or the other, but I'll take you at your word. Looking forward to seeing you in six months. Ladies and gentlemen, got him. Uh, never gonna stream again starting tomorrow. That's all I was here for. Oh, no! Hi, Chieftain Erder to my other friend! Your grandfather, King Dandi. We have the same lineage. Duke Erder of Ishim. You all remember that. This is Erder II. I love Erder. He was he was a craven, but he was cool. Patriarch, Ashishaya, August, Reveler, Gout. Yep, died gout-ridden at age 61. You will never be forgotten, my friend. Spouse mediates with Moyer's sister. High Chieftain Keshe gained 10 opinion of you for 10 years. Your sister-in-law was in a really different area. All right, let's focus on this little war. The Erder family is the Weasleys of this playthrough. Is that true? I'm trying to... How? Like, main characters, but not really the focus? They were like our friends who we can go hang out with? Well, swaying is working, but it doesn't work when uh, you have like a negative 200. <laughs> Your marshal has earned respect. Popular opinion. To the beguiling High King Brozor, we have been burdened with your oppressive laws for far too long. We are done paying you taxes. Once your coffers dry up and your larders are empty, we wish you will wish you had treated us more fairly. Minus 25 control sucks. Where is this? The control level every county in the faction. Okay, what is this? I like how they signed their letters, Peasant Revolt. Isn't that you? Wait, your discontent reached 100% and you're only at 7% power. It's like, oh, Apisar. That's one we actually need. Control level going down in Apisar sucks. I think Tax Leon is always worse. Dearest yours, Peasant Revolt. Okay, well, here he comes, I guess. I don't know 
how many p troops we can actually get there. 25 hundo is pretty good. Just peasants. Did it say it's even? Who was the first person they put on there? Aggressive attacker, open terrain, reaver. Seems like that's just the best champion for the job, I guess, according to the to the guess. All right, we'll have the levies go handle it. Rise up, peasants, and protect your lands. Sakberia! We only need one more piece of land here, dude. Where'd the little siege button go? Oh, right there. Okay, now, why is this only going down by a teensy little bit? Oh, Zangaria is actually huge, but I think they're in their own war. Uh, they're defending against the Sukberian Conquest and defending against a totally different tyranny in fighting war. So we picked a good time to go to war against them. Meanwhile, these guys are getting squished. We wounded the enemy commander. I think we only had one champion who did that too. So good job, single champion. <laughs> Worst peasant uprising ever. Uh, yet another martial genius. You can just stay. <laughs> you can just stay in house arrest for a little while. I'll just leave you there. <laughs> Dealt with immediately. Faction targeting you has been disbanded. Go back to three times speed and uh, I need to spend some income and prestige before I die. I'm 61 chat, I'm supposed to be feeling fine. I guess death could, we're supposed to get a one year warning. So I shouldn't just instantly die as far as I know. My champion got 25 kills. We slotted the rest. All right, capital should push us up to 50%, I'm gonna guess. And then I'm gonna check some issues and I'm gonna check some council. And uh, I wanna start thinking about making that duchy. I took my foe, Conum, hostage. Oh, you're the leader. <laughs> Conum, using bike. If I do that, I don't get 100% war score, but it'd be pretty funny to, like, demand that you convert. Because then your whole area would have to convert. My leech! A new sub for your collection. Run while you still can! You know what, guys? Being a sub's not so bad. Get that guy! Here's the thing. If I convert her, I get... I lose the negative 40. If I make a friend, I can get a 30... 45, so I can get an 85 swing. That's still 65 that I can't contend with. For vassalization. I don't know what to do. Ugh. I can just end the war and she goes free. Prisoners. Ugh. She might die as well. I mean, she's 56. She's wounded. She might just die of her wounds. So I think we just take what we want right now. And worry, worry about what we've already accomplished. You know, this is all we want. I just want the piece of land. She goes free. I get Kazakh. And I can focus on internal affairs and forming my duchy. That's the smartest thing to do. Zungaria is going to have their own problems.
Is if I released her, I would have to fight for like another few months in order to get my. Because I wouldn't. You want. You don't stay at a. The only reason I had 100% war score is because I captured her. So if I let her go, I go back to low war score. It's not worth it. All right, let's just band and celebrate the fact that we have Kazakh united, including its actual seat of power. We're going to create the D Duke title for 125 gold. It might screw up succession. I don't know. It looks fine. Yep, High Chieftain of Kazakh is passing uh, to our firstborn heir, along with the majority of our titles, except for, obviously, Sabir, Permia, and Yugra. We won't be the direct king anymore, but he'll still be impo Emperor, well, High King, and then King of Sukberia. Which is all this. It's gonna be weird. What I don't know what happens when we move the capital out of the primary kingdom, though. Because this is technically... Oof. Technically... Oh, you guys are getting optical? Yeah, you guys are getting optical. Damn. Cox sucks today. What do you guys see right now? What do you even see? It was all gray? You got pixels? I can see your voice. <laughs> your words are like colors on the wind. Good now? Saw the gray pixel void. Dude, it's been bad tonight. I don't know what's the deal, but I hope it doesn't continue like this because it's just annoying. It's been fine for over a month. Until like the last week. All right, well, this is bouncing back anyways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a snack. But what I was going to say was, right, if I move my capital into Kazakh, the problem is we're kind of in the kingdom of Cumania. Cumania. And the current... No one has... <gasps> Dude, I can create the kingdom of Cumania. How about that? I actually have exactly the 10 out of 10 counties... That I need. <laughs> How does this keep falling into my own... Um, just not even paying attention. Just, oops, I have exactly the correct amount of counties that I need for this. <laughs> Suck you mania. Why did it... Out of all the comments I can read in chat in any given stream, that's one of them. <laughs> Combine the two together as one. <laughs> Even Kyrotobi can't stop omega lolling between telling everyone to calm down. It's like when you're, you're not that I would know anything about this because it's Midas and he's good. It's like when you're kid's child swears and you start laughing, you're like, oh, oh, yeah, no, don't say that. I'm laughing and encouraging your behavior, but don't do that anymore, okay? It was hilarious. That's what that reminds me of. So, what I was going to think was, how do we get the rest of it? I think we just keep taking it from Kipchok. It's pretty much them and just Zungaria, who we now have obviously a truce with, both of these guys. We got a, a couple truces, yeah. For just five more years. Okay, that's a great plan. We move, we'll move the capital down. We'll create the kingdom. That'll be our new primary title. Um, the kingdom of Sukberia is still good, but that'll probably pass to a different child. Um, or not. It's possible that we have just enough king titles that the new, both Sukberia and Cumania will go to our firstborn heir. It's possible because um, each of them is already getting a king title, so who gets the extra? It's like one king, one king, one king, one king. The second king should go to the firstborn, but maybe not. 
Uh, I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Only one way to find out. Exactly like that QT, all caps, etc. We're gonna get grounded. This is really good, though. Like, I know we're just sprawling out, and uh, that's gonna come to a close. We're, we're gonna have to consolidate and get control. And if we can do that, we're gonna be unstoppable in terms of military. We just gotta keep everybody happy. I think on... On Brozor's death is where things are going to get really messy. Because it's really going to come down to... All these new vassals that he's created... Will Mergrin be able to kind of... Bring them under... And keep them under the same umbrella? I don't know. Because he doesn't have a... He doesn't have a ton going for him. He's got okay... Stats. But he's 25 and hasn't really improved very much. And that's what worries me. Good steward, at least. All right, so we got seven out of six. What's What was my son's stewardship? I have a 10. He, he has an 11. And then she has a 16, which is better than my spouse. So they might be able to hold on to seven. So I might just hold on to all my holdings right now. Mergren might be a decent transitional ruler. I hope so, because that's really what we're going to have to do. All right, before we do all that, before we make a mess and move the capital and take care of our issues and make some new decisions, uh, I need to I need to just go get a drink, go get a bit of water, and uh, I guess a little something to chew on, and then Sakberia will continue. We'll take a look at the rest of the map and see how religions are doing, cultures, government types, and kind of get a lay of the land, because we've really been very narrow focused for the last couple hours on this particular spot, okay? So Sakberia will be right back. Thanks everybody for hanging out tonight and watching as this develops been super fun. We're going to keep the ball rolling for a while yet to come. Still much to do and a new king to rise. Be right back.
Welcome back to the Empire of Sakmiria. secret Hmm Yo, I guess. Whatever. Thanks for waiting. I got an unconventional and probably not wise snack, <laughs> but I just really wanted some, so I'm just gonna make it work. That's right, hummus baby. So it's gonna be a little crunchy, so I might just mute, because I don't have any bread. I just have chips. And when you eat chips into a microphone, it makes ASMR noises. So, probably not great. <laughs> Syntax, you like hummus? This is what I'm sub for. Food <laughs> ASMR. Baited. I can hear it through the mute. I don't think you can. But hey, everybody. Garlic hummus? Yeah, I dig. It's pretty good. I don't think I've had this one. Roasted garlic and chives. This is probably the best one yet, actually. I do gotta eat, dude. Been here for six hours. All I had today for break for lunch. <laughs> breakfast was a sad turkey sandwich with mayo and shredded lettuce. That's it. That's all the food, plus whatever I eat on stream. All right, so. Oops. What are we doing? We're gonna make a kingdom, I think. I'm 61. I got some time, dude. 
Cordal made it to 68. We're approaching, uh, we've already surpassed Uchva. Nobody's died younger than Uchva yet. Which is why this is such a, a insane line of kings compared to when I played Crusader Kings 2. Cause CK2, we were having people dying all over the place. Maybe when there's more DLC, um, there will be more ways to die. Cause right now it seems like I have to, I'd have to do something to try to die, uh, before 50. But we'll see. I, I might eat those words soon. Okay, the Kingdom of Cumania. This is what we were about to create, if I recall. I really just don't need the prestige. But there it is anyway. Alright, I'm really curious to see how that changed. Okay, I created a title. Dude, High King Brozor has done... I'm telling you, every other king, it feels like, has done more for the kingdom than the last, even though it's definitely not the case. See, this is what I was worried about. All right, well, I just screwed the whole thing. <laughs> um, that's, but not yet. I gotta move the capital. I knew that was gonna happen. See if I just did, but I, okay, I'm very confused because when I didn't create the title, it was all going to my heir, but when I did create the title, it now is going to my second board. But the game is supposed to only, um, I don't know. I have no idea. Whatever. The point is, I'm going to move my capital down here anyways. So let's, let's focus on that first. I think the spot where there is a duchy building is better. Hey, what's up, Ace Tech? I was gone for a while. The kingdom of what? Cumania, dude. Kingdom of Cumania. King of Cumania. King of Eugra. King of Permia. King of Sabir. King of Sukberia. Who did I start as? I started as... Tartus. Uchva. Hey, thanks, Gamer Deathbot. I've already got it covered. Thank you, though. You're late. Because we started as Tartus, and we've advanced to here. Most recently, we reintegrated Yugra into the society. And we went to a once-in-a-lifetime invasion of Ob and took all of Ob plus extra on the side. That's what we did last... We did that last stream, and we did Yugra reintegration this stream. And we've been taking some counties to try and get the full duchy of Kazakh, which we just did. And now, I'm gonna move the capital to, I think, Astana. I don't know if that's actually better than the one that has more holding spots that I can't use, so I'm, I'm gonna say it probably is. Let's, let's go with Astana, that, that's in my gut. Right on the border, if you wanna come get it, come get it, okay? It's currently Tengri Faith, which is why we need to go and rebalance some court stuff yet. Um, we're already converting Faith. I assume that progress is not immediately lost. Where are you? Oh, you're in Apasar. Okay, Apasar is part of this anyway, so that's fine. We'll let 50 days happen here, then we'll promote the culture in Astana and try to start tweaking that over. Real life Kazakh capital. Yeah. And now it's going to be the capital of Sukberia. While it is Sukberia, anyway. Okay. Only 15 months left on control. Alright, these are all getting close to done. This is a dangerous place to move capital to before you have control, but I'm scared I'm gonna die. We do get a year. We get a year notice. Let's just unpause. I'm supposed to get told one year before I die. <clears throat> oh, I just, uh, I just saved. Well, let's save again. So it'll be suck, Stan. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no! Oh no! He's dead! I, Chieftain Plorgod, died from complications arising from flagellation. Well, I, I guess I would do that too if, um, I was the king of Yugra and then lost it. Reduced from a king to just a duke in three counties, and I didn't even do it. First time watcher, what you land you own, what you plan, and stick around and find out. Or not. Alright. Well, rip floor god. Deceitful humble shy. Forty stress. Alliance invalidated. And then out of my siblings, only four remain. Merzillo, my half sister, looks very pissed. Has one surviving child, my nephew and vassal, so at least he got some land. High Chief Dis Noctilon of Mordvinia, who was a queen and is no longer a queen, even though she has a claim. No, I guess she doesn't. Um, why'd they lose their crown? I think they're having some issues. Oh, it's King Ofte now. Yeah, Denoptalon was a queen, I thought. But my sister-in-law is queen of Mordvinia, and they won't take vassalage for a while. Okay. Uh, and then, of course... Clop Todd, who's 48, my younger brother. Dude, Zazzy's not looking so good. She looks very confident, though, considering she has, um... Well, chat, let's just, um... Take a second and really soak this in, if you, if you will oblige. Because we're talking... We're talking bubonic plague... Bubonic Plague, a reclusive lunatic, reclusive and lunatic. Uh, behind me is Great Pox, home, or ugly, not even homely. <laughs> Straight up ugly, Great Pox, Bubonic Plague, reclusive lunatic. Wow, that's, uh, that's impressive. <laughs> For somebody named Zazzy. <laughs> and then High Chief Kloptod, who's doing all right as my steward. Yeah, these guys are doing pretty good. Okay. Anyway, rip my baby brother. Very sad. High Chieftain Kloptod finished the promote culture task. He did it for our brother. With Ostiak's settlement and the installation of a new administration, the people of Takei have fully embraced Ostiak traditions. Great work, Kloptod. Marry her to some king you hate? <laughs> That's pretty funny. There's probably... The thing about Crusader Kings 3 is there's rarely any single rulers. They always get remarried really fast. From what I've seen. I had a lot of single rulers in the Byzantine Empire. Which are now, like, very dispersed. In my last CK2 playthrough. I guess you could do character finder. Probably find them. Abbasids were doing better. They're not doing that great now. I did say I was going to look back at the world, so let's do that. Abbasids have split up. Nubia still looks pretty strong. 
Molly. Looking a little weaker, but still doing good. Uh, Northwestern Africa is fighting amongst themselves. Umiyads are trying to reestablish Hispania, but Alba it says, uh, no, no, no. Me now. I want to rule Britannia and Scandinavia and West France. Behold, High King Robertak Mac Natsluag. I have... <laughs> I have no idea how to say that. Uh, but they made the Empire of Alba based on the High King title. So, uh, interesting. Interesting. He's only got two traits as well. Which is very, very odd. King Chad, whole of body. He's a herbalist with a medium disease boost. An athletic guy. A scholar. Wow. This sounds like he has a, maybe an Instagram I could follow somewhere. Confider. I've never seen that one. In sharing his problems with a close confidant, Robertak has become able to manage life far better than he could alone. A pilgrim. So holy man. Unyielding defender. Astute intellectual. And... 44 super genius learning. Behold, the King of Alba. The King of Alba has just gifted 10 gifts up to this community. <laughs> there they are. My new subjects. Is that the High King's theme song? It must be, yes. Big Pog. This guy's got 20,000 troops. 4,700 piety. Got about as much money and prestige as I do. He would make a worthy opponent. And also 76. Yeah. I mean, I think this is worth... Just a nice little screenshot to kind of show future progress, maybe. If you notice, he's even got a piece <laughs> of Sardinia. <laughs> Not content, dude. They must be boating all over the world. Oh, my. <laughs> I gotta take a screenshot of that. Alba may be changing soon. It may well, yes. Smile for fun, just... Shooting money into chat? Thanks, dude. Much appreciated. For another uh, $20 in bits and a big 10 sub gift bomb to the community. Enjoy. I think there's like nine of... No, eight of you are brand new. Well, welcome, Snappy Koi, Phony Phantom, Grook, M. Patsakaz, Esoteris, KG Moose, Oxbox, and AC Murray. And then Orbital Mechanics back for a fourth month, and Pizza Box is here for 11. Howdy. And thanks again. Dude, Italia's got a really nice crown. I like that. Byzantines want their former glory back. Bulgaria wants its former glory back. Bavaria used to be Italia. Now Italia's big and has got a chunk of Denmark and a chunk of Norway as well. Hungary and Ruthenia are mobilizing. Byzantines are all the way out here. India is still thinking about who they want to be the ruler. It's going to take a while to settle that. Tibet and other bits of China. Also, I see Kyrgyz Komai. Different Kyrgyz. Huh. Then that used to be Kyrgyz Khan territory down there. Yeah, that's uh, Gyalpo Kozel. Grandfather APAC, or parent APAC. Yeah, APAC was the guy, I thought. I have no idea, dude. Who? 
Ooh, a lot of craziness going on. All right, religious overview. Let's take a look. Uh, Cathar is still hanging on. Insular is on the way from Britannia. Catholic has made it onto uh, Scandinavia in force, moving up through Denmark. Sumanusko's holding on tight. Really uh, kicking Germanic. Um, isn't that, isn't this, is this Germanic? What is this? Unreformed Norse. Which one's, uh, which one's Germanic, chat? There's a Slavic faith. I think this is Germanic, right? Okay. Anyway, Sumanusko looks like it's holding strong, and we're definitely helping there. I think Feudal is sprawling out. Clan is kind of diminishing. Feudal's getting much, much, much larger. Well, good to see how everybody's faring. We want to promote culture in Astana, which will take three years. I'm going to keep pursuing domestic affairs. Let's go ahead and unpause and check some issues. Take Concubine. Gregarious Raffle Paranoid. Who who even are you guys? Adulterer, child of concubine, zero diplomacy skill. We can do better. Let's just ransom the prisoners. And that's another 60 gold. Your children lack guardians. Oh, that's true. My child, I will find the best tutors across the realm. Who is the best? Chieftain Hines the Foolish of Palniki. Oh, that's Hercules. His education is probably in Marshall. Really not going to have that good of an effect on us. What if we sort by diplomacy? I am like, I really am the best. <laughs> Uperga is a diplomat with 23 diplomacy and only a one star appeaser. Dude, High Chieftain Zarni is not happy with us, understandably. I exposed his secret. Why don't we teach one daughter to be a good steward? Temperate and compassionate Chieftain Ipal looks good to me. All right, I choose you. How do I find him again? I don't even think I can find him again. I would have to right click him, then off reward. There we go. I mean, I could just send Jacep to go over there. That'd be good. This dude's, you know, pretty strong. He's not super military-minded, but he's got decent steward, good stewardship and decent diplomacy as well. And a three-star education. Okay. Then... God, this is kind of difficult. Okay, character finder. Let's sort by... Intrigue. Temperate, sadistic, deceitful, chaste, shy, deceitful, elusive shadow, and schemer. All right, let's pick uh, Ujutka. 54. And offer a ward in... Using debt. Teach them your ways. Okay, 50 gold for the one ransom. We're gonna get like three different things. Jacep became this dude's ward. And High Chieftain Verpon gained. Oh, you're High Chieftain Verpon. Uh, were you named for your grandfather? 
Nur, it's beautiful. Somebody died in my dungeons, but I don't even know who it is. All right, succession wise, I'm not gonna move the capital till I know I'm gonna die. What are you guys talking about? Would there be a chance you could speak to lots of different countries and then just your troops through them and attack own on not send your troops through them and attack own other place on the other side of the map? You can declare war on whoever you want. You just have to be able to get there, which requires supply lines, um, management of troop supplies and like boats potentially. Oh. Uh, what? Somebody just murdered a six-year-old. In my jail. No boats in Crusader Kings 3? Yeah, there are. You just pay a fee and your troops get in boats and can cross water. I don't know why anyone would kill him. He didn't have anything. Alright, are we still swaying that one vassal who's never going to get above zero? I think so. Conversation over cake. <laughs> My entourage and I are strolling back from a short foray into Tartus when we unexpectedly run across my vassal, Count Borbak Guren and his retinue, skulking around my capital on unannounced business. Caught by surprise, a few moments of uncomfortable silence passed before Borbak Guren's eyes settle on something behind me. Oh, my liege, perhaps you would join me in forgetting this over some premium teas and hushish suffused cakes? You are gregarious and have other places to be. I could take a cake or two. You will grow closer to forming a friendship with my vassal and champion. Gain cosmic insights for 10 years. And a long night of hashish consumption has truly given this character insight into the nature of reality. Count Borbagiran gains 30 opinion of you. We shall make a decent knight of a 64% chance you get a hook on him, and he gains 40 opinion of you, or 36% he manipulates you. Okay, I'll take a cake or two. <sighs> My niece was captured. I don't know why. All right, this duchess is not, she's at uh, plus 74 sway. So we're gonna stop swaying and look again at our vassals. Like you, High Chief Desati, evil atheist in Vogu Vogulia. Wants a seat on the council. Okay, well, sorry, but that's filled. Let's just sway you. That'll be more beneficial. What? I'm trying to eat. Oh, a feast! Chieftain Lametti wants me to come to a feast. It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> Every guest is gathered in the great hall, and our gracious host, Lametti, welcomes us to the feast. Feast. It reminds us what is good in life. The company is not too bad either. At least those seated close to me seem to think so. 
You are something special, Brozo, Cappy tells me. Chief to Sniv and Chief to Lamenti nod in agreement. Well, you are throwing the feast. You guys already think I'm pretty cool. I just do what feels right. <laughs> I just do what feels right. The feast is dwindling down, and I find myself deep in conversation with my honorable acquaintance, Cappy. She inquires about my opinion on the rumors at court, a subject she is deeply interested in herself. It is a subject that fascinates me as well. Alright, when you start making friends with the rest of our vassals, that actually drained my stress. No, I'm not giving her any vassals because I'm going to die. So I don't want to waste a 50-year buff on this king anymore. No, I don't do your back seat. Feast exposed affair. A loud crash resounds through the great hall as one of the doors to the service quarters break. In a barely clothed tumble, my acquaintance chief is Niv and my spill and my... What? Who? To imagine that Chief Desniv and <clears throat> had an affair. The Invisible Man. Huh. Well, we'll never know, I guess. What a feast! I remember the days spent in Chieftain Lemetti's halls for a long time to come. Now it's time to wash off the traces of merriment and wine and once more resume my duties as Lord of the Realm. Farewell, my vassal. Thank you for, oh, wow, 77 more stress. A gregarious reveler is basically like a stress machine. In fact, I have never even come close to stress level 2 yet. My spy master comes with grave news. We do not yet know who, but someone is plotting to kill my son, not Piotr. I wonder if it's my older son. <laughs> also interesting that you can see that schemes exist. I think theoretically, if you know the scheme exists, you can maybe send them to, send to find secrets on people you think would be responsible. With his coming of age, my son Brozor's tuition is at an end. With an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette and understanding of all kinds of entertainment, you will have little trouble navigating a life at court. Oh, dude, my robust, self-named Brozor just became a charismatic negotiator better than his dear old dad. He is content, diligent, but impatient. He has one flaw. Count Arislan converted to Asiak. That's awesome as well. Well, High Chief Tanashmar gained 15 opinion of Jebeg. He appreciates the effort. What? Did I do that? Okay, uh, well. We're almost done taking control of Decay. Get it to 100, then I'm gonna go for Astana, and then that's gonna be the new capital once that's done, basically. We might need to do it sooner because of the succession issue. But I should get a warning because I know myself. If a natural death is one year away, as long as I don't get assassinated, then it should be fine. Yeah, I've got some powerful... Vassals that need to be appeased, kill him. Okay, he's dead, sir. You no longer need to appease him. Thank you. Dude, my special forces, they, they're listening to every word I say and ready to act at a moment's notice. Excuse me, sir. Is he bothering you? Yeah, he really doesn't like me. Uh, he's dead. Okay, you didn't have to say it like that. Were you just really excited?
All right, Brozor, we were just talking about you. Chat, do you want an alliance with Estonia? Because that seems kind of neat, right? Fellow Suomenescos. Evanito, did you just write yes because everyone else did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it seems like a pretty good match. I'm just reading her name. I was, I was looking at, like, these... How do you do these characters? What does this even sound like? Oh yeah, I've got robust inheritable trait. I like that it outlines it. I get 400 prestige, they get a thousand. Are you not the relative? I guess you're the firstborn. Okay. They have 10,000 troops, still a fantastic alliance. They're definitely gonna call us into war from a long time away. Yeah, a thousand prestige out of thin air. Speaking of, we got a ton of prestige. Greetings, High King Brozor of Sukberia. I gladly accept your proposal. Your son, Brozor, will be betrothed to my half-sister. Oh. Actually, I don't know how long that's going to last for, because his daughter is, like, five. But it would take too long. I mean, we could... Pro we could just have, like, a super solid... Estonia. Oh, she's beautiful as well. He I forgot that, uh, Jacep was a twin. Well, let's just link this together. Just in case him dying makes his half-sister not, you know, keep an alliance with us or keep relationship. We got 2,000 legacy points. I'm going for control growth 0.2 per month. Faithful magistrates on the law and administration tier. Doesn't sound like much, but it's going to help a lot. Because my... We just took so much land that has zero control, like, a year or two ago. And, um... It's just gonna be so nice to have that ticking in the background. I bet I could click on, like, a random spot here. One control. Ten control. Ten control. One control. And now, they've all at least, instead of point one, we literally just increased to 300% of what that speed was across the board. So they're all going to get controlled three times faster. I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. Your son, Jacep, will be betrothed to my cousin. Wait, who's... Oh, yeah. I actually forgot how far over Suckberia was. <laughs> hey, the increased control task is done. Okay. So the the goal there... What? Join Russian... Slavianskan Uprising? As a defender. Um... What do you guys want? By the way, chat, when did Vladimir convert to Sue Minusco, dude? This looks neat. Is this game easier to learn and play than EU4? If you already know how to play EU4, then you're already at the top of your game. But yes. It is. Is the short answer to your question. Well, I think I'm going to help him because defensive wars have some pretty big perks, including relationship buffs, even though we're both old men. The Russian Slo Slavi Slaviansken? Slaviansken? I don't know, dude. 
Uh, who are you guys defending against? I need a rally point so I can get some troops coming over here. I'm just looking to see if there's one. And we'll move it all the way to the edge. And then I'm just going to raise local army only, which is just my special forces elite regiment troops and knights. And then, like chat taught me earlier, I'm going to control... Where's the enemy? What? You brought me into a war for this? How... <laughs> Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm going to control right click. You go to it. Like, I don't want to do it. That, that's on the other side of the house, honey. I'm, I'm comfortable. The dog's here. <laughs> hey, Dad, do you guys have any family where the, the dog sitting in your lap is the ultimate excuse to make everyone else do something for you? Have you ever experienced that? Oh, I've got the dog. Like, can you give me uh, some popcorn? All right. Well, I'm going, okay? I'm going, honey. I'm on the way. And the, what I was going to say was, if we succeed, which we will... Who? You, didn't you just call me into a war? Oh, you hooked me on... Okay, he, you know what? He just did the classic, like, are you doing anything later? And I was like, uh... I'm doing a little... I'm doing a little bit. He's like, you want to help me fight the peasant rebellion? I'm like, I guess. I got enough time for that. Oh, you have time now. Interesting. Well, do you want to help me subjugate uh, another empire? That'd be pretty cool, since, since you're not busy now. He just invited me to war. This one's to... Subjugate who? Wait, are you the defender in that as well? Oh, he's the defender in that as well. Okay, well, I feel better about that. Where'd the invitation go? Uh, did I decline? I don't know what I'm doing. What just happened? It says I'm already in this war. Offer to join war. Oh, I didn't click on the correct one. Okay, sorry. Because this one looked like it wasn't highlighted because it's already grayed out. So I didn't... I thought I just assumed this one was automatically selected. Okay. Uh, if you join this war, he becomes your friend automatically. All right, chat. What I was going to tell you to do was just help an ally on defense. Because if you do, they get a really big bonus for helping them in the war. But now I'm seeing that if you offer to join a war, you automatically get a friend, which is better than just getting the plus relationship. So you should... I guess, tell them no, decline, then offer to join for free, and you get a friend out of it? Or is maybe this is circumstantial because he already likes me? I don't know. But it seems like you get more benefit if you just tell them no and then come back. Maybe just um, anytime you accept, if you win on defense, you become friends. Friendship metagaming. Yeah, that's some uh, subterfuge. Don't trust friends that were trying to max their friend points. To make my vassal high chief Desati more susceptible to my attempts at approaching her, I can include a compliment in my next missive to her court. I will be sure to mention her uh, clear rationale. Callous, wrathful, cynical. I uh, just keep it professional. So who's in the subjugation war? Who's the attacker, I mean? Oh, it's that? You guys are gonna get subjugated by two counties? <laughs> really? They, they have 2,000 troops. How many of you guys do you have? You guys really need to be my vassal, you know? Are you guys getting sieged? What siege did I just accidentally click on? Oh, there is a siege here. A <laughs> they're getting sieged by a third party. I don't know what's going on here. 
My spy master has come to me with a discovery. He is certain my vassal, Duchess Sisek, is scheming against my son, not Pyotr. You know what? I believe that literally 100%. I get to throw a terrible vassal into jail for free with no tyranny? It seems like. I have a fair reason? No one will think me a tyrant. Wow, what a windfall this is. She's tingry, different culture, absolutely disobedient, and now found out to be part of a plot against my son. Well, well, well. Up there in Obel. Oh, this is throwing her in prison was pr was punishment. This is now an act of tyranny, which would be a little tough to pull out of. But I can move her to the dungeon. But I am supposed to be forgiving. Renounce your claims and oh, will not convert. All right, just stay in house arrest for a while. Can you kill her? I mean, you can do anything you put your mind to. But that doesn't mean that the people will like it. Okay, so we got a, a few factions. <laughs> oh, this is gonna get worse. High Chief Desati has been swayed and is at a plus 25. All right, let's keep going. We can make it to one. Maybe we might make it to 120 tonight. We'll see. Another independence faction has to, wait, where's the independence faction? Peasants, peasants, peasants. Looks like uh, this is the only one that has actual people to install Chieftain Kiche on the Permian throne. We're getting from you, which I, I as the person I'm swaying right now. You are a faction member, so I'm swaying the first faction member, and you kind of like me too. But for now, it should be fine. Peasants. While hosting lords and ladies from realms near and far, some opportunities to portray my vassal High Chief Desati in a good light have presented themselves. My lord, pray tell, who is the most stately person you have heard of? I mean, definitely not you. Are you kidding? Two diplomacy? Well, me, of course. <laughs> I actually am. <laughs> The most stately person I can think of. While spending some time with her, my friend High Chieftain Jebeg discovered that High Chief Desati and I have a tense relationship. Jebeg did not let that stand, however, and somehow convinced that Sati that I am not as bad as she thinks. Wow. What a good friend. Thank you. It's a good opinion buff. Yo, what's up, Agaris? Me, you scrub. Missed one stream, WTF happened. You can't miss a stream, King Ashcheek. The second of the Empire of Sugberia. Okay, because if you miss one stream, you missed, like, huge chunk of gameplay. We actually did do a lot last stream. That is true. All right, as much as I want medium health boost from healthy, I just, it's so far away. Stress gain down, time between mental breaks kind of useless. So if I went for something like good, then I'd probably just take cultural fascination, 35% up for the rest of my life, uh, which ain't gonna be that much, but maybe this helps. Or, you know, get greedy and go for the health boost and see how long you can stay alive. All right, get greedy, go for the health boost and see how long you can stay alive. That one wins. A new Noidi endorses you with only 14 learning. We can do better. Cannot be reassigned until 1017. See? This is what I was talking about before. You have to wait 10 years to fire this guy because he just got here. How come last time I tried this I could fire him? I don't know. 
Maybe the other guy was there for 10 years. I don't remember. All right, we need control in Astana. It's gonna take five years for that. Thank you, Marshal High Chieftain Ashmar. We're breaking up schemes, converting culture, internal affair, domestic affairs, and converting faith. All these are good. But maybe... Managed domain would be a plus three stewardship. It's not enough to do anything. Victory! We won the war! <laughs> I didn't even see what happened. Um, cool. What? Hold on. King Shindye of Vladimir. Yeah, this is fine. Did I? I didn't do anything, though, did I? War contributions, zero. Where's my troops? I didn't even- I couldn't even get there fast enough, dude. Alright, where's the other hostile guys? <laughs> He's right here. Now I gotta go the other way, though. We're also running out of supplies this way. We were marching! It's weird, it seems like when they die and get replaced by the clergy, it has a 10-year countdown, but you can fire them several times in a row. That does seem to be the case. I kind of just wish... ...that you could only fire them... Uh, like, I like the 10 years thing, but have, like, a decision that you can s spend piety on. Like in CK2, you know? That'd be a good other piety spend for some of my characters. Are you going to go feudal? What do you think, Packle Man? Do you think I'm going to play tribal for 450 more years in the game? And cap out all of my buildings at tier 2 and never research culture again? What do you think, Packle Man? I don't know. I could probably win that way, though. All I would need... I mean, the onagers probably don't do fantastic against actual medieval walls, but they could probably still work, if slowly. Norfingale! Charming, generous, and arrogant. My son's actually just pretty smart, and uh, we could do a lot of... She's got the four-star Midas touched stewardship. Alba is gone. <laughs> Alba is gone. Because now... Britannia has been formed. With, uh... Sorry, the French? Yeah, of course. Uh, French... Alba Brit Britannia. Right? Is that how history went? Yes, I know Alba is Britannia, but I'm glad you know too, Frenzy Apparite. I was worried for a second. That's what we're talking about. Normans were French of Norse extraction, so kind of. Thank My you guys. liege, <laughs> a new subject has arrived in your court. <laughs> Throw them to the pit! Um. Yeah, did you miss the part where they're also... All Norse now, I guess? Male... I... I... Technically not. So this is... This is the timeline... In which... Norse Sweden... Invaded the Br Britannia... And... Also West France. Yeah. Okay. And won. Right? They became tribal. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> there is some tribal in there. 
for sure. But there's some feudal in there for sure. Well, n interesting nonetheless. Even though, hilariously, they only have 2,000 troops. So, don't uh, know how to explain that. I feel like they're not going to last very long. Estonia just attacked me, or er, Estonia just invited me to a war. For reference, eh. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm coming, Estonia, I guess. She died. That was, isn't that the person that I imprisoned at the end of her life? She died in captivity. She's dead, yes. Who's my new um, vassal by her? Who, who inherited it, actually? I have no idea. She doesn't have any children. Alright, did we... Where's, where's my army? Hey, we're almost there. We're gonna counter siege. And then we're gonna gather some resources because we're in friendly territory. Down to 40. Not really losing any. This territory can support 3,100, which is nice. Uh, allies are... Dudes, come on! I'm already here. Join Muscovite conquest of the chiefdom of Nizini as defender. Who, how are these people continuing to attack you? While I am your ally, does the AI prioritize allies at all? In terms of fear of declaring war? I guess um, their actual, you know, ally armies are getting spanked right now, though. I forgot I was paused. My bad. What? How many wars do you win? Chargoth, that's exactly what's going on, dude. This is a totally different place. I'm in four wars now with this guy. Why don't you why don't you just be my vassal and then no one will declare war on you? Huh? Have you thought about that? Literally the only reason they're doing this is because you won't be my vassal. Uh, but, hey, can you help me take over Europe? I need some help. There. I helped. Now, we need to stay here and build up supplies. Plus 20 a month. We won the siege. Kubasar died from his wounds. Probably fought him in the last war. I'm in four wars and none of them are even scary. One of you needs to accept immediately. All right, what was I gonna do? Oh, just pay attention and see if you get a notification when I'm gonna die. If I die without moving the capital, it's gonna be really, really sad. We are working like hard on converting this as fast as possible. We're getting 1.5 control a month, which is nice. Ooh, your glory is widely known. My vassal high chieftain Dondi has been wounded and the injury runs deep. Here, you drop this king. Oh, 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 oh is that is that my reward everyone. for glory? Huh. I'm a living legend. The living legend is the sixth and highest possible level of fame. No other king in our lineage has ever achieved such glory before.
My boy is severely injured. Seducer, famous reveler, holy warrior, just, generous, cynical. There is nothing that can be done. I feel death lingering by his bedside. That is the grandson of Burpon. You guys may remember. Thank you, Majestic Bacon, for the second month of sub. How you doing tonight? Thank you, Bab Zero, for the tier one as well. Ooh, faction disbanded. All right, all the factions are, well, except for the peasant factions, doing good. But thanks again to both of you. As I step over the threshold to my court physician, Gol Sisek's office, I find her bent over book. This translation of chat, uh, in American, that is, hippo crates, is atrocious. She says with a sigh, if I were to follow these instructions, I am as likely to cure my patient as I am to kill them outright. Hippocrates. Hippocrates, please. Let me have a look. 70% chance she gets smarter. Uh, make her a full-fledged physician for 70 gold. That one. Have we seen any Goblinas or Gremlinas around? Not yet, no. I haven't seen any. Alright, I gotta put this hummus up or I'm gonna eat it all, dude. That was really fast. Asana has fully become Ostiak already, which is really good when we're getting ready to um move the capital there. Because it'd be super weird to move the capital to a place where the people don't consider themselves Ostiak, you know? So we need to do this one. And I think that's the last one. And then it's just a matter of faith. Do it, eat. All of it. This is only three years? Okay. Yeah. Let's start uniting all these. And that's also going to bring more order, I think, and more popular opinion. Because, like, Fervor and Suminisco is hostile. See, as the offensive war ticks down, and we're going to get the minus 10 from Culture Group off, but it's really all about the faith. And that's the ones that take the longest to convert. I, another person died in my dungeons of malnourishment. Fortified tribal holding has just been built down here. So we had tier 2 holding in Astana. Tier 2 holding in... Shh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Atpasar... You're a tribal tier two holding, and Takei is also a tier two. Okay, I think we can upgrade the economic buildings. Is it already? Well, this one's already. Wow. Okay. This is a trading outpost that we're going to upgrade. We're just more taxes paid. And this is a market village that's already upgraded as well. Okay, so looks like these these guys already took care of it. The AI upgraded tons of these. I suppose what I could do is look around to counties that are not mine and help them, you know? Like, this one has nothing. Oh, it's also feudal. What am I supposed to do? Uh, do I actually gain benefit from these? I would think so. So what would I even start with? Probably... Is there even one that has control? I don't think there is. I see taxes. Defender advantage in taxes. Levies, levies, and then bonus damages. I don't... I don't know how I feel about any of these. Because I really just want to help build control. 
with maybe like log forts? I guess, okay, yeah, it's the whole, it is the whole realm, so I guess we could stack military camps. That might be a good idea. But I don't think it helps me though, garlic salt. Right? Because it's not my realm. The realm, it, it's in my realm, but it's not my realm. So if this is Pelham, what, I don't think it goes, no, it's my realm. Okay, let me put it like this. We're in the realm view, right? But this is also the realm view. I'm pretty sure that the military bonuses should only, will only apply downwards from you, not upwards. Let's put it like that. It's so like if the emperor has his realm buffed, then it would go down to the dukes and the counts and bonus them as well, because he they're they're part of his realm. But I'm not part of that guy's realm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm his liege. His how does his building go up to help? It should only go down. Because think about it, right? Like, let's say that each one of those buildings is a plus two to archer damage. How many counties do I control? <laughs> you know? Like, overall, how many counties are in the whole realm? Let's see. Uh, Empire title. I don't even know. There's a way to find that stat, but I'd be able to stack my damage with, like, 70 buildings for 70 counties. You know what I mean? And get a bonus to 140 damage. That would be out of control. That, that'd be, like, six archers for the price of one. I don't think you can do that. Unless maybe you can. I just don't... It doesn't make sense if you could. How many of you guys even tried to understand what I was just saying? None of you! F2 above tribal rules area is number. Well... Oh. On realm screen? Ooh, we have 102. See, so yeah, I could get uh, 204 bonus archer damage. <laughs> hmm, what would uh, High Chief DeSanti like to hear about? The ruling of a realm. I tried and failed. Alright, look. Never mind. You don't have to look at anything. Just take the last thing I said. If you could buff your archers in every single county in your whole realm, and you have over a hundred realm or counties, you'd be able to build a hundred buff buildings, and you would never be able to be defeated because you'd have archers that could literally solo any army in the game. So it just doesn't make any sense. But the reason I think that... Alright, you want some art here. It's going to be a bright white screen. Put on your sunglasses. Five, four, three, two, one. Boop. Look. Here's me, the king. Okay. And then we... Pretend like it's like a, a fountain of buffs. How do you do brush size? Okay, and then the water overflows. Like, the buff goes down to your next vassals. Okay, and they get the water, and then their vassals get the water, right? But let's say... Let's say that I, um... So this is when I build, like, a archer buff station. Whatever they're called. Okay? They're shooting little pew pew arrows. So, the problem is they're getting the buff, but if they build one, I'm, I'm like a tier above them. You know what I mean? The buffs can't flow upstream because how would their building, like, benefit me when they're, like, 
You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Taxes go up, buffs go down. Makes sense. <laughs> Pyramid archer scheme. <laughs> but like, they can't also build the buildings and I benefit from the ones that they built because the water isn't going back up that way. You get it? You see what I'm saying? I'm not part of their kingdom. They're part of my kingdom. So I don't get benefits from their buildings. They get benefits from my buildings. I think. That, I don't know. Maybe that's totally wrong. That's just what I assumed. It worked. You are a logistical genius. Chat, did you know I'm a logistical genius? All right, we, wait, what? You won? We won the lo war led by King Kahus of Estonia against Chieftain Kart. Oh, hey, good job. You guys won. I didn't even know you were winning, but you won. So good job. And I, it's because I didn't do anything, he's not my friend. High Chief Dasadi gains 25 opinion of you, and it's up to 67. Have you left the faction? I think you left the faction. So, I'm gonna try and make an Esto- Well, I don't need to make an Estonian friend. I need to make friends with some of my vassals. I think High Chief Dandi's gonna die soon. Who is my strongest vassal that's also the most pissed? Dandi kinda is, actually. We got a lot of pretty strong vassals. It's not in numerical order. Yeah, why do you have 4,000? Oh, he's got Tara and Sabir. All right, Dondi. Fine. I'll befriend you before you die. So you can have at least... Well, he's already got two friends. I'll be your third friend. How about that? Yeah, we weren't talking about money level, no. We were talking about uh, military forces and uh, regimental buffs. All right, it's almost 1,010. Your sister Zazie has eloped with your vassal, Osh. Oh, God. Zazie, what have you done? We've become athletic. You eloped with this guy. Ambitious, cynical, shy, and a seducer. Good for her! What do you mean, good for her? She's got, um... Wow, she got... Cured of bubonic plague. And still has health, great pox, I guess. But it last time we looked, also had bubonic plague and is a reclusive lunatic. <laughs> Good for her. What a catastrophe. And they got married. Wow. Your brother-in-law, rapacious atheist, and also vassal. In Sozva. Interpreting recent friendliness as a sign, High Chief Dandi has come to me with concern for one of my prisoners. It would please me greatly if you were to release my acquaintance, Captain Nuyat. Yeah, sure. Who else is in my prison? <laughs> Wait. Oh, that's the Duchess. Yeah, 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 yeah. From my own kingdom. Chat, what happened here? Did I never have that, or did I have that? Maybe that was always there? I don't remember. You learned that High Chieftain Cytex lover.
Wait, are you guys... This is the first time I've seen this. So, uh... He's got two counties. And she's got three different counties. And they're married. I have not seen actually a marriage where two different title holders came together. So that's kind of nifty. AI making plays to unite their houses and make a more powerful... Uh, realm. Kind of cool. But he's got a secret lover, though. Guess I'm gonna take that secret to my grave. And you are... One of my vassals. You are... You're Marshal of Chieftain Nepal, but not me. Okay. Politics. I need to spend this prestige. <laughs> uh, remember how we commissioned an epic? We're gonna commission another. Ah, oh, it's money though. I can also work off some stress, and I get sweaty stench. <laughs> Donate to charity. Search for a physician. I think our physicians actually turned out good. She became a, a real physician with 18 learning, so I'm down with that. Likewise, I need to maybe help. Before these guys group up. I don't even know who we're fighting right now. Alright, what was I going to do? Could invite claimants. That's 1,500 prestige. Chad said that that can be good. Like, really good. We've literally never done it before. Uh, the only problem is I don't have anybody I could really marry them to. Eh, that's not true. Do I have a vacant council position? I don't, nope, that's just... Uh, I had the screen up for what I wanted. Queen Kanshi of Sukbiria, my beloved soulmate to do. Mm, okay, let's uh, go ahead and commission the epic for money. It's worth it. We're getting 22 gold a month. He's already commissioned one epic in his life. Make it two, I guess. What I need is a classical tale of the grandeur of my family, a song of the origins of the Avran dynasty and how we are destined for greatness. I just need someone who knows how to tell it. I hope in the future one of the DLCs we get for flavor is the... I want I want the treasury back. I think it was really fun. Tuhan, a treacherous villain with 26 learning, a scholar, and a mastermind frog who is ill. Is he going to live long enough to write my epic? Unpredictable chance of an exceptional epic. I don't know. I just feel like this deceitful, sadistic guy who has got a severe heft penalty. I guess I'll just pay the big bucks and hope for the best. And then I'm going to invite some claimants. Okay, next part. My family epic seems to be progressing well, and some lines already sound like they will be quoted for decades to come, but Tuhan has a lot of questions about the focus of the story. It would be easier to answer if he wrote it all first. Then I could tell him what I dislike about it, but he insists he needs answers now. He should focus on me and my destiny! It is a family history, so be generous. I am High King Brozor. A bro might embellish a little bit, I think. Let's see if we can intercept any of these guys. Kind of just loosely following what's going on up here. This is all one event. He won't die in between. Oh, I've got... You're getting Jeff jail for that one, Jamie Jam. Mm -hmm. 
off to Jeff Jail. Neighboring ruler lost the war. All right, and here is... <laughs> I told you! Did he die? No, all right, hang on. With Tuhan no longer at my court, he left! He didn't die, he left. It is difficult for him to continue his work on my family epic. Dude, he took the money and ran! He didn't even finish half of it. I paid him extra. A premium surcharge. Where did he go? I paid, imagine not staying in someone's, in an emperor's court after they pay you 300 gold. Like what would you move for 300 gold for while you're also ill? Well, the regular bards are gonna do it. Oh, Shinye, if you were still with me, I know you would tell me to be strong. You will never be forgotten, my old friend. King Shindye, I was at war with like three people for you just now, and you just died of heart failure. You had a heart attack after all these wars. Now what? Ally joins the war, King Virye of Vladimir. Interesting. Did You're the one that just inherited? Alliance invalid, alliance expired. What? Hold on. Are you telling me... That even though I'm not allied to him, I'm still in all three of his wars? <laughs> uh... I surrender. <laughs> this is a very awful alliance. By anyone's standards. <laughs> your forces took your foe chieftain Ruslan hostage. Bro, I just automatically won one of this dude's wars for him by capturing the guy. We lost 28 men and killed 2,162. Scholars are already singing our praises. As our, uh, 28 champions slew hundreds of men. Metzenvartia got 400 kills. The rest of them, I think, were just executed. This is what happens when you take an elite fighting force across the world. It's basically my best warriors versus uh, their peasants and levies. So you better just accept this demand before the time passes, okay? There's only... they can get you out of one war right now. Do it! Maybe a little faster. Okay, but this ain't it. I mull over the last few lines my bards have provided me from my family epic, and as I start humming, I realize it follows the same rhythm as one of my tribesmen's favorite songs. If the story of my ancestors was set to such a memorable melody, it would surely never be forgotten. I am sure my bards can come up with something equally good. We can either compose a classic tune, an enjoyable tune, or 20% chance it's terrible. I got the big one. The renown bonus, the prestige bonus. There's our victory. Chad, I just gained um, 350 prestige from this war contribution. That's pretty sexy. It's a lot of prestige. It's the most prestige we've <laughs> ever had. Uh, who else are you at war with, though? And then... Who's this? He's at war with you? Are you getting declared on by a seven-year-old?
<laughs> Just kick him in the shins. Alright, well, they're on the way down. Betrothed can marry. Alright, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is my daughter, Plazalon, who has been waiting... ...for Shindye Meryavid to come of age. He's a courtier of King Virye. And I think, um... It's part of the reason we have the alliance in the first place. We actually get... Some prestige. Uh, we got the alliance back. We didn't have the alliance anymore, I forgot. After learning High Chieftain Donnie would be attending a dance, I decided it would be a perfect occasion to pass by to ensure I get some face-to-face -face time. The ball was exquisite, and High Chieftain Donnie put on a fine show. I told him how impressed I was, and we got to talking. By the time I left, it felt as though we had already known each other a lifetime. What a good day. You become friends with uh, what was one of your most powerful vassals. You look, this guy looks very chipper. <laughs> very excited to be here, King Chad. Alright, what is this war that he's losing the most? Do I need to go all the way down there or something? Maybe. The long walk, chat. My Chancellor High Chief Dissanava is listening to my family epic as it slowly comes together. A lot of it is not very plausible, such as the part with the Hermit's Guidance, she tells me. On the other hand, who is to say what the past was like? If you're already doing embellishments, why not take it as far as we can? It is important to tell a good story, after all. Indeed it is. Who said I had to be humble about it? I have no idea what's going on. I just like the sound of talks in the background. Auto correctile dysfunction. How much effort have you really given to it? Hmm? That's what I have to ask you, huh? How long have you been here on this stream right now? One minute? Sixty seconds? That's what I thought. Some of my scribes have been caught trying to sneak off from their duties to my family epic. Thankfully, a guard recognized them as they passed the gates. It is exhausting work, they explain. Day and night, my lord, we are desperate for a few days rest. Increased chance of producing an exceptional epic for 135 gold? That's an expensive break. Chain them to their work table. All right, the break is in order. <laughs> Snide trying to keep up with the family tree at this point? Yeah. A kind word. My paths happen to have crossed with Chieftess Yumina, and to my surprise, it seems as though she does not have a great impression of my friend Raider. I am King Brozor! <laughs> Listen, let me tell you a story about Raider. I tried to paint Raider in the best possible light, and Chieftess Yumina gradually started listening with greater interest. She muttered, I never knew that, to herself. I knew I'd made a good impression. <laughs> there, see, Raida? I got your back. Hey, everyone. What's up, Romantis? How's it going? My army is just going to slowly march all the way down here and try to help. Meanwhile, uh, we should invite the claimants. That scared me. I saw myself and I thought I died. This is the victory music! An excellent epic, my liege! My bards have completed my family epic, and what a glorious song they've composed! It has drama, moral quandaries, tin stools, everything my family has been forged... F everything my family has forged from... I don't know why I couldn't read that. Everything my family has been forged from is in there. Even the part with the hermit's guidance, seemingly over far-fetched, has become a touching moment outlining the destiny of my house. Maybe the greatest song ever written. You gain commissioned excellent family epic five prestige a month for ten years. Woo! 
That is significant. You got the money for it. That's two for two. Oh, I can invite champions as well. Another good way to spend some prestige right now. Is the army there yet? Howdy, Asha. Hello, Adanian. Doing pretty good, Romantis. Got the Empire of Sukberia. We got some new claimants arriving on the scene. Uh, I didn't even know I was unpaused. Concerned for my current war, my friend High Chieftain Jebek has paid out of his own treasury to aid me in my efforts. 75 money and losing stress so fast. New claimant, huh? With uh, unfortunately uh, named county or duchy. Hmm. I will go ahead and recruit you. Just to keep you around. Okay. Welcome aboard. We also have a champion. Who is an aspiring blade master, hunter, terrain expert, though crave oh craven and callous. Nah. We have enough champions. We don't need somebody with just 11 prowess. They're almost there. Baldava has a claim. Ooh, another... Okay, I'm not used to inviting these people. The Cargas Duchy and the Duchy of Car Cargasia. Why not? Why not just pay them to exist in court? I've got the money for it. A notable guest has arrived. Ooh. Problem is, these are people with claims to some places we already own. But I guess maybe that's useful eventually, because as I learned the other day, you can um, fabricate claims on your own people so like if I recruited him to court he joins right and then he has a claim to high chiefdom of Udmurtia how do I even press his claim See who currently holds it? I can't, like, declare war on my own vassals, so what do you do? How do you press someone's claim in your own kingdom? I don't know. Where's the army? It's going to try and help my ally. And I don't know why they're going over there. Dude, the Emperor's not looking rough, Blarg. The Emperor is athletic, August, he likes to drink, he killed a guy once. He's got fine health, okay? Fine health, I tell you. Your betrothed can marry your son, Brozor. We get 600 prestige from this alliance. We're marrying into uh, Estonia, right? Yeah. All right, we got an Estonia alliance. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. Your son, Brozor, and my sister, Own, will be joined in holy matrimony. I don't know how Squiggle O looks or sounds. I think it's claiming through counsel from your own vassal owning it. I don't even know. It is. If it is your claim, you can just revoke the title. Yeah, but it's not. I'm talking about in, inviting other court members. who have claims. Well, we might actually make it to medium health boost for healthy. Huh. Possible. Going whole of body, like full on health mode with medicine focus as well. Let's see if that makes any difference. I want to see if I can have the longest living uh, Suckberian leader. 
stubborn, lustful, ambitious. Eh. Come on over anyway. You guys winning? What are you? Is this not sieged? Why can't I uh, counter siege this? Being held by the enemy guy, right? I mean, it's been sieged. Who's there? I mean, he's the guy there. Oh, this is his ter- Okay, it's a defensive war. I gotcha. Never mind. Sorry. I'm not, um... My brain's not all there, apparently. Marketville- Ooh! That is gonna be our new capital. We just got some market villages in. We got a tier 2 tribal holding. And control's up to 70 now, so that feels pretty good. Working on converting culture and religion in our future capital duchy. We're going to make Kazakh. Which is part of Tartaria. Under Mongolia. Which we actually have a little bit of Mongolia now. Howdy Practica, what's up? Yeah, learning seems really cool. Uh, I've been enjoying trying all the different trees. You assist... Oh, why does a call to war screen appear over there? Uh... <laughs> are you joining as a defender? Man, I keep just... just <laughs> get vassalized, Vladimir! He did not eat... Yeah, like father, like son. I've already sieged this fort. I can't siege it any further. I took a prisoner. Yeah. What are you, five? And a gambler already with a life of crime and what? Is that an egg? Delicate. Your sister, Denoptalon, died. That's the one I was looking at. Died from her wounds? Oh, flagellant. Gotcha. Brave, honest, zealous. Rip the Noptalon, dude. I'm about to be the sole survivor. It's me, Merzillo. <gasps> she healed. She had the bubonic plague and the great pox. She's back to normal. Okay, well, I love how she looks just like, like, Zazzy totally looks like her parents. Here's mom. And then Quirtal dad. It's cool to see how that works. <laughs> Zazzy looks like the overseer from Fallout 1. Really. <laughs> oh, well, Denoptalon, we'll miss you. Alright, how can I help, um... See, as soon as I moved off, they counter-sieged. Oh, Dondi. We just made friends, and you're dead now. I know you would tell me to be strong. But I'm just so sad every single time. They're taking all of my friends and family. <sighs> Let's see who my strongest um, allies, our strongest rulers are. I chiefed as Sati. We could do Pasheka. You guys are fairly evenly split. But we did lose some levies. Alright, we're never gonna fix Duchess Pudyaka.
Uh, we could fix Zarni, even though we exposed him and he's maybe gonna die soon. <laughs> All right, let's try and befriend. Oh, I've got a hook on you? What's the hook? Excuse me? Chat, I have 107 hooks. I don't know why. Why? Your nephew. Oh, that explains it. All right, well, I'm gonna befriend you the normal way. And go with that, okay. Donda heeded my summons and arrived as my guest. Not too smart, but he knows how to swing a sword, even if you don't know which way to swing it. A little fickle in that sense. From all my evenings watching stars, I have seen with my own eyes what I have only heard of before. The stars move at different speeds and reverse their course at different times, but seemingly in large groups depending on which celestial sphere they belong to. Indeed, with the right calculations, one could even predict their movement. My Noidi does not approve, of course. Leave the skies be. The celestial realm is for the elders to know. I will find the answers. Gain learning, gain insight into the heavens for 10 years? Wow. You may go down a path of cynicism. I should focus on earthly matters. 25 learning experience, 250 piety, and an earthly focus for 10 years. All right, chat. Maybe it's time to try... Oh, I yeah. How, how hard is it going to be to reform my religion? Without the stat, I think it's 4,000. Let's, let's do that. You, I should focus on earthly matters. To the blathering High King Brozor, you have burdened... been... Uh, another peasant? <laughs> yep, another peasant. <laughs> A peasant's lot is to serve their lord. Again. You're pretty far from holy sites, said Blark, who was not aware that we have a holy site in Perm, inside of our own empire. Off to Jeff Jail. Dondi's now a member of your court. Hmm, Dondi, what's up? Your acquaintance, Ipal, died. Rip. Jacob's educator, Chieftain Ipal, died. And a new champion has arrived. Okay. Caught up. Good. You need three holy sites, though? Not to get a at least a holy order, though. To go full reform, I don't know. Holy order... Uh, actually, I need a barony, city, or castle, so I guess I do have to go feudal. Um, to reform, we need... Oh, you're right, you do need three Sumanusco holy sites. I only saw... I thought this was the whole cause, because I never moused over this. But I've also never had 4,100. It'd be cool. It'd be nice if it said it all. Like, here. Well, I really actually don't think I'm that far, though. Considering that we've come all the way out to here just today. And we also have a direct alliance with Estonia and might be able to get a succession play in there. Succession play in Estonia would be really fun, actually. Hmm. Because who? There is Jacep. Oh, I wonder what kind of inheritance does Estonia have? Confederate partition, male preference. So we go to your son. 
then your daughter, then your daughter, and then chief. Okay, so. Can they skip the daughter that I married? In succession? Because these two are betrothed? She's not even... Because she's a firstborn. But she's not on this list. Nor this list. Yes, I know what male preference means, but if you'll look here, there are two daughters that are present on the page after the firstborn son, but not the firstborn daughter. She's illegitimate. Is that so? I don't... Wouldn't she have a bastard icon? Oh, she does. She has a fame trait. Is there normally like a blood, or is that only for you? Oh, only I see my own dynasty on the drop. Okay, yeah, she is bastardborn. Interesting, but does she not get a claim as a bastard? I don't know. May not I know you may not inherit titles, but it'd be cool if there were like um, bastard-born uprisings, because you don't a claim is not a title. Chat, a claim means you can go to war for something. This doesn't mean you inherit a title. With Ostiak settlement and the installation of a new administration, the people of Shchushinsk have fully embraced the Ostiak traditions. Worcestershire. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Business Raven. Just like historically, uh, <laughs> if there was a known bastard, which there is in this case, because I think I have, I have an, she's good enough for an Estonian alliance. You know what I'm saying? So like, if she didn't have any claim and she therefore had no royalty, then I wouldn't get an alliance with the king of Estonia through a marriage with her because she would be full bastard. So she's clearly got some recognition because we have an alliance. My spy master has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill my guest, Urzena. I don't think we'll stop them. Well, no succession plays on Estonia. My nephew Kubrat was slain during it. I don't even know who that is. And uh, we hung out with High Chieftain Pukshaka, and I think we became friends because we have a 100% chance. <laughs> Hello, my boy. Now, where's my army? And when can we go home? <laughs> I guess I can just go home whenever I want. I'm trying to get these guys out of wars. Let's go, let's go siege ramen. Yeah, I want to get these guys out of war so I can try and vassalize them again. Speaking of Estonian succession, chat. Huh. Shouldn't have talked about him, I guess. He just drank himself to death. And the alliance expired. Okay, well, there that answers your question. It was... We just don't get to keep an alliance, but we have to stay betrothed to you? But even though you, we only married for the Alliance, I get a negative 32 opinion for everybody. Including, yeah, and 350 prestige. That's harsh. Oh, look, this little kid is going to lose opinion of me. <laughs> Hang on, you're two? Uh... 
Uh, well, I can still get an alliance. May as well. It's kind of what we were doing before. To the charming High King Brozor Shakbiria, I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. I will graciously take the hand of your granddaughter, Yalgava, when the time comes. I'm two. My spy master has come to me with a discovery. He is certain that my acquaintance, Slyugenka, is scheming against Urgina. Mm, she's my guest and is a fearless villain. And you are a wandering. I don't think I care. Oh no, not. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know who that is. Hey, Moyer Confederation, you guys are coming back. You're coming back. Byzantines are still checkered. Molly is losing ground. Umiyad's about the same. Italia's about the same. Guess what? Guess what? Britannia couldn't hack it, dude! Alba grew too big too fast. Turned into Britannia, and they're already dead. They only had 4,000 troops last time I looked at them. Now they got England. Now they got Alba is back with 10,000. The real Alba. I said the real Alba. And England is currently just... in Norway and part of Sweden. Don't forget... Norse Italia. Basically, these guys are like getting revenge on me for my CK2 playthrough. Finland is is pumping it. Absolutely pumping it. Regularly, that's Pomerania, Poland, Bohemia. The Windish Empire next to Russia. Dude, Siberia is the most stable place there is. <laughs> Uh-oh, chat. Did I, uh... Let the peasants actually successfully siege... <laughs> Bizarre. Okay, alright, hang on. Peasants... Are currently being fought right now. I don't know how big the local army here is. Um, peasant uprising has ended. It is no longer valid. To <laughs> the first raiders of Elabuga uh, are walking away because cool guys don't look at explosions and they're like, I'll handle this myself if our liege won't come save us. You gained obese. Well, that happened really late. What? You gain obese? I don't... Do I? Hey, hang on, I do need to put my food up, but like... He's not even obese. <laughs> right? He's not even... He's not even obese. All right, speaking of food, I'm going to go get some food. It'll be a short BRB. I actually just really need to put this hummus up before it goes bad. And I need sustenance. All right. But yeah, dude, he's, he's 68. Is he the oldest one? He's tied with Cordal. If he turns 69, he will be the oldest, um, Sukberian king. All right, I'll be back in just like a couple minutes. Thanks for waiting, everybody, and hanging out. BRB.
Oh. <laughs> I tried to push the unmute button and it didn't work. Okay. What song were you guys on? I don't know. Sub Vorpal Dude? How's it going? Monkush. Ooh. And we're back. Thanks for your patience, everybody. I decided to go ahead and feed Midas. Because he looked hungry. So, he has been taken care of and has already eaten. Hi. Oh, we won the war. <laughs> Alright, one, one more down and there's two, right? The pro I was having a problem called peasants. Yeah? Um... Didn't... Apis oh, Apisar War is over. Yeah, yeah. So where are... My armies? This is definitely one. Where's the other guy? Right there. <laughs> Long walk to go! No! No, I decline! No more! Be my vassal or don't. I- I'm helping you in enough, dude. Taking advantage of my friendship. Very one-sided friendship. Hello, my daughter. It looks like you've grown up to be a doctor. She knows a lot of ways to get what she wants. Most importantly, she is highly aware of the political implications. Intricate web weaver, who is diligent, generous, and arrogant. A diligent web weaver seems like a pretty good combo. She's married to a comely giant. Benevolent Brozor, the chieftain of Apasha, has been convinced to convert to the true faith. Actually a big deal. Apisar is part of what's going to be our new capital duchy. So we're trying to kind of roll this over to... Suomanusko as fast as possible, and we've got one out of four. So I'm gonna go for the capital next. And that is... Oh, we need a new control task as well. Let's do control in Apisar, which is back to one. <laughs> it was at a hundred until I let it get sieged. Awesome! Doing good. And then... We're gonna promote culture. Got a lot of culture that needs to be promoted over here. Oh my. I don't know where to start. Culture Mongol. I try to do my territories first. And then start helping the rest of the realm. Probably want to change the ones that are most distant from us, like Mongol. Who is this spam in my chat? Hmm? Who is this spam? I need help fighting one county! Help me, please, Asha! Hello, daughter. We were just talking about you getting married. Wow, Sada's bunnies can't even do a uh, jupe at 11 p.m. So sad. Eight ball. Oh. If I ask about spam again, nerds will be deleted. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys up to tonight, chat? 
how's Monday evening treating you? Nothing. Your neighbor, Khan Killick, has won against your vassal, High Chief Dislayava. Why didn't you... Oh, was she sieging you? Playing modded CK2. Oh. People comfy. <laughs> Got done with the work week. Sore throat. Oh, that sucks. We're conquering the world. A little at a time, yeah. Kind of just chilling right now and seeing what's going to happen to our boy High King Brozor, who apparently is obese? I, I didn't imagine that right. It said I'm obese. Hey, we're up to 100 control in Astana. I guess I knew that. Kachawar, charming High King Brozor, I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the third Estonian de jure war for the chiefdom of Warmia. Stop declaring war, okay? You two little rugrats. It's, it's not a game. This is serious. People are gonna die. I have to join as an attacker? For that? Not, this isn't even a defense. No. Just go spend your 750 prestige elsewhere. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hmm? Are we playing with your bone? Where is it? I don't know what he's doing. He's being stinky. Are you being stinky? Maybe. Alright, where were- what was I? I was about to- oh! I was gonna check control. Here's at 44. Apisar is only 11. We got two out of- Honestly, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move the capital here, chat. It's gonna take 10 years to convert faith. Okay, we'll just wait 10 years. But I have to do it before I die, right? Do I? Oh my, not Piotr. Why are you getting so much land all of a sudden? Yeah, why is he getting two kings? Why would he get the second king before my firstborn gets the king? I created Kingdom of Cumania, now he's getting it. I'd rather wait and make these kingdoms when the new guy takes over. So I think I just need to move the capital. That will change Sukberia and Vasugan Meyer. That can go to one of our other sons. That makes more sense. Alright, just move the capital. I can't afford to wait. I know the faith isn't correct. But it's kind of got to happen. You cannot- oh, can't change while at war. Never mind. We wait then. And hopefully get out of these wars soon. Designate a guardian for Jacob. He's already 15! He probably hasn't learned anything. Is he even gonna get an education? Oops. Alright, my son. I may be 68 and probably really annoying in my old age. But nonetheless, I will be your guardian. If I do that, Kind of looks like I suck. This is probably what it would normally look like if Suckbiria hadn't come in and rolled. 
the age of the world. I've been studying the ancient religious texts and the writings of scholars. They all seem to agree the world will end 6,000 years after its creation. By my calculations, we are less than a century away. <laughs> However, my noidy, Mali, urges me to keep it to myself. Leave it to the elders and avoid panic. What if your calculations are wrong? Time to start a doom cult. Everyone deserves to know the truth. 50 learning lifestyle. You gain 150 prestige. Spin 50 piety. Path of cynicism. A reasonable point. Gain a bunch of piety. 10 opinion. I should consult with more shamans. Lifestyle XP. We're almost to healthy. I might just go for the lifestyle XP here. Seems good. We're almost to healthy and last. Honestly, hiking Brozor may be around. He's 69. He is in poor health chat after. Oh, obese is a separate function here. That's not. He doesn't seem obese. But yeah, that reduced his health. Okay. Gotcha. He is now officially the oldest leader of our dynastic line. Surpassing King Cordal. His cheeks are growing a little gaunt. But we can find out. Well, maybe not. Yeah, okay. That's, that's not your clothes. That doesn't belong to you. Ugh. Who did you steal those from? Night Hospitaler. A regular crusader. Let's keep the one we had. I like the way you look right now. Ooh. Already? Well, I've decided to be healthy. Not going to let a little obesity stop me from being healthy. Interestingly, you can be both healthy and obese at the same time in the game. So, let's see how long we can live. All right, snack has been consumed. Late night sustenance. It appears my enemies are about to get caught by me, unawares. How's the crusading going? Hello, Audio Spiral. Going pretty good. Except, I'm not crusading. I am the anti-crusader. Right, that had to help a little bit. I just saw another army. Which is very, very far away. I'm assuming green is good, pink is bad. Kind of hard to tell. I think this is all friendly territory, so probably any of the stripes are bad. Your neighbor King Blush has lost against Count Kozel in the Holy War for the Chiefdom of Karakoja. I don't really know you guys too well. 
But I see that uh, Kipshock is currently embroiled in the <laughs> a few wars, one or two, just a couple. I'd like to get Vladimir out of the war so we can attempt um, vassalage, but I really don't think they're going to take it. All right, we're counter sieging our friendly capital, and. I was going to do something, but now I don't remember what it was. Person of interest, Golsik has died. Oh, that was my crazy physician. No, she's a wise woman now. She's not crazy anymore. Okay, physician, mastermind, philosopher. That was my... I pinned my physician so I could see when she died. How long until emperor? I'm already an emperor to know it. But they're called high kings. Because for an empire, you have to be feudal. So I'm the equivalent of an empire for tribal. Uh, Byzantine just lost a war against Khan Kilik. Ooh, this is sprawling out. They're they're a little too big though. Only five thousand troops. Did they just beat the Byzantines? Byzantines are probably not having a good time defending. Have a good one, Trombone Ninja. Take it easy. Okay. Um. Well. Chat, do you see something? I don't know. Just asking. Do you see anything out of place that I don't doesn't belong, or maybe seems out of the ordinary? No. Do I need to enhance more? Enhance. Not only is this Finland, this is our capital um, duchy currently. And I have no idea how this came about. High Chief does Vezha Vezhav inherited via abdication. Murdered by Chieftain Miroslav. And then he inherited it from her. She was installed by faction demand. There was internal politics. A new faction took over. See, there's Chieftain Setyamka. There's original Raida. Raida Grandson. How did you become, um... You were just my vassal. Now you're the vassal of Finland. How does that work? I have no idea. But, um, I don't have an alliance with Finland. <laughs> so I could just declare war after I lower my armies and I guess take it back? I don't know. That really s would suck if I wasn't going to move my capital anyway. Still kind of stupid. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. No! Estonia! Stop calling me to war, you little baby! Is there a way to check title owner's history? Yeah, you have to click on the book and you can see the whole history, but it didn't really clear things up. Oh, they're twins. She, um, tried. She read, like, two books in her training. Hello, using that. Deceitful, ambitious, and chaste. Pretty good stewardship, intrigue, and learning. And then JSOP 
has developed a sound grasp on the basics of management and the beginning of frugality. They're both not, not very achieving individuals. Still okay stats, shy, temperate, and diligent. And I'm going to need to find a match for both. All right, I'm about to, like, disband this army soon and get out of here. I'm tired of fighting other people's wars. In fact, I might... I might just disband. Well, I think unseaging this is probably smarter. Go back to four times for a minute. Though I'm scared because I'm probably getting closer to death. I have, I have fine health again, chat. Wow. <laughs> Preparations for a big race have been underway for weeks now. I'm 70. And finally, the time has come to compete. I arrive on one of my swiftest horses and find both my vassal, Count Shaipicha, and my son, Brozor, are going to participate. <laughs> of course, uh, I will join the race as well. I am 70 years old and in the best shape of my life. I am athletic, obese, healthy, and with an iron constitution. Of course I will join. Dancing, singing, cheering, the crowd is ecstatic before the race has even started. I move through the crowd, only minutes left before we riders are due to mount. When I spot my son Brozor by the horses with something sharp in his hand. <laughs> Your son, Brozor. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Brozor loses 20 opinion of you. It's none of my business. Come what may. Brozor has left his horse unguarded. Intrigue challenge against Brozor. 64% chance. Uh, I leave his bridle only barely intact. He notices that someone tampered with his bridle and loses 10 opinion of you. Intrigue challenge, huh? I only have 8. Alright. He's left his horse unguarded. All's fair, Brozor. It would be a shame if something snapped during the race. I race over the step, keeping pace with the clouds above and the riders beside. Suddenly, I hear my son Brozor scream in pain. I <laughs> turn in my saddle to see him on the ground bloody, the broken remains of his bridle in his hand. Oh, I thought I was playing a prank on him. Am I trying to kill him? Focus on the race. Your son gets wounded. <laughs> I must turn around and help him. Glo grow closer to forming a friendship with Brozor. Dude, it was- bro. It was just a prank, bro. See, listen, bro. I'm King Brozor. It was just a prank. It takes many long minutes, but finally I make it across the finish line. My vassal Count Shaipicha is already celebrating his victory, surrounded by people, showered with gifts. He waves happily my way. High King Brozor no longer controls any claimed counties. Okay. Hey! We did it. You can take boats up the river. Mystical knowledge. I've come across a book describing how ancient devotees used trances and visions of ecstasy to commune with the heavens. It seems a strange practice in our modern age, but perhaps there's something to be learned? What would happen if I imitate them? Test the mystical practices. What do other texts say? You attempt to learn more about the practice through books. Listen, I've taken a couple of... I've taken a pilgrim journey. It's time to, um... Test some mystical practices.
My wife, High Queen Kanshi, gets to hear many things during her comings and goings at court. Lately, she's heard some very interesting stories about what my concubine, Oloda, does in the shadows. This is very useful to know, sweetness. <laughs> okay. Um, you learn her deviant secret. Predilection for socially unacceptable acts. And that's a known criminal. Locked in a room, strange powders on a burning fire provided overpowering heat, smoke, and smells as I tried to feel the things that lie beyond the world of senses. I do not know how much time passed before strange, indecipherable visions of light and pulsing sounds came to me. Was it my imagination or a glimpse of the divine? Was I visited by Etal Alien? Is there even any way to tell? I need to try again and see if anything is different. Interesting, I'll record my findings for the future. Well, I don't want to die of OD on whatever this is, so let's, uh, let's take the lifestyle experience and jot it down and maybe leave that to a future king. You now control Vologda. Vassal taken prisoner. Dude, Zarni was taken prisoner? You were the now target of a Barnalan claim on the county of Ob. Why are you here? You're in my army. Yeah, my money and prestige out. <laughs> I'm just looking for the warning sign that I'm going to die of old age. I still haven't gotten it yet. But Yava Mordvanid gains 20 opinion of you. Due to your spouse's skills. Ooh. A stone of glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters in the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why do scribes insist on writing such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle. With the aid of a stone of glass, even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. I require your assistance. Get a, he gets a weak hook on you. What would the Noidi even do with a hook? I need one of those stones. Lose 135 gold. Yeah. <laughs> Get that one. I have so much money in uh, prestige right now. Taxes are going good, chat. We're getting um 20 gold from vassal taxes. So I guess if you wanted to try to uh, make sure you appease the people paying you the most money, then that would be a good idea too. Dude, these guys love me gonna be sad when my son takes over what's he even doing right now he's 34 he's got four kids good for you Maliaka Yalgava Chinska and Pudyaka hey the armies can come home Vladimir's still at war but they wouldn't be my vassal anyway Avte, you're my. Why won't you guys just like make a super empire with me? Huh? Also, Finland, what's up, dude? What uh, faith is this? Ostiak Sumanuska. It's weird. Didn't I just? <laughs> no. I'm not going to help you anymore. All right, it's 1015. I'm 70. Still fine health. We got years to go, chat. All right, we got to start working towards something. Now that we're at peace, um we built up our soldiers. We don't we definitely don't need to go to war yet. I can probably move capital now. Be a good time for that. Move realm capital here. I'll make a save in case this turns out to be an awful idea. All right, Tartus. See you later, nerds. 
The new seat of Suckberia exists. And I am its Duke High King Brozor of Suckberia. I'm curious how that shifted the succession. Do I need to make that my primary title now? All right, my son is getting Cumania again. He's getting the High Chiefdom of Kazakh, as I wanted, Atbasar, Kulunda, all the spots that are within it. And then Not Pyotr is now getting Suckberia and Vasyukenmeyer and Tartus now instead. So they switched it. He's getting the old capital. So there you go. Which now actually sucks because part of it's Finland. <laughs> like Finland was so stinky and smelly that I had to move my capital. You know what I'm saying? They, they popped out of nowhere and I had to go. No time to waste. We don't have the innovations for this. Nor do we have innovations for holdings, because we have to be feudal. Apisar's 52. All the buildings are here and upgraded, though. We just gotta get the control. We're working on it. So we might have lost some soldiers in that little shift. Doesn't look like it, really. The capital has shifted. The only thing we are short on is Tinkerism, is the wrong faith, of course. But, uh, we are actively converting the faith in order to correct that. So the reason we moved here is because when we do become feudal, we're going to have a lot more space. Because I own all counties here, and the whole duchy is together, which is really nice. Greetings, my sensible leech! With Ostiak settlement and the installation of a new administration, Kolivan, Kalivan, have fully embraced Ostiak traditions. This... Chieftain Kloptod, half-brother, you are a fast worker. Why is uh, your spouse imprisoned? By who? Imprisoned by High Chieftain Pukshaika of the Asyaki. Are you guys at war? Looks like it. So we gotta get some duchies going over here eventually. Um, for now, there's not really a reason to. I'm just gonna wait until the new king takes over and then use those duchies as gifts to kind of get the whole kingdom in line, or the empire in line. Lose weight. My body weakens for every day that passes, and my girth weights heavily on me, both bodily and mentally. Running warm baths, maybe even mildly cathartic substance, I will find some way to lose weight. This character is trying to lose weight, plus 25%. Bring the scamony. What does that even mean? Sweaty, stinky, minus five opinion. I didn't know there was going to be a decision about that. Wait a second, who's all this? Oh, minus dude! Thinks I'm awesome. Oh, because I'm a living legend? <gasps> Chad, I'm going to lose a plus 40 when I die. No wonder everyone thinks I'm awesome, High King Brozor. Because diplomatically, I'm getting... Uh, I didn't realize how good this was. Level of fame impact plus 100%. I underestimated life of glory. So that makes uh, normally a plus 20, a plus 40, and you get four extra knights... So eight instead of four. So it literally doubles the bonuses. Wow. That's like a plus 20 opinion for everybody is insane. Really good. And I'm the most famous um, Succubarian and the oldest. <laughs> and probably the most successful. All right. Uh, what was I going to do just now? That I got to... Sh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quickly. Can I offer to join her war? She's not your ally. Well, if she wins the war... You might be a high king, but you're also a cold-hearted churl! The unprovoked anger expressed by my vassal Nuyanza comes as a complete surprise. He's been under a lot of stress lately, but to behave like this? 
that even he struggles, it's calming. Lose some stress. These guys are even Sue and Minusco. I don't even know how that happened. Who's my oldest, um... Grandchild. Three? Well, look what I just did. Potke Avrin, daughter of Brozor, son of Brozor, <laughs> uh, is going to get ready to be married. Unfortunately, Kozil, the grandson of Duchess Sybil, has a severe health penalty, so this is not a fantastic match. It's a congenital trait. My daughter has hail, which is not as good as this is bad. This bros are the third? What? Why is this even possible? <laughs> it's not possible. You have to wait 15 years. <laughs> All right, try again. How about one of our younger ones? Dude, one of my grandsons is a giant? That's awesome. These one, these two are related? Alright, they're not related. There you go. Alright. Mega matrilineal as well. I'm sorry that he's not healthy, but hopefully he lives long enough. All I need is her to accept. Uh, we have an automatic alliance, as far as I know. Then, this, I literally just, um, saved her life, chat. In the county of Kien, they believe in Tingriism, and they do not pray to Uko. No ID Mali condemns it as heresy, but the people ask for understanding. They will pray to the gods. Increase progress of convert faith council task? Or popular opinion? Both really cool. The progress bar, though, on that is awesome. I am honored by your request and will be glad to call you an ally. Oh, marvelous news, because now I can actually join... I just closed that window automatically, whatever it was, or she just invited me to it. I don't know which. Which one is she losing? Defending against... A claim... Yeah, claim on duchy. That's the one I want to join. You joined a war. Then I think I just pop my armies over to the east. Okay. Just raise local. I only want my elites. Control right click in order to stop gathering and go. 21 champions, by the way. We have a... Uh... I think we lost a couple. I didn't pin them. I should pin this Hercules. He's pretty cool. So he's had they've had six kids together with my daughter, High Chiefess Pasheka, including Artie, who became Hale, Brozor, who became Herculean. Nice. There's another. There's so many Brozors in the family, chat. Uh, we got three Brozors in my family. I only named one, and they've got a Brozor. Here's a Zarni. How come they're using all the cool names? Charming. Uh, here's Virye, who got Herculean. Wow. Her a robust Vert Yava. And a, a Hail Arvo. This might be the best family ever, dude. She's 40 now? How is my firstborn daughter 40, dude? Oh, sorry. Secondborn. Sorry, Mizava. You are also Hale, married to someone who is quick, and guess what? Brozor is another 
There's another Brozor! Uh, except born by Chieftas Mazava and Itlar. And he is both hail and quick. Wowee! <laughs> it's Brozor's all the way down. Pick Shaka, got stuttering. And... Kill Dyson is just charming so far. A good family name, Prozor's, the one that got picked first and most. But yeah, I'm gonna pin him for sure. Aw, Chieftain Odeg died. Wasn't this one of my count? Wasn't he the spy master? Drank himself to death. Oh. That's sad. He was a good spy master. Good friend. Had two counties. Just split that up. And now we have an empty spy master position. Not an easy seat to fill. But I've got some good choices. Including my own daughter, Norfingale. Arrogant, generous, and diligent. You know what? Get my daughter in there. I do like High Chieftain Cytek. I think he's cool. Especially because he's gregarious, patient, and content. That's an amazing, elusive shadow right there, who's also quick. That's... I don't know, Chad. I want to put my daughter on, but... My daughter is diligent. This is a pretty solid player right here. I think... Health may be the only issue. What do you guys think? Can you search the realm for Brozors? I can't, yeah. Daughter has more room to get good. She has a 20-year head start. They're both... He's technically higher trained than her. But the reason to put her on sooner is because she starts training... Um, her spy master skill, and so if she's already a 15 at 18 years old, she's gonna be a god by the time she's done, theoretically. Alright, I don't think we need to disrupt any schemes. I might even start a scheme, because even though I'm forgiving in my old age and patient, I mean, maybe, maybe it's time for her to test the waters a little bit. How can I get... Some of these people to join me in Vassalage, willingly. And or, how can I eliminate some potential future threats? So how do I get the, the Volga... Ugh, I'm scared to get Volga Ural. I only need 12 counties to do it. So Mordvinia and Vladimir are kind of in the way, and then I could easily vassalize um, Mordvinia. Who's got the biggest army that... Dude, Kyrgyz has 168 troops? What? All right, let's focus on this. You can unlock a new perk for the learning lifestyle. All right. Hold of body. Fertility plus 20%, a bit late. Medium health boost. Know yourself, know your limitations, and know the full extent of your reach. <laughs> Healthy boy. Healthy boy. And he's, uh, losing weight right now. Gain hooks, maybe? That might be a nice thing to start with. Find some secrets over there. Might be interesting. Give her something to do. Besides just disrupt schemes. Am I late? A little bit, big bucky boy. A little bit. 71. Every year that ticks by, I'm more and more amazed. Oh yeah, where's the war? We're pretty much just going in... 
Um, I think they just did the thing that I was going to do. Trying to lift the siege on friendly territory and help my new ally. Speaking of, I'm trying to figure out what the best way is to get, like, a, a peaceful alliance with my other neighbors. I think starting here and going a little east is a nice land grab opportunity. Just because it's more of Mongolia. And if we can start just chipping away at Mongolia, eventually one day we'll have a claim to it. Nyanza has decided his time and Astana has come to an end. The servants have packed his chest and he said his farewells. With him goes his claim on the chiefdom of Kirken. If I want to press it, now's my last chance. Bye, cousin. May your journey be safe and swift. Hey, what's up, Sleepy Pink? Bamboozle trying to jam out. Brozor is still alive. He is the oldest to date, yes. <laughs> We're actually close to another tier one um, family upgrade if we want. Uh-oh. Okay, I probably should chill. There's 166 living members of our dynasty out of 252. To the point now where it's extremely hard to keep up with, but I like that it's still being updated. My lord, my noiety Mally approaches me with urgency. A local merchant has a copy of the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing, but refuses to sell it to me. If you could make him see the error of his ways, I would be in your debt. I'll make sure the book gets to you. Gain a hook on him. Hmm, this book sounds interesting. Increase your learning by one, and he's disappointed in you. This sounds like a you problem. <laughs> yeah, let's take the learning increase. I'm getting pretty smart in my old age chat. 24 diplomacy, 15 learning. Just got a uh, whole of body. I guess we have to decide if we want to keep going or not. Wish I would have taken cultural fascination progress a long time ago, huh? I think I want to go down a different tree now. But this is pretty cool for converting. What should I do at the end of my life? Title creation cost would be maybe pretty cool for my next guy. Um. Hmm. I would say this probably. I would say some marshals would be nice, maybe. I don't know, dude. I could go back to diplomacy. It just seems like diminishing returns. Everybody already likes me so much. Each alliance grants plus, plus one diplomacy, though. Shorter truces and no prestige penalty for breaking them. <laughs> Forced vassalization casts his belly. Okay. Well... Here's the thing, if I change now, then I lose my learning boost. My health boost, I mean. So, maybe this thing keeps us alive long enough to matter? Because, uh, Force Bachelor sounds cool, but maybe for the next guy. Let's just stay on learning and keep the health boost and just see how long we can milk that. But yeah, Night Effectiveness would be great. We're just not really using them too much. EDSK people, Riven, what's up? Welcome back to Suckberia. West France has formed. They had enough of Alba, and it, Britannia has all but eroded. Britannia has 200 <laughs> troops. Alba's back to 10,000. Alba had stretched everywhere. Looks like they had some falling out, and they couldn't keep it together. They tried, though. Molly's only got 5,000. Estonia's, eh. Finland's even worse. Man, we look awesome compared to everybody else right now. We're probably close to number one in the game. 
This dude keeps calling me back to war and I keep declining. He should just vassalize, but he won't. So I'm just gonna let him suffer. Alright, where's this war? Kinda wasn't paying attention. Nubian Egypt! Oh yeah. Is that okay, so I can just go down there. I don't know what I'm doing. But I ain't doing it very good. Defending in a river crossing, defending in mountains. Your sister Mozilla died and you gained 34 stress. Good night, sweet Mozilla. Learned as you were. 67 years old. She was patient but wrathful when you crossed her. And quite stubborn, too. This should be easy. That was worth 21% by itself. 70 deaths. My champions killed 232. They're pretty good at what they do. And we got the 50 onagers ready for a siege. To lift, I think, the siege for our new allies. We're doing a big kind of scheme to peacefully annex three more counties here. Despite our best efforts, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets at King Verrier's court. I do not believe we will ever find anything. Well, you tried, I guess. How about King Jacob? Give it a try and see what you find. Easy as siege. So fast, up to 50%. All right, I guess I could just head to their um, capital. We're running really low on supplies, though. Might be fast enough. Hello, Elizabeth. What do you need to know? Your culture has discovered currency. Dude, do you know how to like spend money and stuff? Development growth plus 10% per month? We're, that's not even the one we were researching, was it? Yeah, we're researching Ledger. We just got that one because it was time. Money! Okay. So, uh, it, once we win this, I believe... Even though she's defending another war, that war should be over, hopefully. And then we can just offer her vassalage. Because we offered to join her war, and we're going to become her friend. And she's actually Sue Manusko Kyrgyz, which is interesting. If we can capitalize on more Sue Manuskos, we can vassalize them, especially when they're not kings. It's just odd because they're feudal duchy rank realms, and they're not going to like us because of that. Yeah, the Connet just imploded. They they did this thing where they took a bunch of land down here, and then they splintered into Kyrgyz Komai, who is... Yeah, like a hybrid of the two houses that were down here. <laughs> Around like Tibet. <laughs> so, I don't know how that happened. Hey, I took my foe hostage. We meet again! Do you remember me? Both of you. Okay, so uh, they, the AI should say victory. There it is. Got a big, oops. Got a big opinion buff. So be it. And she's probably still at war. Nope. And since she's not at war, we got that. That's why we went to help her. We made an alliance. Got a good opinion, and it was enough to make us positive. And as long as that's positive, I think she'll say yeah. 
My entourage and I are strolling back from a short foray into Astana when we unexpectedly run across my vassal High Chiefess Puyante and her retinue skulking around my capital on unannounced business. <laughs> oh, Brozor, I was hoping I'd run into you. Uh, come, I found the most delightful little taverna just a short ways from here. Uh, would you care to join me for some premium teas and hashish suffused cakes? Um, another cosmic <laughs> insight for three years. Just try to keep up, friend. Learning challenge. 57% you get a weak hook. Forty-three percent chance she gets a weak hook. You know what? This one's better because the opinion. I don't need the prestige. I have five thousand prestige. Five thousand prestige and five thousand people arrive. Kraken viewers. It's a Kraken crusade. Greetings, my lord. Hello, Kraken and, and rats. Some of my chat is people arriving now, apparently. Okay, then. The people arrive brigade is here. Welcome one and all to the Empire of Sakberia. Where my prisoner just died in my dungeons. I don't even know who this is, nor why she was in my dungeons, but apparently we have had this one here for eight years. He has grown old. I'm hoping to learn this game. Can you teach me, my lord? It's really tough, but it's way easier than Crusader Kings 2. I'm still learning stuff, but like, things that you don't really need to know necessarily to have fun at this point. But yeah, it's a good time to jump in. I would actually enjoy watching that, so I'll have to keep my eyes out if you end up playing it. Because the first experience in Crusader Kings is a fun one to watch. Hi everybody. We are in Suckberia, which is its own empire now. Uh, freshly made an empire this stream. Basically what that means is we have uh, many hats. Such as... Uh, this one. And that one. And this one. And that one. Actually, these are just cosmetic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you could use them if you wanted to. I don't think that I am worthy of this Crusader crown. My character has chosen not to wear anything. But yeah, we are pretty like... I would say we are firmly through mid-game at this point. Moving not to end-game. We're just in mid-game right now. Our goals are effectively to convert to feudal. Uh, we are up here in the steppe and moving somewhat west. Playing as Nor- not Norse. I was, uh, Norse previously. Playing as pagans of the Ostiak culture. So, my peoples have some very strongly held beliefs about their ancestors and the sanctity of nature. So we worship the trees and we kill people to honor our ancestors. But, uh, for those of you new to Crusader Kings, basically what we're doing is I am role-playing as whatever leader I happen to be. So if you've played games like Civilization or Stellaris or, um, you know, some other Paradox titles like Hearts of Iron or series like that in the strategy genre, this is very different than that because it's more singularly focused. Those games are about number go big, and that can be this game too. This is basically like Skyrim with guns. We just play as one person at a time. And uh, whatever my stats are, I try to like make decisions based on their character. So it's really fun. We've been putting ourselves in a whole bunch of different shoes. Such as... These are my leaders up to date. This was our first boy, High Chieftain Uchva. He was kind of... Didn't have a lot of time to play with him. He died at 53. King Dondi was known as Dondi the Dread. And we ruled through fear in an iron fist. Forcing all of our subjects and vassals to do what we said or else. And they did fear us. But 
in the wake of Dondi the Dread, there was a little bit of, not disaster, but instability for Quirtle, his son, to take over. Quirtle focused on stewardship and uniting the realms with the power of money and taxes and just being damn likable. And when he passed at 68, we took over as King Brozor. Hi, King Brozor, to you, who, as his name suggests, is the friend of all of his closest advisors and allies. He makes no possible obstacle in your way for anything evil you might do because he is of a forgiving nature and soul, gregarious, he likes to party, and also he's willing to wait a very long time. But under his uh, very disciplined rule, he's got excellent diplomacy. We've been, we've put together a really nice empire, including, uh, just taking in some new land, peacefully. Greetings, my leech. I accept your offer of vassalization. My leech! Okay, so, basically, these one, two, three, four spots, I got to just put into my realm pocket uh, without even having to go to war. Uh, we made an alliance with them and then helped them in a war. And now they've decided to join up. So they'll be paying some taxes after they get control of their lands and giving us some levies. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about the game, feel free to ask. Uh, I am happy to explain some of the mechanics or what's going on. But really, it's like... Um, the best way to describe Crusader Kings is like the Sims characters meet a grand strategy game. So, you guys, what were you guys playing? Let's find out. Some Total War Warhammer 2, baby! Who's who's the new faction? What are you guys playing as? I was playing um, some Norskins, and then I finally got tired of getting my ass beat by Empire, so I threw in the towel on my playthrough. But yes, we're, uh, Cru Crusader Kings and Total War are like different opposite sides of a coin. Total War is all about fight good and big epic sweeping battles. Um, and a little bit less about the overworld. This game is basically all map all the time. All politics, all backstabbing. Or not, depending on what you want to do. Spymaster's secret uncovered. You have learned Helena's child's secret heritage. Her child's secret heritage. We have discovered that uh, one of Helena's children is illegitimate, but I don't think it matters because she's not landed. She has no titles. DLC is coming and I'll be ready. Bring it on. I'm already ready for some DLC, dude. I'm gonna gobble it up. <laughs> yeah, they've already got a, um, I guess an expansion pass for two minor DLCs and like one major one. But Crusader Kings 2 was out for nine years and got a lot of updates and expansions. And I, I played it for the first time earlier this year with all the DLCs. Had a lot of fun. But thanks for the raid, and thank you, raiders, for coming on by. Uh, what we're doing is kind of just like waiting to see how old my oldest character can get. High King Brozor of Suckberia has been hitting the hash, and also he's been focusing on his health of late. He's gone so far down the study of anatomy that he has conquered death itself to some extent, and he knows his body so well that he will get a warning one year in advance of his natural demise that tells him, like a spidey sense tingling that he's going to perish, so I'm waiting to see when that warning happens. I won't get a warning if I get assassinated or get an illness or something like that. It has to be natural causes. But uh, he bulked up in the last couple years, and at 70 years old, decided to focus on his <laughs> health and fitness. So he's, uh, quote-unquote fine. Athletic, healthy, focusing on medicine, has an iron constitution, but is obese. His only downside. What is this? Why is this like a different shade? You guys see that? I think they're at war. 
All right, we're not at war, speaking of, so I can disband my troops and focus on the next acquisition. So many of these guys, um, we're kind of doing like a, there's a religious divide here. So we're Suomenisco pagans, and then we have uh, Tingriism to the south. So we're basically trying to take as much as we can. Nanchos are coming up here too. I didn't see that. They're way up here now. And we're kind of trying to like roll over the eastern Mongolian side of the map right here. Nanchos! Yeah, the vassals are at war right now. Dude, I'm having some internet problems tonight. I just dropped some frames. But our longtime enemy has been the Kyrgyz, and we recently invaded their entire kingdom and took uh, the full kingdom of Ob. That was our last major expansion, and we just kind of sneaking into their territory over here. So is it, how easy is it to convert the leader of an enemy faction to like a different religion, I wonder? Probably not until they make um, the secret groups and stuff again. All right, every time we go to war in like a big scale invasion like that, it kind of ravages the land. And um, I've got like a council member that goes around and reestablishes control over different areas. So like in this case, we just moved our capital to Astana and we got control up to 100 here. The higher you control, the more taxes you get and the more levies they give you. So whenever I see anything less than 100, I send my boy over there and shapes it up. Oh, you can convert them by abducting them. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, maybe I need to play as an intrigue guy. That would be fun. Where's abduction? Murder scheme power? Find secrets? Enables the abduction scheme. A hostile scheme that aims to imprison its target it is a secret scheme based on intrigue that can recruit agents. A successful abduction will result in the target being imprisoned by the owner. Oh. Okay then. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Dear Father, despite our best efforts, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets at High King Ye- Actually, just regular King Jacob. This dude looks, um... You know? I'm, I'm scared of him. I'm intimidated by... How, you know... Chadley. All right, she says, I only need a little bit more time. We're trying to look, I don't know, I'm trying to get a hook on him. And then maybe I can, like, expose his secret or blackmail him or something like that. He's losing part of his realm right now in Finland. I don't know, I'm just trying to make some plays. I'm trying to train my daughter up to be really good at spying and, and all that. Okay. So when, I wonder, do you guys want to take bets on when Brozor is actually going to die? This is the oldest guy I've ever controlled. Quote unquote in fine health. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess 80. 8 0. Put it on roulette. 8 0. That's my call. Your neighbor. Um, ooh, speaking of King Jacob, is, they're warring each other right now. So what I need to do is find another like target that I can peacefully assimilate because it's just easier and less micromanaging, actually. Uh, these guys are my religion, but they just don't want to because they're kings. So I need to find people who aren't kings yet, hopefully. I invite you to a feast at my court in Yarkali. It will be a grand affair worthy of your honorable presence. Chieftain Tugan. <laughs> you have said my favorite word. I am the party king. Let's go. Every guest is gathered in the hall. Our gracious host, Chieftain Tugan, welcomes us to the feast. I look forward to this. All right. What, when did we get the... The dilemma. The feast dwindles down and I can... I find myself deep in conversation with Chieftain Tugan. 
He inquires about my opinion on the blessings of family, a subject he is deeply interested in himself. A subject that fascinates me as well. Let's uh, be his friend and also let's go back to the council. When am I allowed to switch her? Because isn't she like locked in for 25 years? She used to like hook on me to force me to make her a council member. And she's still here. How the hell did Finland get in there? Nobody knows. <laughs> no one actually knows. I have no clue. Let's check the religion overview again. I want to look for some more Sumanusko. That would consider joining. If only they were uh, not kings, they would absolutely join. My minus 50 is huge. All right, I don't think there's really anybody else. How is our new capital looking? It's a joy to see my friend Chieftain Tugan. Once again, we eat, drink, and sing together as if no time had passed since we parted last. We could have been dining in a barn and this would still have been one of the greatest feasts I've ever been to. What would life be without Tugan? You gain reinvigorating friendship for five years? Spending time with those who care for us is one of the things that makes life worth living. Huge health boost for five years. Maybe the party king is gonna live forever. Uh, the reason I get such a big stress debuff is because my character is gregarious. Loves spending time with other people. Uh, and is an eager reveler. Loves to carouse and hungers for debauchery. What a feast. I will remember the days spent in Chieftain Tugan's halls for a long time to come. Now it's time to wash the traces of Mary's uh, traces of merriment and wine, and once more resume my duties. You become a famous reveler. Rosa was the life of every gathering at uh, 73, <laughs> attracting debauchery and glamour. That's a bonus to our diplomacy and intrigue, and other revel revelers love us. The end of my age. I have become more of a party king than ever before. Still feeling fine. All right, how are uh, how's India doing, Chalix? Why do you care about India? This is where all of the uh, Bengals are, of course. I love Bengals. It has nothing to do with wanting to see which nudist is in power right now. Oh. It's Maharani Prabhavati. That's a good name. We're... <laughs> okay. All right. There's a lot. There's way more nudists. There were, <laughs> there were only like uh, two last time I looked. <laughs> uh, that was a lot more. <laughs> Like, by far, dude. This is tasty. This is tasteful. It's gotta be that, right? Yapania. Characters can decide to meditate in seclusion, reducing stress, and possibly gaining theological insight with asceticism. Dharmic passivism. Adherents do not wear clothes. Natural primitivism. Primitivism. Civilization is a natural, a futile, and blasphemous attempt by man to impose order on an inherently unordered creation. We embrace naturism and live as the gods intended, wild and free. Wow, that's pretty cool, dude. So, this is a historical offshoot of Zeptembara. The Yapania believe that m moksha is attainable through death, but that it is important to enable the freeing of the soul as much as possible in life through acts like nakedness. Uh, they are equal doctrine, m male equal and female preference selection, righteous, theocratic, though they believe in monogamous, 
relationships. Divorce is always allowed. I guess the only downside is cousin marriage. <laughs> but they allow same-sex relations. Uh, adultery is shunned. Witchcraft is accepted. Kinslaying is shunned. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, the only gender law they have is clerical. Interesting. By the way, chat, uh, for those who don't know, if you want to start a game, you can choose what presets in your rules. And if you want, you can make everybody in the game, I think, whatever you want. So, like, they even have an option to make all characters, like, the default, instead of heterosexuality, you can make the default asexual. And I just want to see, like, a challenge mode of how long that campaign lasts. Noidi Mali often quotes passages from the great epics about the holy virtues. I should prove I have paid attention by quoting a passage of my own. Preferably one which complements his personality. I will memorize and recite a section on... Probably fairness. He's forgiving. Dear Father, despite my best efforts, my agents have not uncovered any secrets. I still believe I only need a little more time. Go for it. How old am I? 74! Alright, what can I do at the end of my life, chat, before I before I go? What's my last... My last will? How much of Mongolia do we have? Not even close to enough, but I'm just curious. 12 out of 69! Mongolia needs exactly 69 counties to create the Empire of Mongolia. We have 29 out of 41 here. Get rid of Finland. <laughs> don't I have an alliance with them? No, I don't. Can't subjugate, because we've already waged the subjugation war, but that'd be pretty funny. Subjugate Finland from across the world. <laughs> uh, hang on. Oh, these are potential allies. Hang on. Oh yeah, you have a claim on the chiefdom of Vas Yugen. But I really need to go and conquer the duchy. And then I can just give it to you. That makes sense. Okay, let's make sure you change your objective. We're looking for the duchy of Vas Yugen. Sorry, Jacob. I'll make this as painless as possible. There's a thing inside me which is not me. It eats its way through my flesh, feeding off my life force. Its strength increasing while I wither away. I push my hands against the growth under my skin, my fingers aching to tear it out. The thought of it growing makes me want to puke. Send a physician for physician now. You gain the trait cancer. Who's my physician right now? And before we answer that... Wait, do we even have one? <gasps> we don't have one! Quickly! Search for the physician now! Hurry! <laughs> Finally, my servants have found some people who might be fit to serve as a court physician either way. I fear I cannot afford to be picky now. Uh-oh. We found a 21 learning mastermind philosopher with no physician tra traits. And Tundava, who sucks. I think I'm gonna hire Setyamka. And then I might f just do a kingdom search. I think it has to be in my court, though. Sort by 
learning. He's definitely the smartest. Not a physician, though. But he's got... He's still like... that. This could be worse. But it could be better. Got kind of unlucky and did not find a physician at all. In fact, I don't think anyone exists here. Nazgul. Oh. Can you come to my court? No. What if I, um... Arrange a marriage. Whose court are you at? Not at mine, I don't think. Oh, he's at mine. What if I arrange a marriage? <sighs> okay, um, he loses 200 prestige, unfortunately. He's, he's not, he's, he's not even landed. He's just a good, good house. Okay, well, I have to treat it. I can't get picky, dude. The time has come to treat your cancer. While I am fairly certain a simple tincture would suffice, the choice is yours. Do more than what is necessary. A safe treatment might lessen symptoms and has a few risks. It's too late for caution. A risky treatment may have great outcomes, but could also lead to worsened symptoms or permanent injuries. It is too late for caution, is what um, someone who is brave would say. But because I am patient, to wait and bide his time is a specialty for, of Brozor. I think I'm going to say do no more than what is necessary, because that's what a patient character would say. He'd probably say even... Uh, he's too he's too into book learning. I don't think I'm brave enough for this. Let's do no more than what is necessary. Setyamka brought a croaking bucket to my chambers and told me to expose my upper body. He grabbed a toad, gutted it with deft hands, and proceeded to place the still twitching carcass on my chest. He continued until the bucket was empty and my torso was covered. The toad turned out to be just what I needed for treatment. For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated, and the world seems a little bit brighter. You gain reduced disease symptom for five years! Huge disease resist buff! So even though I do have cancer, which is a critical health penalty, that's worse than, than huge, I still have reduced disease symptoms? And I already have Iron Constitution, which is a 30% disease resistance. So I got cancer on top of that. The party lives on. For now, yes. <laughs> I got pet toads at home! Liuda, did you know that if you sell those toads for the right price, you could make a fortune on curing cancer? Don't give away those prized toads to anybody. It's that easy, apparently. <laughs> Alright, what was I gonna do before I got cancer? I was gonna change that one dude out, right? Oh, we're at war too, yeah. Okay, I accept your marriage proposal. Your courtier and my acquaintance, Nazgul, will be joined. Okay, so they're here. Now she should be in my court. Vassal in your realm. Wait, why is she up there? Where's he? Why'd they move? They were here. Now they're up. Hang on. He's got titles? How do you get three titles? He was in my court. Well, I goofed. Uh, oh, that's the wrong person? It is the wrong person. Who is that? I don't know. Um... There she is. I can demand conversion. She'll accept. Then we like each other a lot more because we're the same religion. 
And then I can appoint her as a court physician. Sorry, Set Yamka, your treatment was really good. I guess the only downside to this is her learning isn't very good. So what's better, do you think, chat? Super high learning and mastermind philosopher? Or someone with a physician skill? Maybe it's just nice to have both. I would say learning's probably better. Would be my guess. All right, meanwhile, concerned for my current war, my friend Cappy has paid out the treasury to aid my efforts. I have plenty of money. Thank you, though. That's very nice. Evanito, did you say learning because everyone else said learning? The troubling translation. As I step over the threshold to my court physician at Yamka's office, I find him bent over book. This translation of... Hippocrates, I'm just kidding, Hippocrates is atrocious. He says with a sigh, if I were to follow these instructions, I'm as likely to cure my patient as I am to kill them. That's what I like to hear as your patient. Oh yeah, buy you a better book, baby. I just uh, trained my physician to be, uh, or excuse me, I trained my court physician to be a novice actual physician. Good timing, dude. Call to war. <laughs> no. I don't think I will. In fact, it's in my best interest for you guys to break up. And fracture. Hi gamers, this is a very nice game, but unfortunately they've made everything so small and can be difficult to read. Well... Everyone else is complaining about how big every all the UI is, and they have to turn the UI down. Are you on your phone? Sorry, I forgot to unpause. Wow, this, uh, these sieges are just so fast. All right, Finland. Give me my land back. I am illiterate. You're really good at typing for someone who's illiterate. Oh, Cappy. If you were still with me, I know you would tell me to be strong. That things will get better, and you'd be right. As you always were. But first I must curse and cry. How could I not, when you are gone from this world? Sorry to lose you, my friend. Speaking of friends, let's be friends with... Everyone on the council has a plus 100 reputation with me. Hey, yeah, we may as well be... I'm King Brozor. We may as well be bros with our whole council, yeah? Before we all die and have to restart as <laughs> the next character down. The siege is won. Prisoners have been taken. That was only worth 4%, but that's okay. Because if we just hold these for long enough, eventually the war will end. I really don't think uh, Finland's going to come defend it, so it's really just going to be a waiting game. We'll look at the rest of the world in a moment. I inspect the barracks infirmary when a severely injured soldier's brought in. He's losing too much blood! Where's the physician? Said Yamka's nowhere to be found. Suddenly, as if he stepped out of thin air, my good friend Arnaz is at my side. Dude! It's a flashback episode! No, what do you call it when they, like, bring back an old character? Uh, Arnaz is one of my oldest friends. He's the one that put me on this health kick. We became athletic together, and we learned how to exercise in the year 1000. He wrote the story of my family, the epic saga, documenting the travails of my forefathers. And he just appeared to help me save this guy. The dude who we're saving is not great, but... I can also roll the dice. Count Arnaz dislikes me, but I can get some big learning experience, or he dies. Step back. This is my patient. <laughs> um, let's go for the guarantee. I think I'm going to get XCOM'd. 74% though, chat. Plus, Arnaz wouldn't like it. Let's work together. Count Arnaz remains calm as the patient screams and thrashes. Eventually, a quiet focus settles over us. That was an impressive feat, Rosord Arnaz says with a tired smile. 
It was an honor serving at your side, my old friend. All right, Finland. So it, it's not going to make much difference on the total war score. We have to get this to 100%, but we're going to start ticking up held objectives after we hold these for a certain length of time. 74% in XCOM means 7. Why do we have 14 issues? Oh, my son, Jacep, is 20 and can get married. Sorry, Jacep. Uh, I forgot about you, my son. Let's sort by prestige gain and... Okay, you grew up. I was... These people are updating their profile as soon as I match with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not cool. You're, like, way um, different looking than you were in your original image. How many of them need to be updated? <laughs> Why are you guys still putting, like, your baby photos in here? <laughs> I don't know why that happens sometimes. Okay, anyways. Um, maybe I should look for people who have claims. That might be cool. Who's got the best claim? And or the best skills? 19 intrigue. Look at this person. Chiefess Lydia. Gluttonous, diligent, impatient, is intelligent, but club-footed. The intelligent is congenital. Big diplomacy, martial, pretty good stats all around. That looks like the best match for you. They are related, and there was a risk of their children being inbred. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. By who? I don't even know who Chieftain Puavila is. Chiefness in Geva. Don't know who that is. Lavoy. Who is that? Ju Julia? No last name. Never even seen a no last name person before. I actually, seriously, un unironically, I don't recognize any of these people. So while I totally believe this is true, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> if I hadn't heard of any direct connections, it's probably fine. Charming High King Brozor of Sugberia. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. May Limpo bless our union. Alright, I gotta pause, because this is too much. Didn't we already search for a physician? We can search for more. Take concubine. Arrogant, patient, generous. Why are you even in prison? Were you imprisoned from the last siege that we just did? We are related. And there was a... What? By who? Ofte? I don't know who these guys are. Oh, oh I saw Utrotal. My aunt. Hold on. Chat. Listen. How? Listen. My aunt's... Uh... Grand, great granddaughter. My aunt's great granddaughter, and by the way, she wasn't even like. Uh, she was only an aunt on one side, I think. Because her mom was Kanyava, which was um, Don King Don. Hang on. And yeah, I was Don the Putyava. Okay, that's right. It's fine. Okay, Uzendat can marry? What a strong uh, Siberian name, Uzendat. She's deceitful, ambitious, and chaste. <laughs> Only an aunt on one side. Yeah, like as in... She had different mom than my great-grandparent. I, I don't... Listen, it made, it made sense. Another intelligent individual who's brave, honest, and diligent. Unfortunately, he is not of our religion. He's from Nongchos. And we lose 400 prestige. It'll be fine, though. Imagine all of our intelligent 
grandchildren. Oh, Tugan. Um, I barely knew you, Chief Tugan, because you were 28, but you died of the bubonic plague gout, your face got disfigured, and you were wounded in combat somehow. That's a pretty big group of bad things. I love that my daughter is 22 and has been working to get- She's been assuring me that she only needs a little bit more time to find secrets for like four years. I don't think she's actually working. Alright, oozing that. I got a demand conversion from your new husband. The world is full of... D oh, these are the two new uh, physician can... Uh! Renowned physician. 16 learning. Comely. Compassionate, arrogant, and craven. Definitely gotta hire him. So... If I sort by learning... In my own court. Said Yamka's still the smartest with 22. But, renowned physician has got to have some kind, like, that's a, that's a level three, dude. I don't know, though. But this guy is my champion. I'll give it back. <laughs> he is just way smarter. Alright, converted to Minesco. Everybody's getting married. Prisoners can be ransomed. Good point. Let's get rid of these guys. 25 gold ransom. Welcome to covetous gambler jail. Where when you don't pay up, we don't pay out. Thirty-one gold is all I can get from you, and you've been in prison for nine years. Because <laughs> he won't convert. He's already Sue Minusco. Oh. Whatever, just get out of my get out of my prison. Greetings, Brozor. I accept your ransom and pay you the money. Chad, I got too much money. I gotta spend it all before I die. What should I spend it on? I'm 74. I got cancer, but I got a big health boost. Maybe I should drink some more. Give me some more wine. Hey, finished increased control and county task. That's actually a big deal. So what we're looking for is non-purple. Anything that's not purple is not 100%. Um, I now have full control over my new capital duchy, which are these four counties. And I kind of just want to go to the places that have the lowest control and then pop you down and then kind of forget to help other people out. Because I end up getting more taxes and more levies if I help them out. Building your home province? Already all the way built for tribal. Nothing else to build. I can build other people's. Plenty. But, um, not in mine. So, uh, what I'll probably do is take a look at the vassal list. Specifically tribal vassals. It's nice that you can separate them at least. And kind of look around and see um, <laughs> four, Chieftain Kloptod's got 4,000 troops. <laughs> Uh, I guess I can just click on some spots at random. Fully upgraded everything. There's not really anything to upgrade. I only have one tier of three out of four buildings. As a tribal. What about absolute tribal authority? Big mistake. 
because when I die, my son inherits a negative 30 opinion. Not a good plan. Do you have max minute arms? Yep. I got max minute arms, and they're currently just topping off. So it's really just got to be building buildings in random places. So if I try to do this by person, it's just not going to work. Um, what I'll probably do is just find the kingdoms that my son, my heir, is going to inherit and try to build those up because they'll he'll get directly benefit more. So for example, he's got, he's got the kingdom of Cumania um, going to him for sure. So what I'll probably do is just sort by kingdom view. And then just go to all the little holdings here and see if they've got full buildings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I can just upgrade the markets, I guess, for more taxes. And your tribal holding. What sucks is whenever I go to feudal, I'm going to have to do this all over again. But I'm not going to be going to feudal for a while. Because I don't have three holy sites. So reforming my religion's not really a thing. They have some tax markets for you. She's already good. <laughs> my vassals have been very, <laughs> very busy. I can't upgrade any of theirs. Only the holder of this building or the liege. Oh, I'm in the wrong kingdom. I'm in like enemy territory. These are all mine. Once we research some new building types, like palisades, I'll have a bunch of upgrades to do. All right, well that's Cumania. Uh, what about Succubiria for my kids? I guess I can upgrade the tribal hold. Well, I thought that, um, Quirtle... Oh, here we go. You a war camp, knight effectiveness, number of knights plus one. I don't think that helps me, but it's still nice for the people that are there. Definitely want some palisades. But yeah, there's not really any rhyme or reason behind this chat. I'm just trying to spend my resources because they are considerable. So I'm doing a favor for like everyone in the entire empire by spending 220 gold, 400 prestige per... And it takes a four-year upgrade, but when it's done, it's a fortified tribal holding that increases taxes, fort levels, uh, by plus two. Instead of plus one, the levies double and the garrison doubles, so they're much harder to siege. They simplify buildings. Uh, I'm not feudal, so if you go feudal, you have a lot more options. But I can't go feudal. So for now, we're just dealing with stinky tribal buildings. All right, that one's already upgrading. Got one empty spot here. So yeah, I may as well, I wish you did get a bonus. Like if you spend all that to help someone who's not directly your vassal, it'd be really cool if you got like a opinion buff because you're doing them a pretty huge favor there, you know? All right, I just spent as much as I can see without looking at Ob. Because some of these are empty, I guess. See, like Castle, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six different buildings, uh, plus the castle itself, plus holdings, which I can't construct. Um, but I can still build him... No, I can't. Okay, can you convert feudal? <laughs> can you convert feudal to back to tribal? Because I don't think I can build any buildings here. I can here though, because the liege is the right, you know, government type. Weird. Uh, I would say.
probably just forts. A lot of these are edge buildings, like right here on the edge of our current domain. Watchtowers are a fort level and garrison bonus as well. That'll take three years. See, like, this one's held by me, but I can't... <laughs> I'm tribal government, so even though I can tell them to build next to me, I can't build tribal buildings here, which is weird. So it's probably in my better interest to give my ob... Well, my sons will inherit them, I guess. I don't know. But you can't build anything. How do you... Can you downgrade back to tribal? The best you can do is build a tribe in that county and then grant the castle to a baron. What? But I can't build any baronies because I'm not feudal. How do I build a tribe? What does that mean? That's for CK2. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> Sorry, did I take advice from Jet? Can you just change the hold building? Not that I know of. Once they convert to feudal, they seem stuck there. Unless there's a secret button I don't know of. And Chat doesn't know either. Well, I spent as much as I could. The The monthly income, like, the money will pass over. My prestige will die with me, though. No! Arnaz is dead of old age at 86! What an ox! Almost made it to 90. Well... I hope he died peacefully as an administrating avaricious physician. His athleticism knew no bounds, and we saved that guy a few years ago. Remember that? That was crazy. All right, we sieged that successfully. Now we're just looking for... Uh, I don't know why the first army of Umiyai is hostile. And I can't click... Why is first army of Umiyai has... Oh! They're Yumi Umiai now. I see. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, wow, that's me. No, it's not. <laughs> that's not me. So what I want to do is set a waypoint. See, this is kind of cheesy. I can raise my army, like, right next to them. Oh, wait. Control right click, and away we go. We should beat them pretty handily. Yeah, potential battle in 20 days. They get to defend, but we're doing basically everything better. So, we got light footmen, horsemen, and a 1500 special archer Metzenvartias. And even on one time speed, these guys are getting squished. They've only routed a hundred of mine versus a thousand of theirs, and we're just in the early battle phase because they're being hard countered by my elite troops. And uh, enemy defensive advantage is down 50% as well because of this flexible leader. 3,000 troops out of nowhere, dude! Yeah, I feel like multiplayer would be pretty tough in this because of that. Actually, I think they just need to extend the time it takes to gather an army. That would probably be an easy balance. They, they, they gather really fast. <laughs> and then, see, you can do it again. Disband there. It's not easy being cheesy, chat. Oh, well, we can't do that. That's a little too close. But, uh, this is not. <laughs> Hi. 
And my army is ready to... I could even go sooner. I'm just letting some peasants join. All right, they're ready to go. Being able to instantly teleport men at arms is one of the big immersion breakers compared to previous games. Yeah, a little bit. I think you should still be able to teleport them with the rally points, but just have the same restrictions that peasants have. Like if I try to raise levies and put them back, you can only do that twice, or else they have to wait 10 month penalty to regroup. And for some reason that only applies to levies and doesn't apply to men at arms or mercenaries, as we found out earlier. So, I think I think they just slept slipped through the cracks. Because it's a thing they already thought about for levies, but for some reason didn't apply them to special troops. So it might have just been oversight. Or maybe that's how they want it. I don't know. Who am I to say? But it seems like it's backwards. Like the peasants are weaker and have more penalties. After learning that High Chieftain Oshmar would be guesting at a manor in the castle town of... Uliastai. I realized that it would be the perfect occasion to meet with him. By my request, I was seated next to him for the duration of dinner, and we both had a great time. I was surprised how much we had to talk about. By the time I left, I thought I felt as though we had known each other a lifetime already. What a pleasant man! And you've become friends with High Chieftain Ashmar, the rapacious antagonist. Yeah, I mean, Paradox has shown that they're more than willing to revamp whole gameplay mechanics with Stellaris. So I'm not, I would not be surprised to see many of these things that we're kind of getting used to cheesing now just be totally changed one way or the other. They've been good about kind of updating stuff like that. All right, we'll be defending in the taiga. We have defensive buildings here. We are relieving the siege in progress. Oh, I'm on one time speed. I was like, why is this taking so long? The enemy commander, he's leading himself, dude. The king is here. I don't think we captured him, though. You learned of Nakol's non believer secret. She finished finding tasks and can just go back to disrupting schemes because I'm getting tired of looking for other stuff. All right, siege is relieved. These guys are heading in. I just say let them walk on in. We'll just fight them too. Because they're getting squished. We killed 1,700 men. <laughs> they killed like 70. Again, 1,700 losses, 31 losses on my side. The slaughter at Yashkar Ola. This is just embarrassing for you guys. My champions are cleaning up, getting hundreds of kills each. 2200 killed earlier, the slaughter at Kirtan. This is probably the worst war you could have waged. I hope that in the future as well, like when they literally have less than 2,000 troops and they can see that you have 23,000, they just start, they never surrender. Only the player can surrender, I think. I don't know, maybe it's time based. I've never seen an AI just go, we're beat, I'm done. For sure. New Arnez. Your wife has gained you 150 prestige. I'm worried I'm going to outlive my wife at this point. We got this dude Oleg. We'll take a look at our captives after this. Alright, I'm going to go for these guys. Should be easy. It kind of fits that people suck Barry are quick to organize the defense of their lands. They seem to be in touch with nature. That may be true, but I promise you, no matter how in touch you are with your lands, when you live in Siberia, <laughs> uh, you're not going to be able to get across that entire vast distance efficiently or quickly. We're talking a matter of weeks. Like, a week. Captured two war targets, it looks like. Finland is being very aggressive. I don't think that's mine. Someone else's. 
problem. But yeah, Finland, uh, we could go march over there, but it just seems like... Why bother, I guess? When we're doing just fine right here. How's my leader doing? He's 75 now, so if you bet 74, you're wrong. Trying to take Finland back before we die. Another 1,500 deaths. Okay, new learning perk. So let's figure out what we want. Clergy opinion seems eh for us. Convert faith is good. Maybe I'll go for convert faith. It's either that or just take cultural fascination. But... The time it takes to convert a county is no longer increased if that faith has a higher fervor than yours. I don't think that's an issue. Learning per level of devotion. Different culture opinion. Hmm, that might be cool. Your wards can get additional skills and become your friends. Whoops. That would have been nice to have a while ago. I guess let's just take Cultural Fascination Progress 35%. I've been wanting to do it every single time and just haven't. Uh, we're researching stuff to try to get out of... Into Feudal, rather. Alright, what else we got? Is this my boy? The son of Hercules? <laughs> it is. Why does he already have a, a title in Tomsk? I don't know. Family members can get married. Your grandson is 16 evil lackey. Callous and cold-hearted, deceitful in his nature, but generous. He is hale. Why are my granddaughters the first two <laughs> choices? Um, giant. Just, diligent, callous, giant. Absolutely. Graciously, I will take the hand of your grandson. Okay. Ran oh, we have, uh... We do have people from the war. But I don't know if that's contributing to our war score or not. You can change Countess Nazika's contract. I don't care about that. Here's what I care about. I care about kicking out this high chiefess that I can't kick out. She forced herself in here with a with a hook. <laughs> I can create so many titles. I'm just waiting until my next uh, son takes over. Hello, granddaughter. Why am I in charge of marrying you? Um... There's not a ton of people. There's only two that have inheritable traits. What is this? Fruitful and fertile. Ambitious, callous, and brave. How... F how, um... How do you say... I don't know how to say that. Fecund? I don't know what that means. Alright, matrilineal marriage. You lose 400 prestige. We got hail. Wow. And bo both of these together would be really good. Fecund? Isn't that just like a Battlestar Galactica square? I gladly accept your marriage proposal. I will graciously take the hand of your granddaughter, Rav Zava, in holy matrimony. <laughs> Feckin' heck. <laughs> okay. Well, he's gotta die sometime. I mean, cancer doesn't just miraculously go away. He's still obese. I guess, you know, it's tough.
Finso Bork of... Oh, he's losing ground, dude. Did we just take more? I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're taking more land. Are my vassals going to war against Kyrgyz Ud? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just says neighboring ruler lost a war against my own vassal. <laughs> They're just taking care of it, I guess. Okay, go for it, guys. Go all the way into Mongolia. I'm down. This is the fun part. I like when, you're, when your empire gets big enough where your vassals just start doing fun, like, emergent gameplay stuff. Kyrgyz only have 110 troops total. Wow. I could probably just take, like, this full duchy over here. That's, like, five counties. Kind of just chilling until Finland says no more. Oh. What are you guys doing down there? King Ofte has come to be wanting to share something that's been burdening his spirit. I showed the greatest understanding to my friend. Inside, I felt more than a little curiosity. You are right to place your trust in me. You learn of King Ofte's murder secret. Your brother-in-law and friend. And also, why is your spouse 19 years old and imprisoned? And betrothed to you. And imprisoned by Ruthenia. And you have an eye patch. That's really not helping your case. What did, who did you kill? What's it, uh... This character is a murderer. Who? How do I find out? Why do I have a secret known to me of... Dead people. Unpause and he will tell you. I already unpaused! I'm waiting. How, how long is the story? Wow, chat lied? No way. Some of that... Can you believe it? I can't even tell who not to believe anymore because there's been so many gift subs that all the people with like 10 messages in chat are sub now. Not that subs have ever historically been trustworthy. <laughs> Dragon Rogue thought that was funny. Hello, Inspect Element. How's it going? A sub would never lie. You can trust me. I never lie. <laughs> Liar cute chat is online. <laughs> Subs get higher intrigue for plots. Don't worry, Talix. I'm not a sub. You can trust me. I already do, Chestnut. I already feel like I can s trust anything you say. Am I gonna commission a third epic? No, that actually spends money. We could do claimants again. That's 1500. That's probably the best use of our in our, uh, prestige we're gonna get. I won't feel as bad with 1500 and the bank is 3000. Though rip all my piety. Definitely can't trust anyone with a VIP badge. That's for sure. It's not the first time I have heard talk of what a great servant Oshama is. And now, High Chieftain Jebeg has sent her to my court. She presents herself as a token of friendship between Jebeg and me. 21 learning, theologian, and an astute intellectual. <laughs> I 
I trust Squid Liuda. I trust Liuda, but not Squid. Wow. <laughs> uh, I don't think you can trust somebody who's come up with not one but two stretch psycho emotes. That's pretty implicit. This is this is uh, from my best friend. Welcome into my service, Oshama. My vassal was killed in a siege. That doesn't happen very often. You're the new vassal? How am I supposed to do business with you, huh? What, you got 723 troops? Can you even count that high? <laughs> All right, here come the noble people with claims. Maybe we'll get lucky. Doubt it. All right, you can you can stay. Plus 100. Wow. Living legend works quite a bit. Another guest who's 77. All right, we have to act fast on these. Duchy of Isham, that's just in my own territory. I think these are all in my own territory, so I don't really care about your claims. Uh, this dude's got zero prowess. That's impressive. Ill, drunk, an adulterer, and has a burning lust for other people, and a failed disease treatment that actually made things worse. <laughs> Zero prowess. Alright, Finland, we're only at 54%, dude. Oh, there's a battle going on over here. It ain't much of one. We've lost a hundred... We've routed a hundred friends. We only lost 66 people. We killed 2,588. Get absolutely destroyed. Metz and Vartia roll out. They had onagers. <laughs> Footmen, one champion in 2,000 levies. No injuries on our side. <laughs> I think that's a war crime. <laughs> These are just three chiefdoms. I guess it can't hurt to just have some more people at court. Well, it got us a 62%. Wait, did you guys siege this? Who sieged this? Who's holding this? Why is Tingriism here? Alright, let's promote some more culture. It's good to get the, the Ostiak culture continuing to spread. Um, it's kind of hard to do. Secrets of Nature. By the way, uh, this person is 55 and whole of body, medium health boost. Dwarf, which is congenital gray eminence, but only has those eight points. I am always. I have received an offer from Tundava Tuman, a noblewoman from Astana. If the letter is to be believed, she is an experienced herbalist who would be willing to share her knowledge in return for room and board. Become a herbalist. Disease resistance, medium boost. I am going to live forever. She stays at your court. Three, <laughs> three learning. How does she teach me how to be a herbalist, dude? Being just doesn't make you a good herbalist. What's in these herbs? She should plant a uh, garden of sacred herbs. A rare flower would brighten my wife's day. I don't have time to muck around in dirt and plants. She likes to taste plants. Okay, well, I'm gonna live forever. I got a medium disease resistance boost. 
We have uh, three such boosts. It's also an intrigue and learning buff. Herbalism, dude. Well versed in herbs, botany, and medical practices related to plants. <laughs> All right, I need to make a save. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King Brozor Forever. It's gonna be the name of the save. We haven't saved in a while. And also, I want to take a screenshot because the dude, this is oldest by far. And we'll look at the rest of the world too. I can't really see all of it. Well, let's just do Sukberia, which is getting very large. And then the known world. How we doing, world? Scandinavia blew up. Guess who's still around? Vestergotland. Italia wants a piece of Denmark <laughs> and Norway. Uh, Alba is trying to get back their former glory. They're quickly dissipating. West France and Aquitaine are standing against Italy, who is ruled by an empress, which is pretty cool. King Benoit is getting the pizza out of the oven. The Umiads got four. I thought I said 48,000. I got really scared for a second. Molly is. Okay. Well, Molly's about to blow up. I was rooting for you, Molly, but you can't win with 2,000 troops. I'm sorry. This game is absolutely fascinating. I really like this. It is fascinating, yeah. What's up, Snoop? Howdy, everybody else is just popping in. Nubia, though, said, enough. I'm going up to Egypt, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to get right on Jerusalem's doorstep. Wow. This is the first time in the whole game, chat. I, not that I've searched for them. Okay, this is the, I've never searched for it, but in... 80 hours. This is the first time I have ever seen a genius in my game in the wild. So, mark it. 29 intrigue. He can do whatever he wants. And is a seducer. <laughs> genius seducer. What a combo. Has four kingdoms under his belt. No, three. <laughs> Big, sexy brain. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Who's your heir? No way. Also a genius. You passed on to your heir, who's only 18 and has a 22 intrigue and 14 diplomacy. Coptic. Organized Christian faith? You guys are Coptic? Anyway, that's sick. Abbasids. Saeed, same faith opinion trait. This is getting pretty big. What are we, up here by like Nepal or something? Obviously, this is right here. It, Chad, is Nepal like right here? And then India itself, how high does India go? Like here? Got the impassable terrain desert. Zetizu is pretty big, but not that big. Not as big as Sukberia, dude. Alright, Mordvinia, can you guys... I can blackmail you. Hold on. What? Okay, Avte, I know about your murder plot. But I don't think it's enough um, to get you to vassalize. Can you use a hook in vassalization? <laughs> there have been wars about that. What, like how high India goes? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Rip Count Arnaz. Miss you, bud. I gotta unpin you now, though. 
Okay, so we got the siege. We're at 73%. We're just looking for any enemy forces, I guess. And then we can take back our Finland land. All right, um, anything else I can do before... I mean, I'm 76. I'm just feeling like I'm going to die any time, but then I just keep getting more disease resistances. My nephew was taken prisoner by my vassal. What are some other moves I can make before I go? Let's just look at the major decisions. Let's just slow down for a minute. No rush. Uh, Dynasty of Many Crowns is... 10 members of your dynasty are independent ruler. That could be really good if you get, like, 10 kings. And then somehow spread them out amongst 10 children. And you could probably get this. That might be fun. Strengthen the bloodline. You need to kind of work in good traits. Consecrate bloodline. We have to organize Suomanusko. Same thing for adopting. You can adopt a different religion though and that'll make things easier for you to do. I just want to do it all myself. So I need... Any Suomanusko site is held by you. At least five of your vassals is powerful and has at least a 60 opinion of you. How do I have zero out of five here? This doesn't make any sense. It's amazing your wife is still alive too. She was like... Yeah, eight years younger than me. My vassals are powerful and have an opinion of 60. For sure. I'm an <laughs> I'm an empire. Uh court. Hang on. See? Oh, she doesn't have 60. None of my powerful vassals like me. <laughs> what happened, guys? I thought we had a good thing going. Who what? None of them. What? Evil atheists. Here. I got, like, so much money, dude. You know what? I have been hoarding. It's true. Someone in chat was wondering when I was fine. Bro. 450 gold? But I get 113 opinion? <laughs> okay, you know what? That's pretty fast. That's a lot of money. That's a good return on investment. That's the biggest opinion boost I've ever seen. All about the money with the greed. Oh, because I'm given to a greedy individual so they get a bigger reward. A lot of money, though. This is a small fortune chat. You know what? I don't know. I'm My character is patient, correct? So it would be RP to go ahead and sway her. It'll take some time. Plus, I don't even have the land I want anyway. I Chieftain Zarni, I think, just got money. You've already sent a gift to him. And then you can have 37. Okay, that's a start in the right direction for my powerful vassals. Which is just good to do anyways when I have 2,000 gold. I was paying them like two months wages, and it's nice because it's going to prevent any big, giant uh, factions from coming my way. Which I don't think they would anyway. Now, we have another thing to do, which I've never done. Hi, Chieftain Klop Todd. Oh, he's my brother and steward. I need perm, my dude. But I don't want to fabricate a claim on you because you're my you're my boy. Which one of you was plotting against me like 30 years ago, though? <laughs> okay, I'm forgiving. I am forgiving. But what if I just did this act of tyranny? Listen, just one act of tyranny as a treat. That's all I'm saying. 
In my whole life, I just wanted to know what it felt like to do a single act of tyranny. That's all. Is that so bad? Uh, actually, what about this? Don't I already have a claim on the chiefdom of Perm? No, I actually don't. Chat, what if I just, I don't know, used my family renown, which I created, let's be real, to, um, I don't know, claim just a little title. <laughs> we lose 150 renown. <laughs> he loses 50 opinion as I claim his title, but like, come on, he's my bro. We're friends. Yeah, that's kind of what I don't know. I don't know how to press a claim as um, if against a vassal. Can we just do this for science? Because I just need to learn. Like, if I claim a title with my family's renown, I don't even want the high chiefdom, though. You can keep the duchy. I... I just want one county. Still loves me. He understands, dude. He understands. It's really not personal. Listen. Okay, bro. Listen, bro. I'll give you 37 gold out of my 2,000. <laughs> it's like you have a family member that's like, Hey, uh, if, if you won the lottery, uh, would you split it with me? How much are we talking here? Uh, okay, let's say you win 100 million. Okay. 100 million. I think I could spare... How does 100,000 sound? If you reinvest that, you could have a million in like, I don't know, 10 years or less if you play it smart. It's 100 grand. Out of my 100 mil. Bro, dude, we were best friends growing up. Is that all you got? How about, listen, 100 million. I'm not asking for much. Just 1 million. That's only 1% for your best bro. I don't know. I'm gonna have to take the county of Perm for that, bro. I don't even know how to do it, but I just send him money. If I revoke the chiefdom of Perm, I have a claim on the title allowing me to revoke it without being viewed as a tyrant. Okay, so that's insane. You can use your family renown to use... I don't know if this weakens your dynasty at all. There might be other side effects. But you can claim titles at the cost of individual opinion from that family member. Then you can press it by revoking it, which is a huge debuff on their personal relationship. He loses 80 opinion for 10 years because I pressed the claim. But because my um, realm allows revoking of titles due to our government type, I can none of my other vassals bat an eye. They're all just like, yep, that's yours. Uh-huh. I just lose. I get nine stress because I'm typically forgiving. And the control level in perm goes down. Huh. That's amazing. He will 100% accept a well as well because he loves me. Plus 80 from opinion. I have a valid claim. I only have one negative. That is crazy, chat. Greetings, my sensible liege. Leech, I see no choice but to bow to your decision to strip me of the chiefdom of Perm. Just so. Okay, it says this is an act of tyranny, which is a bug. It doesn't actually give you a tyranny debuff. I don't know why it says that. You can tell, because you can go to other members of your realm, and there is no tyranny debuff. So now I have eight out of six domain. Now watch this, chat. Because he's my bro, and he understands I just needed Perm, which was the seat of his duchy. 
Oh, by the way, I can help build this up. Let's get Palisades there. Finished in two years. Defender advantage. Levies and garrison buff. But yeah, I just go say, Yo, Chieftain Cloptot, you were really cool about that. I, I do appreciate it. I was just thinking, you know, how do you feel? What Do you want, like, a title over here? Because I got some I can pass out. Not that one, though. Nothing in Kazakh. These ones would actually be good. Because I can't build in them anyway. <laughs> They're futile. I don't, I don't even think either of us can build in them. Uh, but he doesn't know the difference. As far as he's concerned, this is a totally reasonable thing. And in fact, it's good. So, uh, here you go. That's for you, dude. Chieftain of Kulunda. You are my steward, after all. Okay, there we go. I had to do some paperwork, but we got it. Now, the reason I needed that chat is because um, I had to borrow Perm, because it is literally the only holy site for our religion in the entire empire. As thick as we are in Sukberia, this is the only holy site for Suomanuskos. All the other ones are way over here by Estonia and Finland. And, um, I think there's one in Western Europe. Ish. Ish. Not really, though. Gotta go to Lithuania. Slash. Russia. Just kidding. Prussia. So that's, uh, I, I kind of had to do a little hot swap there. Because I'm trying before my last thing before I die. I just need to get five powerful vassals that all like me. Three out of five. So we're at... I just need to get High Chieftess Layava and Duchess Pudyaka. All right, fine. I know I'm patient. How much time can I possibly have left? <laughs> I gotta get both of them and then I can do the thing. Foreign forces are skirting our territories like a pack of hungry wolves. If the ways of old are to survive, I must win the respect of the clans. Together we will raise a glorious war hall in Perkeel's honor. Perm gains a building slot. You gain the building Hall of Heroes, where heroic warriors can meet and organize. Sumanusko fervor goes up. You become a defender of the faith. Dude, that would be amazing for my son to have, but it's just going to take a long time. I actually could just let my son do it. Because that plus 10 same faith opinion would be a big help. He also becomes a holy warrior automatically. Many Sumanusko warriors in your realm will also become holy warriors. So I wonder if it's worth just waiting now that it's in the succession. Let's see. Who gets it? Who gets perm? No! JSOP, that's not for you! <laughs> Take, um... Oh yeah, my son is... wait, that's true. My son is a, is a atheist. A vindictive atheist at that. Whatever. I'll do it. Brozor can do it then. So, listen, the, the real talk is... Um, the safest play, since I'm already 77, and I want this to happen in my lifetime. It sucks to do it because it's going to be very expensive. But here's what I do. I just send a gift. 450 gold. Ouch. Got her to a plus 46. Call to war, says Chieftess Lydia. Chieftess Lydia, do you know? First of all, I don't even know how I am allied with you. Join as an attacker. 
Um, vassal in the high chiefdom of Ustyug. Oh, that's who I married my son to. Did we accidentally chat? Did I marry matrilineally? On accident. No, I think she just has one title. <laughs> okay, no, she just has one title. Uh, I decline. <laughs> Still in House Avrin? Yeah, you're right. So the reason I'm getting such a big boost to opinion is because Thoughtful gives you a 100% uh, gain from sending a gift. So it, it doubles what they normally would get um, from money. Very thoughtful. I am King Brozor, after all. How are we still at war with Finland? Explain. Does declining a call break an alliance? Not anymore! In Crusader Kings 2 it did. Now it's just a negative 10 mood buff. If they accept, alliances are significantly more expensive to ask. So she would have had, if I said yes, she has to pay 750 prestige because of my rank as emperor, basically. So you can't, uh, just be aware if you're a CK2 vet and you get CK3, don't count on instant alliances like in CK2. Like I made a uh, Carling alliance with West France and they saved my ass a few times for free um, as a Norse Viking. I mean, a Norse Crusader. Not anymore. You gotta be able to pay that prestige. Alright, we jumped that up to 90. Gives him minus 25. That is a minus 10, Hysterium. It's free for defensive wars. That's cool. Good to know that distinction. Uh, Dunya has decided that her time in Astana has come to an end. The servants have packed their chests and said their farewells. With her goes claims, eh, who cares? Get out of here. <laughs> wow, chat light, no way. Thank you some of that for the gifts, the bits, who said Twitch tried to stop me, but I watched ads to the red badge. They, they do that still? I didn't think that they still did watch ads for bits. That exists? Oh, I have a lifestyle perk. Oops. We don't have development. <laughs> Give me... Yeah, but learning per devotion is pretty cool. That'd be at least like a plus six. So I'm just going to pick it, even though I don't think I use it at all. De uh, development's super useful for feudal, but not for me. Not me. Who's going to die first, this war or me? Come, my champions. You can uh, negotiate an alliance with Chief Brozor, your grandson. Eh. Why not? Sway, infiltrators. It's come to my attention that some local commoners are moving to Socher, the capital of my vassal Duchess Pudyaka. Locals, newly settled or not, praising me can surely do no harm to her perception of me. 80 gold and gain progress. Yeah, sure, let's go fast. We got 16 hundo. You might want to get a physician. Um... I have one. I just can search for more if I want. 
My grandfather, I am honored by your request, and I would be glad to call you an ally. Marvelous news! What was that? Oh, that means we won! Well, this little Finland space is coming back! Greetings, Brozor of Sukberia, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. Yeah, yeah, you are a much greater foe than I imagined. My mom made me write this. In order to put it into the bloodshed, I'll comply with your demands. I guess. If I have to. So, um... Umiai? So Set Yamka... <laughs> I thought he was my vassal? And then he wasn't my vassal, and now he's my vassal again. He's back. And he's considered powerful, which means I need to send, I can send him a gift for 53 opinion. That is handy. Hello, said Yamka. This is to pay for the damage. And now, chat, I should be only one away from Defender Vuko. No, three out of five? Your grandson has been released from prison. <laughs> A champion has arrived. 19 prowess, just forgiving, but fickle. Strong. Hire you immediately. Temple's Chiefdom of Astana gained religious construction for five years. Pretty cool. Alright, why do I only have five strong vassals? It has to be over, what does it have to be over, 60? She's not considered strong anymore. <laughs> what? Oh man. All right, start swaying you. Zarni, you shouldn't even be a guy anymore. I exposed you for murder a long time ago. You don't look so good. How many times have you called me to the same war? No. I will see you fracture. <laughs> oh. At this point, I'm just going to keep playing until High King Brozor dies. I thought we were going to get to play as Murgrin, but he's 41. Murgrin's going to end up being our shortest playthrough. Um, and I don't know how it's going to go, because we are going to be somewhat behind once we take over. Because I'm in a, like, historically speaking, he's only got 25 years left. Brozor has outaged the previous high score by 10 years and is apparently still in fine health. This is like uh, when you get uh, Isaac run that's just like god tier, you know what I mean? And it feels like even, not even, um... In this case, cancer can hold us back. Chiefdom of Astana has some peasant ravel. You, Anava died. Sorry, Anava. You were gout ridden, but I needed you to die because you were forcefully taking my diplomacy away from me. Now, this is actually fantastic because I can put Zarni back as my counselor even though I exposed him for killing that guy. I'm sure he understands as a fellow diplomat and a fellow murderer. It's gregarious, content, but fickle. We could also pick High Chiefess uh, Pudyante, but this is beneficial because it'll give him a huge rep bonus and help me get what I want when it comes to the big decisions. So it just makes sense. He's also the best. Instantly plus 100. Okay, and at that point, I got four out of five. There's only one more person remaining, and it's High Chiefess Layava the Fool. Why is there no opinion of fellow murderers plus ten? I guess it's just bad no matter what. Can't you send her a ward? I mean, for like plus 15, but I have a 100% guarantee of swaying. And also, all of my children have been married for like eight years. Garlic salt, you're like the family member. 
that went away and then came back and is like, Oh, where's my sweet little grandchildren? I'm all grown up now. Oh, your cheeks are just so cute. Let me pinch them. Uh, Grandma, I've already graduated college and I have three kids. My hair is gray. Okay, from the stress of trying to work as a millennial and pay the bills. Hunter, cautious leader, misguided warrior, humble, greedy, and gluttonous. But you know what? 17 prowess. It is what it is. Convert, please. And instantly plus 100. I love the Wallace and Gromit stance. This is my favorite. I can't even, um... Selected, apparently. Eh, this one will work. <laughs> I love the, like, hand... Wallace and Gromit hand stance. <laughs> uh, so good. <laughs> That's my favorite one. I really want to watch those movies again. <laughs> Alright, you guys can finally be disbanded. My bad. We did a- there was a full-on subjugation war, and you lost. So what does that mean? New realm? Your neighbor Bork has lost against conquest of a county. Who cares? Rip a Nava. Is something wrong, chat? I don't see it. No. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> Benign Brozor, the people of the chiefdom of Astana have finally been convinced to convert to the true faith. There are practically no more heretics in the whole of Astana. Well, that's actually great, because that is our new capital, which is now considered Ostiak and Suomenusko. We're trying to convert the religion of each... of our new duchy. Takes 10 years at a time, though. Especially with a guy who's only level 14. I think I can fire him, though. All right, fire you. <laughs> of course, a guy that's even worse. All right, I don't know why you can... Whatever. Get out of here. No, we can do better than a 12. Why am I allowed to fire these guys? Really? Dude, a four? Six? I didn't know how good I had it. Three? Thirteen, getting better. Is that the same guy? Dondi, his name's Dondi? You can place one? Nope, not in my religion. Maybe. I'll try it, but if you're wrong, you're gonna be banned. We've tried this a dozen times. What? I can put one in? All right, I'm banned. Since when? I have already tried this. Get wrecked. Okay, fine. Listen, I can dish it, I can take it. Ban streamer. Uh, we have attempted that many times. Even as far back as the first stream. There's some secret hidden rules about it that I don't know. Alright, whatever. Noidi set Yamka of Sagbiria as my court physician, apparently, and Noidi, and champion. Could have done that a long time ago, dude. 
See, now I cannot reassign anyone until 1033. There's a 10 year period on it. No, he's still a physician. He's not landed. If I land him, he can't be the physician anymore. Well, there you go. We shaved three years off that timer. And he endorses us, of course. So in theory, you can literally fire people for free there forever until you get a crit. It's still busted somehow. Like, basically this is what, um, in CK2 was a decision, except it cost piety to do, to summon new ones. Probably will again, they just haven't got it in the game yet. I'm 78. Fine health. How is this possible? All right, realm-wise, did we succeed in swaying you? Not yet. That's kind of the last thing we're waiting on is this. Hi, Chief. This is Layava, the foolish, pale, drunkard, married to High Chieftain Verpon. You lose 20 opinion from each person you fire. Yeah, but they're nobodies made up from nowhere. We got 25 opinion. Hello, Liava. Oops. Who was that guy? Is that the guy? No, this... Patient, arrogant, trusting, 15, fantastic. Okay. At last. Whew! One of the final achievements of High King Brozo of Suckberia. He has peacefully usurped Perm from his own brother. It was given freely. He has paid off all of his powerful vassals to like him just long enough. He's been converting painstakingly all of his prisoners when possible and all of his new recruit champions to the Suomanusko faith. He has extended their borders and converted a new capital duchy in Kazakh and still converts more today. Now, I have become a defender of the faith. Really late in my life. And many Suomanusko warriors will become holy warriors. A new building slot in Perm will gain the Hall of Heroes. Under my leadership, the clans have united to raise a great war hall in Perm. Within its thick stone walls, we prepare for war. For generations, foreign scavengers have had their eyes on our lands. Let them come, I say. Let them test their might against our brave Sua Manusco heroes. Let their blood soak into the earth and color the rivers red. Hail Pakir. You gain the nickname Defender of Uko. Hi, King Brozor, the Defender of Uko. Of Suckberia. Watch as he instantly dies. That's fine. My son was never going to do it because Mergrin is a vindictive atheist and I refuse to RP a vindictive atheist into creating a holy warrior <laughs> uh, war hall. Honestly, High King Brozor did take the longest pilgrimage of any other person that we've played so far, and the most expensive one. And he's also done the most learning, so it makes sense that he would be the one to do it. Learning is his second highest trait behind Diplomacy. He is, of course, a Holy Warrior now as well, which he's not going to get to use, but I'm curious how many of my champions also... I guess the character finder would probably be the best way.
your son Brozor became a holy warrior? Um, yep, all the way down. Champion, 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 champion. A bunch of courtiers. So we got at least four champions out of it. That's just in our court. So if we do all, then, um, a lot more. Oh, wait, air? Did I say air? My bad. Brozor is not my air. But yeah, he is. Uh, Mergrin, my, my son and heir. Why, why are you guys saying, Mergrin, what are you doing? He got Holy Warrior. I'm confused. Kyoko, go to Jeff Jail. You confused me. I have class at 9.30 and I'm here. Well, it's only 1.57 here, Link. So you've got, by my count, seven and a half hours. So welcome and enjoy the next seven and a half hours of stream. You just said Brozor got Holy Warrior. Brozor did get Holy Warrior. And... This Brozor got Holy Warrior. So what Brozor didn't get Holy Warrior? I don't know. Anyway, uh, all these dudes are now Holy Warriors. <laughs> Hang on, just do Top Realm. 58 Holy Warriors. Just join the club, dude. So that's pretty cool. Um, if we look... These are all vassals. I mean, some of them may have had it before. We have a number of champions and also our sons. The Hall of Heroes has been constructed in Perm. So let's find it. There it is. Hall of Heroes 1, a special building. This holding in particular gets 150 levies, 75 garrison. Your whole realm gets one prowess. Every warrior? Piety per night, point one. That's really good, actually, because we only make four piety per month, so our next guys are going to get quite a bit. Tarima has fully embraced the Ostiak tradition. Thank you, Kloptop. Very nice. And all knights are 5% more effective, and it can be upgraded. Up to tier 5, which, um, requires a barony, I think. Prowess 3 for every warrior in the realm is insane. Knight effectiveness 25% is also insane. The time has come to treat your cancer. I would recommend drastic measures, but the choice is yours, my lord. You would. Do more than what is nec- No more than what is necessary. It is too late for caution. Could lead to permanent injuries. Leave me be. Without treatment, nature takes its course. What do you think? Hmm. We were patient last time. Maybe it's time um, to have a risky treatment and great outcomes, but could lead to worsened symptoms or permanent injuries. This is only a novice physician, but he is really smart. <laughs> I feel like as a, like, if this is a gamble, I think it's time to go all in. What about leave me be and just let... Uh-oh, health went to poor. That's what happened. Health went to poor. Chat, I think we gotta go all in. He's 79. He's done everything he can do. He's got... Listen, it's it's all or nothing. Either... What would the Suomanuskos do, chat? They value bravery. 
justice and stubbornness. They would go all in, even if it cost death. And that is what my Noidi, my new champion and court physician, recommend. It is too late for caution. <laughs> I became a eunuch! Said Yamka gave me a draught which tasted most peculiar. It made me feel numb and my eyelids started drooping. I apologize, my lord, but you do not want to be awake for this next part, he said. Panic hit me and I tried to get up from the operating table, but my limbs would not obey. The treatment was almost as unpleasant as my symptoms, yet seems to have been effective. While I am not fully cured, I feel much better. Wow. Anyways, chat, nothing personal. But no event spoilers. Thank you. Luckily, I did not read it, so I got to enjoy it and be surprised. I think it should go without saying that the game that's only been out for less than two weeks, I haven't seen all the events yet. But thankfully, I got to enjoy it myself. I will live to see another day. You gained greatly reduced disease symptoms for five years. You gained the trait Eunuch and the trait Wounded. Mm. So it's still a severe health penalty. Attraction minus 20, cannot have children, may not inherit titles, may not mar marry, been intentionally castrated, but I live to see another day, but still wounded. Wounded is not great. Okay. Well, we're going to find out one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I I declare celibacy. Is that how this works? After I become a eunuch? Ow. You gain 30 stress because you are a famous reveler. You have the restraint perk. What? Oh, so you can't embrace celibacy if you are a famous reveler. Okay. Interesting. Well, that was cool, I guess. Just because <laughs> this is Crusader Kings, dude. Chieftain Putyaka gained 20 opinion of you, your spouse. Oh, honey, thank you. Your seven. I love that uh, High Queen Kanshi with her robust medium health boost trait, even though she's in poor. She is ailing, dude. We're both not feeling great. But I love that she still got it. You guys have been arrested for four years. So I can't, uh, are you like, you've got titles. All right, I'll just ransom him then. Let's, let's empty the prisons before I die. I have no choice but to accept your conditions for my release. And let's check uh, the realm succession one last time. See, J Jacep is getting perm, but I don't have to hold on to perm now, you know? I just needed perm to make the Hall of Heroes. If he gets it, then that's fine. My son deserves something, because he's getting the Kingdom of Permia. Uh, my second to last born, Brozor, is getting Sabir. Which is this. Not Pyotr is getting Sukberia and Yugra, which is going to make him extremely powerful. And he is Gluttonous Craven and I guess a plotter and 40 years old. Not fantastic. And then Murgren is 
going to um, obviously get the High Kingdom, the Empire itself, the new Capital Kingdom, which has the least amount of land in it, but we can take more of Cumania. That can be something that he does when he uh, takes over. I could probably do it now. And it wouldn't be a bad idea. Because, like, I, conquering that duchy would be one, two, three, four... Four counties right next to where we currently exist. Obviously, these would be nice, too, for different reasons. I say we just go for it. Just a little bit more warmongering before we die. Help out our son. It's reasonable. I have class in five and a half hours, but I can't stop! Well, the VOD exists. Take care of yourself and focus on your studies. Let's go from Apisar. I don't know why I moved that. Actually, just delete this one. Kipchak is not having a fun time right now. Zatizu is rolling in. Might go ahead and raise... Um, everybody else here. New learning perk. Ooh, learning per level of devotion too. Well, maybe you can save yourself. <laughs> He's still wounded. Not good, chat. 18 learning becomes... 26. He surpassed his diplomacy at the end of his life. Looking for answers on how to heal and achieve... Unlimited power. <laughs> oh. I don't understand why atheists can be holy warriors, because they're not atheists, they're pagans. Pagans still have gods. Um, my character is not, and in this case, the gods are their ancestors. They worship their ancestors in nature for the Suomanusko. So it's not like they don't believe their ancestors exist. They just believe their ancestors can still, like, be corresponded with. Cynical would just mean not necessarily that they are, like, like, they can still respect their ancestors... And also, you know, fight better against- hate people that aren't like them without necessarily believing in the power of nature. There's- there's shades of gray in cynicism, you know what I mean? There's plenty of religious cynics and, uh, religious scientists who had doubts and did things differently, but their cynicism led them down different paths. Some were atheists, some would be led down, you know, Tangent, tangential religions. I have discovered that Duchess Sibyl, si Sibyl's inherited contract obliges her to more than you have collected. Um, I don't even know how feudal taxes work, to be honest. But I have so... Actually, I do need some money when I raise the army. <laughs> Pay those taxes. By the way, this is way too many peasants, dude. Holy crap. They're still gathering. <laughs> They're gonna run out of supplies immediately. 23,000 armed peasants here. Make it 24,300. I think it's control left click? Yeah.
You guys are going to run out of supplies extremely fast. I don't even know where to send you guys. Alright, lots of peasants are going to die, but I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, they're only going to die if we don't siege faster than they walk. If we siege, then these skulls go away. So, this is where my 50 onagers are. So, if, as long as we siege within the next 30 days. Can you subjugate another empire? That's a once in a lifetime, as we found out. So, subjugation and, and full scale invasion are once a lifetime. Because they're extremely powerful. And even once a lifetime, they're still extremely powerful. They might need to be even more expensive, at least for the kingdom invasion. But then again, we just kind of got lucky and invaded an extremely large kingdom that was all kept together. If you were to invade a kingdom in Western Europe, you wouldn't really get nearly as much as we got in terms of sheer landmass. Like, even Italy, obviously Italy's fantastic in the game. Like, just truly great. But, the number of counties here compared to the number of counties in Ob, you know? Just in terms of sheer landmass. Be curious to see what the, what the raw difference is there. But, like... Doing a full-scale invasion of Ep Epirus. Not really. It's much. It's hard to balance in, in kingdom invasion because they vary so wildly. And it really depends on who owns it. Like if a different uh, realm owns it, then you don't get theirs. You only get the places belonging to the the realm that you're currently at war with. Meanwhile, the siege was fast. Sixteen percent war score after sieging the capital is really not that good. These guys haven't moved for some reason. <laughs> we are fanning out. The Avran Dynasty is now known far and wide. We've achieved well-known splendor. 500 prestige is what we're born with. Marrying into this is a plus 400, and you can get a plus 30 opinion as long as you reign for a long time. That's crazy. We're actually really close to another 2,000. I wonder if I should go ahead and spend it. Or save. I feel like courtier and guest opinion is interesting. Dynasty members get better education traits. I feel like a patient Brozor would probably help his his you know what? He lost his loins. So he's going to make sure that. Uh, well, he's, he's going to use his herbalism skills to ensure that all future generations have very bounteous loins. You know what I'm saying? Large, skilled families where members aid and support each other. Your dynasty has unlocked bounteous loins. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Unit gets the fertility perk. Pump it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Hi, guys. Wow, we are going to lose this potential battle here? Why? Because they're really elite? Chat, you will probably lose 12,000. Alright, I'll send in everybody so we don't kill all the peasants on accident. Why do you think I'm probably going to lose? Well, I sent 12,000 peasants... Plus a level 26 commander. He's, uh, pretty cool. Married to my daughter and all that. Only lost 215 men. Killed 454. Won the battle. I don't know what this one even is. Or where they are. A 
If you kick too much ass, it just says you will lose. <laughs> All right, came in there, squashed them. 1,200 losses, only 50! Our levies actually got some big kills. Good siege, we're at 22%. All right, well, they've got a few raiders coming in, but I really don't think they're gonna be that scary even though they're elite. And I'm gonna send you guys... I don't know. It's kinda hard to go anywhere. How much longer do you think it's possible for this character to live? I have to decide between this and sleep soon. <laughs> Well, he's still wounded, so anything is possible right now. His health is poor. He's still obese. Weight loss did not work. Cancer is still there, despite the aggressive treatment, and he's wounded. But he did get um, greatly reduced disease symptoms, for whatever that's worth. Massive boost. He's 80 years old. Happy 80th birthday, King Brozor, the oldest Sakvirian. That's ever lived. Oh, are you guys gonna lose or win? They have 900 troops? Oh, they have 900 troops. I trust in you, commanders. It's why I have given you... ...so much power. I only get a notification one year before death if it's a natural death. A wound is not natural. So it's not as OP as it sounds. How did we get into a fight here with these guys? Dude, this is when Holy Warrior's actually being used by everybody. Our Valiant Soldier managed to wound a High Chieftain. And you took Chieftain APAC into your prisons. Beating their elite troops with peasants and good commanders. <laughs> Captured another high chieftain's courtier. Won like six sieges simultaneously. Now I think we just hold the line. I already took their capital. It's just a waiting game now. Holy Warrior makes peasants quite good. So it would seem. There's another one. Lost 524, all levies. Killed 800. Know thyself. Ah! I can feel it in my very bones! Tawoni will come for me soon. Like an old friend, it is patiently waiting to receive me. I will be dead within a year. You should get your affairs in order. At 80 years old, chat. <laughs> Everyone panic! <laughs> it's finally time! Okay, uh, well. Let's, uh, let's go work off some stress. As I finish yet another lap around my castle, I already feel my worries dripping off me together with my sweat. Some people say I run from my problems, but I say I run towards solutions. Donate to charity. Attempt suicide. That's okay. Stop losing weight. I don't think it worked. It's time to do one last feast, chat. See if we can finish this war. The guests are gathered in the great hall. Lords and ladies from near and far reaches of the world. The mood is bright, spirits are high, as the feast begins. Well, I think I know exactly how this feast is gonna go, chat. 
I've seen it before. Have you? say we're not gonna watch the whole uh, i just wanted to say it's my 111th birthday because <laughs> that's how old i king brozor basically is <laughs> that's exactly what we're toasting welcome friends the feast begins I need to watch all those again. I'll, I'll even watch the extended editions of the prequels. As plate after plate of food is brought into the Great Hall, an unmistakable smell reaches me. It's my own stench from running around the castle earlier. And I smile. That my honorable vassal, Duchess Texie, is sensitive to lemon is something I forgot to tell the cook. I bid you all welcome, and I pray you will find the food to your liking. Especially you. Former rivalry. No, I'm King Brozor. Help her out. Your vassal and... Hang on. She's my champion? For real? That's awesome. Demand conversion with a hook. 35% might accept. Why do I have a hook? Oh, I just, I just got one. Pay attention. Uh, send gift. That's too much money. How about we just sway? There's nothing like a feast. It reminds us all what is good in life and what company is not too bad. At least those seated close to me seem to think so. You are something special, Brozor, Yamka tells me. High Chieftess Pasheka and Countess Ashava nod in agreement. Thank you, vassals. You don't have to suck up anymore. I'm about to die. But you're all very nice. One more round, everyone! On me! <laughs> I don't want to, I'm scared! I'm 80, I'm still wounded! I might just die of my wounds before my old age timer ticks. Um, another good victory. If we see any big battles, I'll give them extra attention. Betrothed can marry. 21, 17, giant, callous, diligent, and just. 15 prowess. Fantastic. We're combining hail and giant with good, um, an actual really good marriage. Chat, we're only at 47%. What? This seems low. Hobbit is 2.84 hours long. You are legally allowed to use 5.11 minutes of the movie because that is 3% of the length. For me, it's really confusing why you have such a low war, war score. That's how I feel. With everyone headed for their homes, I am proud to say the feast was a success. I have my wife, Kanshe, to thank for much of its success, and I feel nothing but gratitude as I see the last few gifts off. The feast ends. Every guest gains 20 opinion. They'll remember me fondly, I hope. 1025 chat Take care of your affairs Take concubine did one of my two of my concubines died Well No, I don't think I will 
Oh, you guys are in the dungeon, huh? And your health is all bad? Alright, as my last, like, before death, I release you all for, for free. That's how you will remember High King Brozor. Maliaka, your grandson can marry. Um, how about Potke? Ambitious, deceitful, impatient, but extremely smart and beautiful. You lose 400. Hold on. Um, all right, it doesn't have to be inheritable. Totska Avrin, that's called inbreeding. Gregarious, patient, and compassionate. Pekshika Mord Vanid. A perfect match. How are you guys related, dude? That's a Mord Vanid. Your mom is... Oh, your brother-in-law is a grandparent? Nah, it's fine. Realm will lose land when your vassal dies. Um. Who's got land right down the middle of another realm now, bitch? How you like that, Finland? Huh? It doesn't feel so good anymore. I, I had that too. For like 25 years or something crazy. Back at ya. I don't even know- Oh, because the High Chieftain said Yamka became my vassal and he just controls all this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's part. <laughs> uh. I'm off to Vodland to avoid spoilerinos. Oh, they're already here, Snide. You're you're in. Do you like spoilers, Miss Turner? Because you're in one. Neighboring ruler won the war. I have to use that every stream because it's just fun to talk like that. There was a subjugation war. Your neighbor Khan talks has won. Oh. Kipchak won their war, I guess. Simcopter has a plus two in chat. Sim, what did you say? Hello, Psycho Fam. What's up, Sim? I haven't been able to crack a window in ten days. Let me tell you, it smells like gamers in here. How's it going, dude? Um, we, for those of you who just got here, spoilers, are coming to a close, but we're gonna see it through. High King Brozor, the defender of Uko of Sukberia, has lived to the oldest age of any one to date. 80 years old in our entire lineage. Our last oldest character was 68-year-old King Cordal. High King Brozor has done so much for us. We'll talk. We, listen, we don't, he's not dead yet, okay? He's not dead yet. He's got less than a year. Um, due to his scientific prowess and learning, he has deciphered exactly when he will die. And he will die in less than a year. He knows. He can feel it. It's time. But before he goes, I was trying to get one more duchy for my future son. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. Your grandson will be married very soon. But yeah, we're having some trouble actually building war score over here for some reason. Despite tons of victories on the battlefield and lots of sieges. But yes, I imagine not opening your windows because of all the smoke is, uh, not ideal. Not a, not a great situation in general. 
see, there's another one. Killed thousand of them, they killed twenty-four of me. I can feel it in my very bones. Tuoni will come for me soon. Like an old friend, it is patiently waiting to receive me. Once again, I believe I will be dead within a year. Even though I already had this premonition. And this is the second <laughs> Maybe I miscalculated the first time. <laughs> Still dead within a year. Peep OG. <laughs> gamer BO is slightly better than the toxic fallout of it. That's what happens when you have a family of gamers. And, and, uh, I'm sure cat gamers as well. <laughs> Rounding error? You will die twice. Alright, so once this goes, um... 20 more days. We'll have finished this siege. These guys just took like 300 casualties for going past an unseaged area. Their supply lines didn't go far enough. Uh, we got 15,000 people here, which is just excessive. But it'll take 300 more casualties to back cap them. Which I think is just kind of not as patient as I would be. I also left this unseaged for some reason. I have no idea why. Did you call my family smelly italics? I just said they were gamers. It's not my fault gamers have a scent associated with them, okay? We, we can all agree that gamers have a distinct smell. And that is the household of gamers. It's just a fact. Alright. Sorry, I'm not able to explain exactly what I'm doing here. So, if effectively, we are Sugberia, and we're doing one last war before death. Uh, we recently moved the capital from Vasjugenmeyer, where we only controlled the single county inside of this duchy, um, to a place that we controlled more of in Kazakh. So, we are kind of in the process of increasing our holdings in Cumania via Kazakh. So we have the actual real-life capital of our empire is the real capital, Astana. And Astana is just kind of a nice place. It has its own duchy building specialty and has some other really nice um, counties here. Like Apasar specifically has up to five holdings when we eventually go feudal. It's a nice place to be. Term X just said, SHUT UP, SIM! I wish Elon Musk named his child Gamer. Gamer Musk? I wouldn't be surprised. He seems obsessed with playing Minecraft in his cars. I think your war goal's to the west, not where you're fighting. That would be embarrassing, I guess. You might be right, though. Um, you're wrong. So, don't know why you made me believe you. Because I have captured everywhere inside that white highlighted line. Chat, do you know the ratio of helpful things you say to things I have to disprove? Um, is not a good KDR. Some of that, how many times have you said chat lied tonight? Our peasants are dying. Staring at stars from all my evenings watching the stars, I have seen with my own eyes what I have only heard of before. The stars move at different speeds and reverse their course at different times, but seemingly in large groups, depending on which celestial sphere they belong to. Indeed, with the right calculations, one could even predict their movement. My Noidy does not approve, of course. Leave the skies be, he says. The celestial realm is for the elders to know. Oh, really? Hmm. Chat, do you know what happens when you study the stars? Actually, not a big deal either way. <laughs> but, um, I thought one of these was health related. It's not. Whoops. 
I'll focus on earthly matters. You are known for your dedication to the faith. Just before I died, I became a religious icon. Which only makes sense because I am the guy that created, um, in Perm. The Hall of Heroes. And became known as the Defender of Uko. So, why wouldn't I be a religious icon amongst these pagans? Astrology? Sim, speaking of astrology... Speaking of astrology... We looked up a horoscope a few days ago. And I just want to link it to you. If I can find it again. Can you find old horoscopes? From horoscopes.com? Or horoscope.com? No, I can only see yesterday. God, it was... Uh, I just wanted you to read it. Maybe someone in chat could find the clip. But, uh, for context, occasionally I'll read a horoscope, my horoscope, just because I think it's... I don't know, I, I think it's just, like, fun content to see what it says, because sometimes it's wildly outlandish, and sometimes it's like, oh, like a fortune cookie. But, they have on horoscope.com a specific link for quarantine horoscopes, which are meant, apparently, uh, to distinguish between... People who are staying, keeping to themselves, right? Because it'd be like weird if your horoscope said today you're going to uh, go talk to a large group of people and you're going to make waves in the crowd. And you're like, okay, I, uh, I don't go anywhere and I don't see anything. I don't do any, I, I just chill out at home, you know, like a responsible adult like me. So they made a special quarantine horoscope. And, uh, it was like a mind control paragraph. It was like a, a heavily, literally nothing about the stars at all. Nothing about symbols or, um, symbolism or the constellations. It was just brainwashing, like, political speak. Like an actual trying to manipulate people into basically taking... COVID less seriously. And it was incredible. It was on one of the flight sim streams. But I was like, I... It, it sounded like it was written by someone who'd never written a horoscope before. Now I gotta read my horoscope for, to, for today, yeah. My past happened to have crossed with Chieftain Nekhat, and to my surprise, it seems as though he does not have a great impression of my friend King Opte. Perhaps I should take this opportunity to change his mind. I don't know why I care. He's in a different kingdom. But he is my friend, and I am Brosor. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about Opte. I'm the bro, right? That's my thing. You can ignore these. These are just tiny little battles. I tried to paint King Avte in the best light possible. When Chieftain Nakata gradually started listening with greater and greater interest. And then he muttered, I never knew that. I knew I'd made an impression. He is a great man. Alright, before we die, we've gotten the warning twice. Let me just double check that there aren't any more peaceful vassalization offers around us. Maybe somebody lost a crown. It's happened before. It could happen again. These guys are Sua Minusco, High Chieftains, but they're negative 504 because they're too far away. Sharing a border is usually what you want, and you want similar culture, similar religion. Otherwise, it's going to be really far in the negative like the...